Welcome to the new Chess 24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Welcome, everybody. My name is Jan Pomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Our starting a new course here for Chessable. A very special Chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Ah, here is challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You are looking how it can be the most painful. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a phone. He wants to be even rude. As a kid, I spent hours every day reading about chess. About openings, chess history, and games played between world champions, grandmasters, all of them. My apps make learning much easier. Everything I know, you can find in my apps. Magnus Trainer, Tactics Frenzy, and Play Magnus. You can learn the basic rules of chess, train with our 400 lessons, and even play against my digital self. Download and try my apps for free.
This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hi there, it's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or me chess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good. Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, thick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess. Sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess. For when you aim to chess. That's their slogan. That's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another. It's... But it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just... Come on, literally, why not? Alright, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. Alright? Jesus Christ. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world. With hundreds of titles, ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses. With hundreds of players gathering from all over the globe, Chess Olympiads are something special. They're a celebration of diversity and friendship. And it really puts FIDE's motto into the spotlight. We are one family. With 187 teams in the open section and 162 in the women's section, the 44th Olympiad in Chennai, India is the largest Olympiad to ever take place. In this course, I'm going to provide for you daily highlights, key moments, biggest upsets, 11 rounds. There's a lot of chess. <laughs> I am extremely excited about this tournament. What I like most about it is we've got our top tier guys. We have the, the 2,700 plus crowd, including the boss, Magnus Carlsen. But you also have a lot of players that are north of 2,500 feet A that these guys are gonna have to play against. And in the super elite tournaments, you see a lot of very solid openings. They have to take some risk. And as an openings guy, I'm super excited to see how the top guys handle those players a couple of tiers below them. Grunfeld is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6-bishop g5 knight rook. I'm gonna start with uh, 
sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. It's, no, it's just to move. Hello and welcome to our coverage of round four of the Chennai Olympiad. Uh, I'm Peter Swidler and with me is Peter Leko. And we are getting towards the, I think today is the first proper four board match that we see, right? I think it's maybe slightly disrespectful to some of the thing, things we've seen in the previous uh, rounds, but I'm very, very excited about one match in particular today in the men's section and in the women's section, there's also plenty of action. How about you? Yes, hello Peter, hello everyone. I feel the same. I mean, yesterday we already saw that we had some uh, very close clashes. There were also a couple of draws like this uh, Cuba versus uh, Ukraine match and also the dramatic match between Armenia, this very, very last game of Robert Hovanesian winning uh, against Egypt. S showed already what kind of dramas await us and, and I fully agree and I think we, we kind of selected the, the match of the day uh, the U.S. team versus the very, very young and very strong uh, Uzbek team. What is your take? What, what are your thoughts on this? I just want to watch it, to be honest. I, I don't like on paper. The, the U.S. of course is a favorite against everyone in the field, and uh, still, of course, the favorite uh, uh, against the uh, the young kids from from Uzbekistan who are. I mean, Abdusatorov is all is, is almost twenty seven hundred, but Fabi is almost twenty eight hundred, and. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I mean, the, their rating advantage is uh, Fabi doesn't have a hundred points on his, on his opponent, but everybody else has a hundred and more, one hundred and fifty in the last two on the last two boards. But those are very young and very very promising kids who improve seemingly, you know, year on year. They they improve sometimes beyond recognition. Uh, I, I played against some of them and I've been watching them as I, I'm sure all of us uh, have been uh, over the past few years. And if, if they have a good day today, it really could be extremely unclear who, uh, who gets on top. So uh, yeah, this is a very, very interesting, uh, interesting match to watch. But of course, there's, there's plenty of others like uh, France against India is a very marquee matchup on uh, uh, the, the top match of the day because India always gets uh, the top boards there. Uh, India 3 is playing against Spain. Here you have the, the, the bearings on your screen. Uh, all three Indian teams are very much in the mix. India 3 plays board 3. Uh, Poland or Romania on board 4. Uh, Turkey against Azerbaijan board 5. Israel versus the Dutch players on board 6. Uh, Serbia, England and India 2 versus Italy round out the, the top 8 matches. We are Really, today there is plenty of very, very close encounters there to uh, to get excited about. But for me, uh, absolutely, I want to watch uh, Abdus Atorov against uh, against Caruana. I want to watch the uh, the rest of them uh, battle against the you know the very very well established uh, American players. Yeah, there is another twist. Yeah, that we are talking about youngsters and so on. I feel that we have a very big air classico in the match uh, Ganguly versus Alexei Shilov because. Mm, I yeah. mean, uh, Ganguly, a f wonderful person, and he has worked with so many people. Yeah, he, he is known to be uh, Team Vichy. However, I do recall the Alista candidates 2007 when he was the second of Alexei Shirov. And really? I, I, I didn't remember that. 
Yeah, I it did. was well. You haven't been playing the candidates. You were seeded into the World Championship final <laughs> already to Mexico City. That, but I was there. I also had a big, big badminton session there with with Sulia, and uh, I think that also knowing that uh, Ganguly was a very big uh, Arhangelsk player, yeah, with Bishop mm -hmm. C five. So definitely, Alexei is, is somewhat of a big, 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 big name to look up for, and and he faces him and. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I, the, I, I it looked up very, very, very much fun, I guess. Yeah, the, the, the typing you may have heard me doing while you were talking was I wanted to check because both of them are incredibly well established players. And I mean, Alexei is, you know, he has been a, a top player for seemingly like the last four generation of, uh, of kids or something. I mean, it, it's slightly harsh, but he is he has been around forever. They've only played six games so far in in uh, in their entire career. They've only had six meetings. Uh, and only three of them are classical. So despite, you know, as you mentioned, they work together, they obviously know each other very, very well, but they haven't really been uh, uh, clashing uh, that much. So it's- And it's what really, were the results? Uh, no, I, I lied about it, yeah. The, there's four classical games, uh, Sheriff uh, leads to one, that's actually five. I can't do any counting at all this morning. It's two one in Sheriff's favor with two draws, and there's also one, uh rapid game somewhere in there which yeah, was wow. actually I mean, yeah it, it's a very close uh, very close fight uh, i also have to say that yeah spain is one of those teams that made a very very good impression on me mm -hmm. i mean they have a very dynamic lineup uh, very strong top boards but also very very strong uh, board three and four <clears throat> it's it's definitely however it's going to be the big challenge for them because in the at home soil i'm pretty sure that uh, that ganguly satu uh, gupta and Kartike are super, super motivated. I mean, I, I would give almost automatically 50 or 80 rating points extra for them, uh, knowing what, what the crowd is doing there in India. So let's, let's check what will happen here. We also have a game Duda versus Deak, yeah? The, the, the mm. Polish youngster against the Romania youngster, also very interesting. And the two very classical players, very experienced, Lupulescu face uh, with Wojtaszek each other also. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Uh, Jan Krzysztof didn't play in Bucharest, didn't he? Yeah, he didn't, yeah. And uh, for the Warsaw Rapid and Blitz, the wildcard changed and uh, Deak didn't play. So they didn't. I was trying to remember if they met very recently in May when the, uh, the Grand Chess Tour things were happening, but I think they just missed each other, they I can do that. Yes. Uh, but yeah, it's, I was very, very impressed with Dayak while, while I was doing commentary uh, on the Bucharest Grand Chess Tour event because he, I mean, it wasn't that I was surprised necessarily. I, I played him myself. I know that he is a very ambitious, very, uh, very strong player, very gifted tactically, but until he, Obviously, the big problem for players like Deak in tournaments like the Grand Chess Tour is you normally aren't very used to this amount of pressure every day because you really have no easy pairings. You every day presents very, very large challenges. And he slightly uh, sort of, uh, he, he quite clearly, I think, got tired towards the end of the event and started playing slightly worse. But I think he still finished around 50% or maybe on 50%. And uh, in that field, it's it's a very very good result for somebody who has no real experience of, of playing the super tournaments. So yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good matchup. Anish is playing black against uh, Avital Boruchovsky in the uh, Israel versus the Netherlands match. Uh, yeah, I felt like we should maybe say a few words about the Israeli team because. We haven't been covering them so far, and uh, not, we see that much, Boris Gelfand yeah. is missing, yeah? Yeah, Boris is not playing, and also they've done this thing that we've been sort of discussing, yeah, of uh, shuffling, uh, shuffling the lineup uh, to, to achieve some kind of a tactical advantage, because uh, Avital Borukovsky, I mean, he's a very solid player, he's 2550, obviously a very strong grandmaster, but uh, he is 2550, on, and on board two there we have uh, Tamir Nabati, who is uh, almost 2700, 2692. Uh, then we have once again uh, a slight drop, uh, and on board three we have uh, Ilyas Mirian, our, you know, a good friend of both mine and yours. I'm sure you know. I, I think my first game against Ilya was like 30 years ago, thereabouts, maybe 28. Uh, 
And uh, and then on board four there, we have uh, once again uh, Maxim Rod uh, Rodstein, who who is uh, you know, twenty six seventy five. So they clearly have put some thought into what they wanted to achieve in terms of maybe colors, like who wants to play white in important matches, who wants to play black. But it's clear that they're putting the players who are on paper uh, the strongest in the team uh, below players who are maybe more solid. Let's, uh, this would be my normal default explanation for seeing a 2550 guy playing board one ahead of a 2700 guy. Uh, then yeah, the... it's a very interesting strategy. To be honest, Boluchowski made, uh, made two draw against me with the black pieces and once it was the very first game was a big surprise for me because I was like 27, 30 or 40 and uh, he was just 15 or 16. We played in one of these European club cups and mm -hmm. uh, I already noticed because he was doing well, I took the game very seriously, but he managed to, to hold and also in Grand Suisse, I had, I was pressing, I was probably winning uh, at the end game, but he held a very tough end game. So I know that he's very tough to beat. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a good player, but still he is 150 points behind behind Nabate. So normally he wouldn't be playing board one, but... Of course, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's the match, <laughs> I mean, it's the team strategy. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's but, perfect. You know, obviously, yeah, you obviously it. some some thought went into into this. I, I'm not privy to, to those conversations, but... Clearly, they, they have some idea uh, if they're doing this. And yeah, as you mentioned, like the big news about the, uh, you know, the Israeli team here is the non-participation of Boris Gelfand. But uh, I think uh, same as uh, uh, that, that topic we briefly touched on, the, the topic of the German Chess Federation and its relationship to its players. There's also some stories about the Israeli Chess Federation and its relationship to its players. So I think Boris uh, just doesn't play these days. He clearly, I mean, still would be very easily board one of that team. No, yeah, of course. No I mean, uh, basically, imagine Boris on any other board than board one. It's it's yeah. impossible. <laughs> yeah, Boris. Uh, no, not not only in the Israeli team. Basically, anywhere where he plays, I think everybody has so much respect for his amazing knowledge and his achievements. <clears throat> it's, yeah, he it's walks, also, he, I mean, one thing about the German Federation that we, we are a little bit harsh. These scandals had been there for two years ago, ever since things settled down and uh, the Federation is now doing a very good job. I just wanted to, to say before somebody misunderstands mm. us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm you very see. happy for it because, okay, there, there is this new generation and it's, and it's wonderful to see how the Federation is changing and they are supporting the the young players, and I think it's uh, it's very, very nice. Yeah, and he's, and he's we have, with... look at this. I want yeah. to ask your opinion immediately, chess-wise. The game Fabiano yeah. Caruana against Abdul Sato. When I looked at this pairing, my first thought was, uh, sorry, a bike, motorbike was <laughs> going um, in front of my window. So my big question was that, will Abdul Sato survive the opening against Fabi? Yeah, because Fabi is such a theoretical monster. And, and look what? Happens, Fabi shows some respect, he plays d4, d5, bishop f4, tries to get out. What, what is your take on this? Uh, well, I mean, the, the usual response is, you know, I, uh, I can't, you know, I'm a, I'm a Twitch streamer these days, you know, I'm sort of uh, unsubbed, unfollowed is my, is my normal response to this. Like, uh, yeah, unfriended, unsubbed, unfollowed. Uh, I, I don't like this, but it's a, it's a sign of, uh, of his approach for, uh, for the, <laughs> and now I'm getting, and now I'm getting uh, pointed remarks about me being a Twitch streamer because I'm not a streamer either. I, like I don't know what I am now. Uh, <laughs> some kind of a strange uh, nothing, nothing burger. Anyway, uh, it's 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 an interesting choice because I mean obviously it shows respect for Abdus Satorov's opening knowledge and opening repertoire and all that. But on the other hand, it's Fabi. Fabi is one of the best prepared people in the world. So why is he worried about anybody else's opening preparation? Is uh, but hang on, you know, I, I didn't think about it just at this moment. I realized that does Fabi know maybe that Kasim Janov is behind the Uzbek team? Is is ah. this maybe something of a ah. of an issue? Maybe, but I mean, both of us, I'm sure, have been in this situation, right? You you you, you resolve it somehow. You 
like the assumption has to be that if let's say somebody who has worked for you for years and years is now working for uh, the opposition, there is still some kind of a gentleman's agreement that, you know, things which are very sort of product of specifically your work with that person are probably not going to get shared. Of course, let's say if Kasim is working with the Uzbek youngsters right now, he will provide a lot of sort of general info about like what Fabi likes and what Fabi dislikes. It's his job as a coach. You can't expect him to stay completely silent. But specific files produced well while he was working with Fabi, I think those are pretty much off limits uh, or, or would be like in my understanding of how this dynamic works at least. So, I mean, it might impact Fabi's decision a little bit, but I don't think it should be, you know, such a dramatic change. Yeah, well, d definitely. I, I think that, yeah, uh, Kasim is uh, doing very correctly. W what I was uh, thinking only that, uh, I mean, Abdul Satov doesn't have a very clear repertoire from the black pieces. Yeah, so he's like shuffling all the time against C4. He plays many, many different openings. And then maybe Fabi felt like it's, it's better just to avoid any kind of uh, speculation or any kind of uh, thinking about this going crazy because you can simply never be sure. It's maybe not about this concrete game, but uh, for example, during the preparation, uh, Kasim shared something which might be important for this game. And then Fabi just said, no, thank you very much. I will play something completely different. I will also surprise my opponent, let him go crazy during all night and morning with uh, checking all the force lines yeah. with computers. I just want to play chess. <clears throat> In Absolutely. any case, this is not the only game that we have. So let's, let's move on. Yeah. Sure. We have a kind of a quiet-ish game so far, or at least a quiet opening in the uh, Yakuboyev against uh, Lev. Uh, Yakuboyev suggested they play in Italian and Lev said no. I think this is called the Hungarian, right? At least I, I was brought up to uh, in the understanding this is the Hungarian where Black just plays knight f6, bishop e7, doesn't develop the bishop to c5 at all. Yeah, yeah, this bishop e7, d6. However, the pawn is not yet on d6. I'm expecting it to happen yeah, it anymore. Might, it might go to g5, yeah, it very much. Yeah, it's, it's level, yeah, you never know. Yeah, yeah it could yeah. go to g5 for sure. And then something that is very kind of uh, interesting to me to see what Sindarov will do against it. And the fact that he's already been thinking for seven minutes I recognize this picture very much, you know, uh, I've been playing the Grimfield all my life and then people like play h4 or perhaps I've definitely done this when people play the third move f2, f3 against me. Because basically by this point, I've looked at every single reply to f3. I can more or less play every single reply against f3. Some of them I remember better, some of them I remember not as well, but I can, you know, bluff my way through most things but but if i haven't prepared something specifically for today against f3 or h4 i will just sit there looking incredibly stupid trying trying to choose what i will not forget over the board the, you know the most today and uh seemingly this is what uh, sindarov is also doing uh just choosing between uh one of the many many options here you can play bishop g7 you can play c5 immediately you can play other moves as well. Those two are the, the two main moves, but I think in, I mean, d6 also exists. The immediate knight c6 exists here, which is, I believe, my my recommendation in the course. So, yeah, there's a lot of options here. Uh, a tremendous amount of options. Yeah, for... here, here, what I find uh, quite amusing is that uh, Sindarov, if I remember correctly, is a clear King Sindan player. So he's not mm. a green fat player. And I thought like the third move h4 is especially clever against the green fat players, yeah, because you, you would love to play with d5 and you are kind of forced into some different structure after h4. However, exactly against the kings in them play, I, I did not, wow, and c5, d5 is played. Yeah, if you want to play the king's Indian, you can actually get sort of a pure king's Indian by just ignoring this and playing bishop g7, knight c3, let's say castle, z4, d6, which is one of the absolute main lines of the, the, the h4. Uh, complex uh, when it's from this move order. And White generally plays bishop e2 here, and you have a, a number of choices here. The most popular one is being c5, d5, e6. There's a lot of theory connected to this right now. It's a, one of the absolute one of the absolute main lines of the whole variation. I've looked at this, I, I kind of considered giving this as my recommendation against h4, but I think 
despite the fact that the white king often will be on f1 in the next like three four moves because the rook will come to e8 and i will have to address it somehow i found very very found it very difficult to uh find any position there which actually promises you chances for double-edged play you probably equalize but this is all you're hoping for you're not really hoping to do more than equalize in, in at least that was my impression when i was preparing this material for the course and i went with something else but it's very playable and you can also also of course you can play all kinds of benoni type structures uh after c5 d5 in particular the way they're doing yeah one thing i wanted to mention that i was like completely shocked when uh Uparin in the grand prix Play this against Hikaru, yeah, because if, if you ask me, I would have said that no, no, against Hikaru to play this, it's probably too risky because he knows very well what to do with black, but he wasn't move per move prepared and he got into very, very big trouble. I mean, it was a miracle yeah. that he survived that game against Oparin and it was, it was a vital game. Thanks to this, he qualified from the groups and, uh, and later went on to qualify for the candidates. Yeah, so, and yeah, the, this line is a very dangerous uh, line if you don't know exactly what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, for sure. I think the pairing was just straight up winning at some point, yeah. Exactly, and yeah. Th that face I was making is the face of, of me actually noticing what's going on on Sam's board. <laughs> uh, and here I will just shut up. Please tell me what's going on. I assume you know. I have no idea. Well, just a second. It's still too early morning. <laughs> I'm not sure if I know anything in, in these early hours. Well, let's take a look how did they get here, because it almost looks like a, uh, a Ragozim, but in fact the knight is not on f3. That's why I'm a little bit confused. So it came from this move order, bishop g5, and bishop b4. Ah, okay. So this new fancy stuff. Mm -hmm. fancy stuff. I think one of the first very big games was exactly Nepo versus Matlakov in Russian Super Final 2020. Uh, oh, yeah, Matlakov, I remember that game. Yeah, Matlakov surprised uh, Jan with this and it was a very, very complicated battle. And then Jan suddenly liked it from the black side and used it against Magnus in one of the, the Rapid Blitz events. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, and Queen B3. So White is playing the move Queen B3 usually. The main move, I think, is e3, h6, and, and we get this very, very sharp uh, position. In fact, this was the main weapon of Gukesh now in Beal. He won a very important game against uh, Lekwang Liam with the black pieces. Mm -hmm. um, going for this ultra sharp stuff, white opts for queen b3, black goes c5, and now we are getting a hybrid kind of, uh, yeah, it almost looks like a Ragozin, but really the knight is not on f3, so... I'm not sure if I can tell you what's going on. Yeah. Knight c6, long castles. No, but in particular, like long castles, he just goes queen a5 here, saying bishop f6, gf, I don't care. I'm playing against your, your, your king on c1. My position will get completely ruined, but I'm so far ahead in development, and your king is so unsafe on c1 that I don't care about anything else. Incredibly sharp position. And uh, looks like probably both of them. I would suspect, know at least something, because uh, uh, Jahangir is also playing quite quickly. I think this is the first moment where he stopped and is now thinking a little bit about his choices. Until then, I think he was playing pretty much at tempo. Uh, so yeah, very, very exciting position, which uh, basically it's kind of pointless for us to discuss, because you just need to sit down and go through things carefully, move by move, and... Uh, in a tournament with uh, so much stuff going on, we just cannot really dedicate any kind of serious attention to any one opening. Uh, but on the subject of really crazy openings, can you have, take a look briefly at the uh, the India France match? Because yeah, the, that position in Cornet uh, Cornet uh, versus Ergaisi. I've seen this recently. This this is I think somehow very very topical, important theoretical position. I've seen this very, very recently. I can't exactly, and that. I can even tell you why you have seen this recently, because I have also seen it recently. It, it happened in Rapport versus Veyi in, the, Ex in exactly. the FTX Road to Miami event. Exactly, yeah. And, and the point is that uh, already Veyi had this before against uh, one, of the, one of the Indian youngsters, uh, maybe against Prague. And uh, he didn't play a5, rook a6, and he went on to lose that game. And now, mm -hmm. of course, he, he came armed with a5, rook a6. And then the point was that white could have repeated. 
However, Richie, true to himself, uh, decided not to and got punished by Wei, and Wei went on to win a very important yeah. game. Yeah, and obviously both of them are blitzing. This is move 19, white is a full piece. And, and uh, Eric Gacy continues blitzing, actually, yeah. I wonder if this will just now be a draw, because rook d8, king e7, rook d5, king f8. Yes, I, I also have the same feeling, because also, I mean, Cornet, yeah, he's a 25-50 player. The, the, the team captain could have easily told him, you know what, you, you test Eric Gacy, and if he knows his stuff, then, then draw is fine, yeah? Yeah, and it does look like uh, yeah, this is just uh, this is going to be the first game to finish in the round because if White doesn't play rook d8 check here, you're just a yeah, it's all it's actually <laughs> on the board already. Yeah, yeah, no, I you know I can see people signing. It's it's even on our screen that they, people are signing uh, sky and signing score sheets and yeah, where yeah, where this is this is more than chess. Yeah, sometimes the more sharpest, the most brilliant, craziest ideas end in a draw because computers just neutralize it. The, the players have to be prepared, they have to know their stuff. And uh, basically both sides can live with the result because, okay, Cornet uh, is happy with the draw probably and, and the Aishi playing from the black side, yeah. uh, what, what, what to do? I mean, he has to live with this. He tried to play the Sicilian and uh, suddenly White came fully prepared and plays like a supercomputer. Okay, what to do? Draw is a draw. Um. Yeah, and uh, there's a question for us uh, on on the topic of do we think that uh, Cornet is disappointed that you know he got a chance to play against one of the most promising youngsters in the world and had to just take a draw. I mean, it's a team competition. As as a player in an individual competition, perhaps he would wanted to do uh, would have wanted to do something else. But this is a team competition. I think uh, you know if they decide this is good for the team, it's good for the team. It's not really up to the player to. Um, to take uh, to take risks if the the match strategy uh, they chose doesn't doesn't really uh, dictate that. Yeah, and and if you talk about match strategy, then let's take a look at the game on board four between Nadayanan and Lagarde. And okay, we know that Lagarde likes uh, extravaganza and he he always goes his way. But but look at this. This is some kind of a Dutch Leningrad Dutch kind of stuff with the pawn on c2. It, it just shows that, yeah, on one board they are testing, on other boards they are going for some uncompromising, uh, crazy fight. Yeah. For example, just to jump to Fresine, yeah, Fresine is playing uh, Air Classico. I mean, he just plays the most classical systems uh, possible against Vidit. And we have a very, very interesting uh, uh, clash in, in anti martial between Musa and, and Hare Krishna. So I feel like there is some kind of a strategy behind what, what the French guys are doing. Yeah, I've had this position before for sure. I'm trying to figure out if I ever had it against you, but I don't think so. Uh, I think I had it for, uh, during the Dresden Olympiad. I played this with Black against Sergei Karakin, who was then playing for, for Ukraine. I think I played Bishop 6 here and somehow equalized in the end, but uh, not immediately out of the, I think I was slightly worse out of the opening, but managed to make a draw over, over the course of the game. Bishop g4 I'm not very familiar with, but I have a feeling it's, yeah, I think at some point I looked at this and Bishop g4 was one of the moves that the machine was uh, very much suggested. Ah, and yeah, and the, there is the, uh, the, the Fabi versus Dean game from, I think, maybe the candidates even. I'm now vaguely remembering this. Yeah, Bishop g4 seems like a computer suggestion, and uh, I mean, Harry is always very well prepared, and he is, he's been playing the Spanish, I think, all his career, so no surprise that he knows what he's doing here. But I mean, he did get surprised a bit because he spent eight minutes on Bishop G4. I think this is also one of these uh, little lines that uh, people know that it's there, but uh, you, you tend to underestimate a bit, yeah? Sure, but on the other hand, you never play Bishop G4 in only eight minutes if you don't know it exists. Because of course, yeah. it's a very, very concrete move, which also leaves the pawn on A6 unprotected. Like, this is not a choice you make just to, you know, ad lib some stuff. You, you, you do this because you're aware it exists. And the reason you spend time is perhaps, as, as Peter is saying, uh, he hasn't repeated it today. So he needs some time to kind of re-familiarize re himself with uh, uh, what's going on in these types of positions. But he clearly has at some point looked at this. Otherwise, I think such a move is not really playable without a much longer thought. 
Yeah, the game that comes to my mind is uh, Fabiano against uh, Vestiso from last year, St. Louis or something. I, I, I recall this that, yeah, the bishop was moving to h5 and I was even surprised like, wow, really? Uh, Vestley goes for, for this line because if you don't know exactly move per move, then, then automatically the feeling is that, wow, I mean, I don't like the bishop on h5, but it's a very, very concrete stuff, as, as you said, yeah, that you have to know. And one of the things that I'm more or less expecting is, for example, after bishop h5, if white plays the move d3, then <clears throat> we might be seeing some bc, bc, knight takes a5 ideas, right? Oh, yeah, the, the, the b1 knight is in, uh, is in some trouble, yeah. And, and something like this I recall in, in that game between Fabi and, and Wesley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're being informed that that uh, h4, uh, this is actually quite exciting because I think this is the sharpest line that you could, you could choose against 3h4. In the Wesley against Sindarov game, this is my game against, uh, I lost like in 15 moves here against uh, Richard Rapport in uh, the Paris GCT where I was a very, very last minute stand in for somebody who couldn't come because of uh, COVID things in 2021. This is a very sharp position, which is a lot of fun to look at, a lot of fun to play, but very dangerous for black, surprisingly. And uh, I say surprisingly because basically what we're watching here is a Benko in which white just played h4 for no reason. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a classical Benko in which Black made all the moves you normally make in a Benko. And White, let's say in this position here, yeah, replied to g6 instead of developing a piece. White just played h4 for, for seemingly absolutely no reason whatsoever. And this is, you know, a very clear indication of just how central to everything this idea of pushing the h pawn, in particular against g6 type openings, has become. You can just do it everywhere. And it seems to be okay, more or less okay everywhere, which is just such a change from, I don't know, even 10 years ago, definitely 20 years ago. I think people would just laugh. And, well, uh, I also recall the game between Veselin Topalov and exactly. Anish Amiri in, in Moscow candidates, yeah, 2016. People were actually was, laughing, yeah. Exactly. Back then, people were still laughing because uh, Topalov played the move H4 kind of out of desperation. He had a very rough event and, and he had nothing to lose, basically. And, and he opted for H4 and then he got very nicely countered by C5 by Anish. And then everybody was saying that, ah, of course, you can't play like this. And after this, there was a big, big change after the game Grischuk against MVL in, uh, in the Grand Prix in 2017. However, Grischuk went on to lose with the white pieces yeah. inside this line. And then he got heavily criticized that, okay, come on, how can you play like this? And afterwards, you know, I was also shocked when, when I heard that actually, no, no, the reason for losing was not H4 because white, in fact, is doing quite well here. Yeah. It's uh, it's quite remarkable, yeah. Just just how uh, you know meta and how mainstream this has become everywhere, and uh, you know whole let, let's say whole systems of the Grunfeld, uh, and I don't mean on move three, but like there are there are currently some some lines of the very very classical Grunfeld, which I think everybody would choose with black, if not specifically for the fact that people realized you can just start pushing the H pawn everywhere. And and positions which were completely safe throughout my you know childhood and even you know adult years are now you have to equalize move by move and you're not enjoying a single moment of it because people just play h4 and, and you start thinking aha you know this will be on h6 in three moves and then I will hate my position horribly and I need to do something now and I don't know what to do so yeah it's a it's a serious topic. Yeah, so in fact, we see a lot of theoretical clashes and, and look at this, yeah, Levon. Levon did not play the Hungarian system or not the way the Hungarians used to play with D6. <laughs> he, he opted yeah. for D5. Yeah. But it's to be fair, White has played the move A4. Yeah, if, if White would have played something like Rook E1, then definitely the pawn would have uh, moved. Probably to D6. would have gone to D6. Yeah, even even Levon is not crazy enough, I think, to go D5. <laughs> the bishop on E7, when your pawn on E5 will just drop off immediately. Um, yeah, it's a. I mean, A4 is a very very topical idea in these types of positions. But you wonder why you. I mean, especially against Levon, who will play D5 at the slightest provocation. Why you don't just stop him from doing it by playing rookie one first? 
Yes, this is kind of uh, surprising to me, but but simply maybe Yakubuev doesn't know who Levon Aronian is. I mean, of course, he knows uh, that he's a brilliant player, but he haven't played with him, so he doesn't know his specific. Yeah, that Levon will jump at the first opportunity to, to create some counter. Yeah. I mean, uh, some disbalance in uh, in the position. And it's interesting now because he played Bishop G4 here, which is very normal H3. Uh, bishop of three, queen of three. And I was looking at this and I was thinking, does he want to play knight d4 here? Uh, but I think the point is white will just go queen d1. I think white probably doesn't even get involved with all of those tactics after queen d5. We take take, we take on c2, both of white's rooks are hanging. Uh, and I don't know, maybe this doesn't work tactically, but it looks at least playable for black. But I think the bigger issue is that white can just play queen d1 back and then start pushing all of these pieces with like c3 and and they start going back. But Levon goes knight b6 instead, which is quite clever uh, because he is preserving the option of playing knight d4, meaning that bishop b3 and bishop b5 both immediately give up that light squared bishop. So if you want to preserve it, you probably have to play bishop a2. But I think currently black can take on a4. You think I you can, see, yeah? I don't, I don't see why I cannot, yeah. Because no. bishop f7 and rook f7 attacks the queen on f3, so you don't get enough time to win the pawn back. You have some queen g4, bishop h6 shenanigans, but I don't think they give mate. I think it's just one attack and I will be able to parry. Yeah, you will have bishop f6, yeah, yeah. against any bishop h6. Yeah. Bishop d5 also, bishop d5, knight d4 looks very good for black. So it seems like you might have to just accept that the bishop is gone and play something like knight b1, d2 right now. But then black is completely fine. I will take on c4, I will play f7, f6, and, you know, long term you maybe even prefer black a little bit, but maybe not, maybe it's just equal. Yeah, in any case, uh, very, very remarkable that uh, how many ideas Levon has in his sleeves, yeah, because he can he, he can switch, and this I noticed during the, the Madwater Champions chess tour, that in all these rapid games also, he's so flexible, he always comes up with a surprise, Mm, tries to force his opponent to, to think immediately and very, very unpleasant to deal with this. Yeah, uh, he is, he is a, apart from being a brilliant player, he's also very good practically just kind of picking things which will be unpleasant for his opponent to, uh, to face. Yeah, I, I don't think, you know, this is anything spectacular. As I mentioned, 92 here exists as a very comfortable bailout option, which uh, White is very safe there, but you, you also don't really have anything at all. F6, queen d7, rook a d8. I mean, it's just fine for black. Um, exactly, yeah. And the, the, the big question for me is Fabiano against Abdul Satorov that, I mean, I'm very worried for Abdul Satorov that if he entered this, yeah, and let's just show that this, this seemingly harmless uh, and quiet London becomes like a very, very dangerous reverse Ragozin. I mean, uh, the CD, the bishop f5, bishop b5 line, Unless you know it very, very well, I would not recommend it uh, yeah. from the black side. Yeah, this is not something you should be playing without at least some hard knowledge because, yeah, it's, uh, these positions are very, very tricky. I think Magnus has been doing this with white quite a bit. Yeah, Magnus and also Levon is a big, big specialist. And as I heard, uh, Fabi and Levon are training together in St. Louis. So I, I understand where the wind is blowing from Yeah, here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so, basically, yeah, as... if, we, we, if we just scroll very quickly, so uh, do, over all the four games, we see that the, the United uh, States uh, team is dominating the opening uh, duels. Yeah, Le this position clearly Fabi out prepared Abdul Satorov. Second board, Levon came up with a new idea against Yakubov. Vastly so, a kind of disbalanced uh, Cinder of Skinks Indian and, and turned it into a banker Volga. Uh, with uh, and with Cinder of thinking already for almost half an hour already, yeah. And Sam Shankland created a big mess and a very very double edged position where he seems to be in book and and Vahidov is thinking. Mm, very yeah, very dangerous. So, scenario. so far, so far it's it's going really well for 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 the states for sure. Like uh, it, it's only really like half an hour into the round, so it's difficult to make any kind of sweeping conclusions, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the the outcome of the openings, I think, is very much in favor of Team US. Yeah, so and also go. we see that everywhere they came up uh, with the first surprise. Yeah, they kind of 
had the big respect for the Uzbek team that, yes, uh, they might be very well prepared and they did not let them use their preparation. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's also something that we have to, I think, highlight and give credit to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so the Indian team, let's take a look at uh, the, the France versus India. What were the latest develop? Look at this. Wow, Musa, Hare Krishna, they traded a lot of, lot of pieces. Yeah, lots of stuff disappeared, and both of them seem to be quite well prepared here. Yeah, Jules is, uh, Jules is clearly uh, aware of this bishop h5 idea. So he, he played h3 and took on a6. I think the trick here, and the reason black plays d5, is like it looks like rook a8 just wins you the pawn back but i think the point here is that white can play bishop b7 rook takes a5 and then rook a4 i think this move is quite easy to miss wow yes. and and you suddenly find yourself kind of uh, desperately searching for a way to save the knight on c6 i don't know like because this will force me to go g takes f3 maybe here it doesn't work but I suspect it may be one of the reasons why not rook a8 at least. Um, Actually, beautiful. I, I didn't know this idea. I, I, I hmm. thought like, you know, it's quite difficult to surprise me in any of the anti-martials, but, but you managed. Yeah, I, I, only, I, I only know this because this could have happened in my game against uh, Sergei. After bishop b6, it's maybe even stronger, actually. Uh, Black is uh, kind of struggling there uh, to deal with this. Um, yeah, and, and even, yeah, this bishop fc gf, despite the discernment of the pawn structure, because yeah, they are putting so much pressure on me that... Yeah, it's kind of ugly, though. You can play something like simply takes, takes, and knight b8, and then yes. knight h5, bishop g5. Bishop on b7 is not such a gift. I'm not sure. I just wanted to show this idea, because it's very, very unusual to see a move like rook a4 in an opening, but I don't know how strong it is. But anyway, uh, Pintala very quickly played d6, d5 on move 13. Clearly, he's also uh, aware of what's going on. And they, yeah, they very quickly got into this endgame. D3 takes on F3, everything got swapped off. B takes, B takes. And uh, you have knight takes A5 here, but I will take on A5, and then I will take on E5 with the A rook. And it seems like it's a reasonably unpleasant endgame. You're still a pawn down, the, the pair of bishops is still... Uh, is still there on the board. Yeah, if it comes back to c4, white will be just much better. So what is Harry's idea? You can play rook a8, but once again, bishop b5, you're not winning the material back. The pawn only five something, something I recall that uh, there is some very long uh, computer line somewhere. But uh, yeah, this is what happens if you don't play chess. Yeah, I mean, you 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 tend to forget all the lines that you are looking at, or you feel like you ever looked at, and it might even not be the case. Maybe I'm just misremembering. But I do recall like there is some boom, 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 and uh, white is somehow supposedly be slightly, slightly better, but engines are holding the position easily. But how to how to play it? I have no idea. Yeah. Uh... So far, like I've only spent maybe, I don't know, a couple of minutes staring at this. I don't really understand why white is not just better. But well, this is not something Harry just sort of bluffs into without having a, a clear idea what he's doing. So I'm, I'm very eager to, uh, to find out. Maybe you go rook a8 and then you go bishop b5, knight a5, not rook a5, to preserve some knight b3 shenanigans potentially but I, even this i don't quite believe because after rookie five I, the bishop on e7 is hanging so we don't seem to be in time we just go all the way back maybe rook fb8 here maybe this is the thing yeah we just go rook fb8 here and it's awkward to protect the bishop yeah in any case this is some kind of a computer position yeah you need very precise calculation or you have to know your stuff <clears throat> or often it's exactly between that. You know that it's the direction. You know that it's it's kind of your repertoire, and you remember you have some motives in your mind, and you have to reconstruct. Yeah, you you kind of start to play architect, which is which to be honest is very very dangerous. I have noticed this that strange enough, if you try to reconstruct things, <clears throat> then from from ten times it would be very logical that it's like fifty fifty, right? That okay, uh, fifty percent of the cases I will. I will uh, manage to, to find, but it's somewhere like 80 to 20. It's very interesting that the, the mind is going crazy because there is this tension on you. You want to reconstruct, 
<clears throat> and usually what I notice, you make your move, you get up from the board, and then you realize that, oh my God, of course, no, it was the other move order. Yeah, how many times it happens like this? Yeah, uh, this is a very familiar feeling. And, uh, and Harry does play rook, uh, rook a8 in the meantime. So yeah, I'm pretty sure he uh, knows what he's doing, or at least used to know what he was doing here, and is now just trying to trying to remember. Whereas uh, Jules is just now on our screen, he has finally gone below the starting 90 minutes. So he clearly knows what's going on. Like, it's impossible to, uh, to get here without any time spent if you didn't if you didn't look at this quite seriously. So uh, he has some idea, but it looks like maybe this rook a8, knight a5, bishop d6, followed by counterplay specifically against the bishop on b5 is not bad at all for black. Yes, yeah, so then let's move on to the second game, uh, Vidit versus Fresine. It's a very, very classical position. Much more easy to understand for us. We, we know exactly yeah, all let's the not spend Let's not spend too much time on this. Yes, just, just to say that, yeah, it's a very solid position. I think both guys are super impressive in such type of positions because with it is a very, very fine strategist. And the same applies to Fresine. I believe both of them are enjoying all these nuances. Uh, we will keep an eye on the game, but we will not get into the depth yeah. of all these finesses right yeah. now. And then there's this, this very, very interesting Dutch in which, honestly, I'm already kind of preferring black. Like I would, I would be very happy to have this as black, like castle, d6, c6, queen, b6. I have plenty of play. I have this beautiful knight on e5. I very much like knight h6, knight h7. Knight, knight h, uh, h that was yes, a very... Well, I also feel like this is almost a Grimfeld for you, no? I mean... <sighs> sort of, yeah. I mean, you can sometimes get positions like this in some weird Grimfelds, but... Uh, but but yeah, sorry. Yeah, the pawn is on C. Yeah, the pawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, it just it just looks to me that you know White already needs to be very careful because if you if you just make kind of autopilot move, moves by both sides, I think somewhere around move fifteen, Black will be seriously ahead. So White needs to be quite inventive. Also, I get the feeling that you probably need to castle Queenside here for White because I think if you start playing Bishop two long short castles, you just have no real play and black has all the play in the world with the knight on e5 with the queen coming out to b6 with uh, counter play everywhere so yeah this is this is kind of shaping up to be a very very exciting very sharp uh very sharp uh yeah let's just very quickly take a look how we got here because yeah it's i have never seen this yeah d4 f5 bishop g5 first of all let me just tell you one thing what, what I have noticed that the engines like all this second move like knight c3, second move h4, bishop g5, whatever. But mm -hmm. I, I feel like, you know, seeing some Kamsky games when he's just playing from experience with the black pieces, he's always handling it very nicely. I would just recommend to go for the main lines and study the classical system in, systems instead of getting... Uh, inspired by all these computers because many of the positions which after second move knight c3 or bishop g5 are maybe good for computers but not necessarily for humans that that's kind of my feeling and here we are also getting this that white actually tricked himself in my opinion because bishop g5 g6 knight c3 bishop g7 f3 he wanted to be super clever that if black plays like classical with d6 or knight f6 then he can go e4 and maybe just crush black however Black immediately used this typical knight c6 move, hitting the pawn with the tempo, provoking this d4, d5. And after d4, d5, I, I perfectly agree with what Peter had been saying, that this is, this is a lovely position for black, knight h6. Knight gets to f7. Yeah. f4. Yeah, all right. Okay, so we see that it's going to be a very, very tough uh, match for, for, for India also. I mean, it's, it's not going to be an easy walk in the park kind of situation, a very messy. And I like the strategy of the French uh, team that they have. I feel like they have a clear strategy. For example, take a look at the, at the Musa versus Hari game has already kind of reached this position. And, and, and I'm getting closer and closer that, yeah, this is the way how it was going. What happened? Yeah, so the, yeah. yeah Bishop, Bishop D7. D7 happened. That's the move. Yeah, Bishop and B7. then uh, they continued blitzing because apparently this is all 
more or less forced, I would assume. Yeah, rook e7, knight c5, very strong here. The idea, of course, is that if I goes d4 after knight e6, the rook on e7 will be uh, kind of stuck and might actually get into trouble, so with some knight d5 ideas. Uh, so you have to take on c7, knight d3, bishop e3, and I mean, obviously white, white is a pawn up, so white is reasonably okay with all of this, but also with how active the black knights are and how broken up the structure is, you would assume that in most cases black actually makes a draw here, maybe even without too much trouble. Uh, in particular, if uh, you've studied this endgame, which I assume Harry has done, because once again, this is move 24, and he got here with like 15 minutes uh, spent on the clock. You you don't really do this if you haven't looked at this at some point. Um, yeah, so, yeah exactly. I'm expecting, so I'm expecting a draw, uh, but I'm expecting a draw where maybe uh, White gets to press for a little bit. Yes, well, I feel like, uh, you know, we have been covering now the first two matches quite extensively. Yeah, we, we, should, we should move on. Yeah, we yeah. should definitely move on. Let, let's move on. And wow. Okay, this, this is what I feel like it's too much respect from, from Surya towards Alexei Shirov. Surya is not true to himself. He's showing respect and, and goes for a quite drawish line. Or is he trying to, you know, maybe it's a very clever idea. He knows exactly that Shirov is so strong in complicated positions and he's trying to find the weak spot of, of Alexei and goes for a drawish line, however, where you have to be super precise. Yeah. And who knows, maybe Alexei is uh, not familiar with all the details. Yeah, is bishop f3, do they, do they always play bishop f3 there? I thought they were making some other move. Yeah, okay, just very, very quickly to, to show our audience, because, okay, I think everyone who is familiar with this knows where it came from, but uh, not everyone is probably so familiar. So this is the four knights of uh, in, in e4, e5, four knights coach. Bishop d3, d5, bishop d2. Yeah, this is a fairly new system. In the, it was developed in the last five, six years. Castles, castles. Black opts for bishop takes this. It's also the main move of Magnus Carlsen. I recall Magnus uh, playing bishop takes this many, many times against Wesley so already. Just uh, twice between... Ah, I think now recently in, in Zagreb also it happened this between them. Bishop e4, queen b2. So black eliminates the pawn. On b2, bishop takes e6, rook b8, but white keeps a tiny little advantage uh, with, with the development because his rook will be the one that reaches the b file. Yeah, but after rook d8, I have a feeling they play... I've actually done commentary on this position and I had some research done even and I can't remember the first thing. <laughs> it's so annoying. Uh... Well, there was also this game uh, Andrekin against, I mean, Andrekin Rapport from Belgrade Grand Prix. Maybe you have uncommented on that game, no? I, I think you and Jan commented on this. Yeah, we, we did, uh, yeah, like there was that and there were some other games as well. There were quite, quite a number of games here, of course. And uh, so, hang on a second, why? Yeah, so rook d8 is the main move, of ah, course. Ah, and Karyakin, we did from, from Vaikanze. Yeah, bishop f3, well. is the, bishop f3 is the main move. And yeah, bishop f5 is kind of rare. They all play king f8 here. So Alexei is actually coming with a new way of uh, with a new way of equalizing this position. Because king f8, rook b8, and then some move is what they normally do. But I think this is exactly what uh, Richie did against Andreki. Know that he gave up the pawn and was ready to be pawned down in a rook and game and know that this is going to be a false draw. I mean, theoretical draw. I mean, wasn't it that it was rook c7, bishop e4 or something and uh, then Andreki was thinking... No, that was, in, in, on my screen, there was one game in which White actually played h3 in this position. White didn't even take anything. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, yes, just to stop bishop e4, right, mm -hmm. correct, yeah. Just to play h3. In any case, I'm not expecting yeah, any... This, this is actually still Andrei rapport, and there is one of one other game between Andreas Hyman and, uh, and Luke McShane, so this also is uh, reasonably... Uh, yeah, I mean, basically, okay, I, I simply give that this is, is going to be a draw, and, and it that's it. It should be a draw, yeah. Yeah, we, we move on. Paco against Setu. Vallejo versus Setu Raman. Ah, they are playing this, uh, this battle that, that Firuza played against uh, Jan in the candidates. Mm. 
This is this uh, petal with C4. C4, knight C6, D3, knight F6, D4, bishop E7, D5, knight E5, knight D4, bishop G4. Yeah, fairly, fairly typical. I think Jan was also after the game saying that it's it's one of the key moves yeah, to, to get this bishop G4 out as quickly as possible. And, and there, Alideza was playing the very ambitious way with, with F3, which then later heavily backfired. Mm -hmm. Bako is playing the much more positional strategical approach with bishop e2 takes six, castles, knight cc, rook e8, castle, and we are getting some very, very quiet maneuvering position. Yeah, this shouldn't be much because uh, I think white is not as ideally coordinated as you would like. Because the, the, the extra space obviously means something, but with the queen on e2, uh, you know, not entirely uh, safe from from the X-ray along the E file, like Bishop F8, G6, Bishop G7. If it comes, it's going to be quite annoying. The pawn on C4 constantly worries White a little bit. If you imagine White like getting to play H3, B3, Bishop E3, you know, Rook E1, Rook D1, Queen C2, just to cut off all the counterplay, take away the the G4 square from the Knights to put the Bishop on E3. This is why I said H3. Uh, then, of course, you, you do have your extra space. Eventually, the knight on e5 can be pushed back with f2, f4, if you take away the g4 square, of course. And you, you probably enjoy yourself quite a bit, but you are very far away from it, I feel, here. And black should be fine, in my, in my understanding of how this is. Yeah, that's also my feeling. I think also very important to not to understand that black traded these light squared bishops. Yeah, very important because uh, white has the space advantage. So every trade helps in general black. Black also has some c6 ideas, which Jan also played uh, in the uh, in the game. Of course, after fc, it was maybe more logical because then white uh, weakened some, some dark squares. The, the traditional bishop f8 g6 looks also very, very solid. I'm expecting that, uh, yeah, it's it's lot to play for, but uh, objectively it should be perfectly fine for black. So let's move on. Gupta versus David Anton. What is this? So it was it was some kind of a Catalan. Bishop b4, check knight b2. Castles, bishop g2, dc4. Ah, okay. Wow. So Gupta allows this line. Some very four sequence of moves happened here. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually in, in Catalan, no matter what happens, it remains a very solid position for both sides. Bishop g5, bishop f5. And, and look at the clock situation. So basically, David Anton is still in prep. And Gupta is the one who is uh, kind of uh, playing over the board. On the other hand, he's the one who is fighting for advantage. So, so black is blitzing out in order to, to try to neutralize white's advantage, but white by no means runs any risk here. Yeah, seems kind of balanced. The, the one question I do have is, if white takes on f6 right this moment, are we sacrificing the spawn or are we going gf? Yeah, well, I'm guessing that you you sacrifice, but uh, <laughs> but it's easy to sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just check. So the question is that the the move b5 will be in time to get the pawn back or not? Yeah, I was counting on b5, and then some liquidation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the position is not the most exciting. I feel like David Anton anyway knows what's going on. The, the board four game excites me more because this is mm. our, our kind of structure with, with uh, Peter. And I feel like Black is in a lot of trouble. I mean, this is exactly what should never happen to Black. Yeah, I can, uh, I can relate to that feeling. But I mean, it's very concrete. If, if you already castled here with Black, you have zero problems, I would assume. So it's, it's very concrete now, like something like Queen A4 or Queen A8 check should happen. Uh, to win uh, to win material back straight away and then maybe move by move uh, morally can uh, uh, can work this out but yeah you do have to be you do have to be very precise of course yeah and because this this is such a model and instructive game we have to take it from the start this is also limo bishop b5 g6 uh, takes takes yeah this is the 
standard structure. It's the um, little move aims to stop black from going bishop g4. When when I was playing this from the black side, I was, you know, I don't want to go bishop g4 myself, but my opponent anyway stops it. In any case, it's a very, very useful move for white. Mm. Waiting for black also to show his cards. Uh, cards, uh, black goes b6. It was a move that I think uh, Rajabov and also Magnus were kind of uh, practicing, trying also to, to wait. Please show me your direction, white castles. Black goes e5. And now, whenever black plays the move e5, and here we can see that white actually, compared to lines that we discussed yesterday or, or day before, with rook e1, white has saved the tempo. In fact, hd move is much, much more useful than, than rook yeah. e1 here for yeah, white. For sure, yeah. And white is trying for very, very quick b4. Ah, in the Rauf, Rauf Mamedov game. Yeah, because Rauf was playing this from the black side against Paragua. And th that's when we discussed something similar. HDA5. So for the moment, it looks like black is very, very nicely controlling the, the B4 move, but it's not so easy. White plays bishop e3, knight e7. The white knight gets to d2, and now ready b2, b4 is a big, big threat. Queen c7, knight c4 played, bishop e6, white goes b4, takes, takes. You have to eliminate this uh, powerful knight on c4 because otherwise the opposition collapsed and now black takes the pawn. But I, I do believe that it's not only because the evaluation bar says that white has something uh, something significant, but it just feels that really black is one tempo too short here. Yeah, you're, you're ju just one tempo away from, from more or less complete and safe equality here. Another thing I wanted to discuss with you, and this, you know, also weirdly brings us back to a short conversation we had a few days ago about the King's Indian and the classical King's Indian. Can I play c5 here? Exactly. Yeah, and just is... claim, and I mean, structurally, this is nothing after b6, b5. But we're not talking structurally. We, I, I'm saying the knight on e7 is so horrible and the bishop on g7 also <laughs> not great. Yeah, you're absolutely right that these light pieces are so completely misplaced that I'm just going to have a very enjoyable long-term plus, even though white doesn't really have very many targets to, to attack. We will win the pawn on before. We can go like queen b2 and just win it straight away. But after that, black, black's position is very, very sturdy. But also, not I mean, even, pieces... even sorry to pardon the, that you yeah. have this knight e1 maneuver as well, yeah? Yeah, but the bigger issue is exactly uh, what I was saying earlier. Like, I have no idea how Black is supposed to, you know, put those pieces to any kind of use. Uh, so maybe maybe even C5 is uh, is quite annoying. Yeah, yeah. and C5 this on is... the board. It, it was also my very, very first uh, instinct that, yeah, what about C5? Because I remember from my... 20 years back uh, feelings that I thought like, no, no, it was the moment when I was taking back the things. I should never let this happen. Th this is this is danger. I don't know how big danger, but definitely it's, it's danger. Yeah. But uh, having said that, there a lot of material has come off the board and Black, you know, if you're searching for a weakness there to play against, it's probably the pawn on c6, but it's very, very well protected. Uh, and... Uh, on, like, if you imagine somehow that knight actually getting from e7 to e6, I think black is just instantly completely fine. In fact, maybe like with a knight on e6, the bishop eventually will go to f8. You can start maybe hoping for some counterplay against the pawn on c5. But it's very difficult to imagine how you get it from e7 to anywhere. The geometry just kind of disagrees with you. It has no squares. It can go to c8, but from c8 it cannot go anywhere again. Black can play a five, but I think in most cases, if you play a five, it will just destroy your own position. It's basically a way to lose the game very quickly because white will give a check from like b3, go knight g5, and your position will start collapsing tactically. So, yeah, I mean, it's solid, but nothing goes anywhere. Yeah, in fact, maybe it's bad, bad, but even uh, maybe preferable to Oof. eliminate this pawn, yeah? Yeah, but... Uh, I mean, it's terrible. Yeah, it's it's horrible. Yeah. But Rook D1 or something. Yeah, I, I really, really. Hate I was it. also yeah. even not sure if after B C5 you you can't include some Queen A8 check, mm -hmm. right? It's uh, it, it's also a big headache. Yeah, because uh, we we can't go Knight C8, then Bishop C5, our King is stuck, and after Queen C8, something like Queen A7 might yeah. be just brutally strong. 
Yeah, yeah, this is not this is not fun at all. Yeah, yeah. you play you yeah, play no, Queen D seven is... here, and you hope that you somehow survive. But yeah, it's also really... instead of Queen A seven, Queen A five was of course very strong. I mean, yeah, this is just just a terrible position. So, uh, so in fact, Spain Spain has already won one position where they can really look forward to something. The yeah. the Paco Vallejo game is kind of very solid. It's it's classical. The game Surya Ganguly against Shilov, this is gonna be a draw. Yeah, I this mean, is just gonna is... be a draw. Yeah, Surya chose not to even play H3, and yeah, this end game Surya, you know, it might be slightly surprising to the viewers that we're just confidently calling this a draw when you know White has four pawns and Black has three. But this is this end game is supposed to be a reasonably comfortable draw, even without the White King side getting completely ruined. But with the double death pawns, you 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 don't really even push too much. So in fact, the game where White should try something is is the Gupta game yeah. to to try to balance. However, here Gupta was out prepared, so he has to fight on his own. Uh, I I can imagine, you know, that knowing that we have two incredibly strong Indian teams and uh, the third team is kind of there to have fun and to to enjoy the atmosphere. They are not really expecting to fight for medal yet. They want to have a good time and, and perform their best they can. So no pressure on them. Maybe the two Indian teams said, you know what, this Spanish team is dangerous. Please take care of them, you know, <laughs> because it would be very useful for us. Yeah. That, that's certainly a motivation, but also extra pressure, extra pressure as well. Yeah. All right. We have discussed enough of, of this match. We can move on. Please, guys, uh, please tell me because there is so much. I'm, I'm happy to jump anywhere if we get good hints. Yeah. And uh, honestly, those seem to be like, I think our chat very much always wants to wants to take a look at the Indian youngsters. But maybe we should spend some time on like the couple, uh, the, the top maybe two uh, matches of the women's because we... Every day we seem to be only coming uh, coming to the women's tournament after we've sort of exhausted everything in in the open section, and that doesn't seem right. So, and also for you, you know, because oh uh, wow, yes, Hungary, Hungary plays with India. Okay, very interesting. Very yeah, very interesting. Exactly. All right. Yeah. However, I see that on board too, we already made the draw. Hungary and system, yeah, just to be safe and uh, don't, don't take too much risk. Gada Tizia showing big respect for for her opponent Harika. And uh, wow, what 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 was it? It was it was a rarity. Yes, this is the pro okay. What can even if you ask me, what do I suggest against d5 g6 bishop g7 setup against the rating? I don't know. It's a rock rock solid system, and uh, Garatizia decided not to go for any adventures, and uh, the players find the kind of logical repetition, and the game ended in a draw. Lot of action on the other boards. Board one, Humpy with the white pieces definitely will try to to squeeze and and torture. Huang Trung Trung. She's a very, very experienced player. She's already in, in Hungary since the middle of 90s. Yeah, so I look at her like a lo local, local girl for sure. Has yeah. been playing, I don't know, 10, 10 Olympiads at least already for Hungary. Very experienced player. Yeah, but what I don't like in her chess is that she's playing the, the, the Dutch and, you know, not the... I mean, Leningrad Dutch is one thing, but she's doing this E6, F5 business and against a strong opponent who is very well prepared, it should be suffering. Yeah, she will uh, She'll have to play carefully in particular. Like, she's playing this kind of a naive approach to, uh, to the Stonewall where, like, you develop the bishop to D6, you just allow it to be traded away, you don't even try to, to, to fight it necessarily. And, I mean, the Stonewall... I think most of us begin by thinking you can't possibly play like this. It should be completely horrible. And then as you, as you watch strong players play the Stonewall on the black side, you realize, no, it's just extremely solid. And if you know what you're doing, you're not really doing uh, uh, all that poorly at all. And uh, uh, yeah, here you are seemingly prepared to play C6, C5. And if you get C6, C5 in, how bad is your position really? Seems to be seems to be playable. Yes, but of course. Basically, yeah, it, it feels like this is a critical moment. We we may, might have been coming exactly at the right moment because if white can somehow stop black's plan, then then it looks very ugly for black. But if black gets what she wants, then actually maybe it's it's not nothing special. 
What, what would be your take? I mean, I know that you are also not an expert. I'm also not an expert. I'm just loving White's position. Some moves like B4 come to mind. Yeah, B4, C4... is, B4 is interesting here, trying to make C5 less attractive, even though it doesn't actually stop C5. Exactly. That's, uh, th that's why I'm also not 100% sure about B4. One thing we should mention that, yes, if Black wants to play C5, then the legitimate question is why does not White pushes C5 himself? But then it's a very double-edged question because later on Black will have the option of going e6, e5. So you can only do this if you know exactly that you will be able to control mm -hmm. things. Yeah, this is a very, very uh, double-edged approach because you do at least try to kill off the bishop on b7, but you're probably allowing e6, e5. And the bishop might come out via e6. The biggest problem is that you're not even necessarily killing off that bishop very effectively. So. Yeah, this is a very committal decision. I'm not yes, sure I like yes. it. Yes, I, I just wanted to highlight that, yes, this, this C4, C4, uh, 5 move is only good if it's really very, very strong. Otherwise, strategically, it's not desirable. By the way, we are talking about shutting down the bishops. Whose bishops are, is, is more dead, yeah, basically? Because yeah, exactly. The, the bishop yeah. on G2 is, is finished now. Yeah, that is true. And for, for the rest of this match... Uh, uh, Vaishali is clearly at least a little bit better against uh, against Sidonia. Yeah, the, the the bishop will come back to d3, I assume. And this type of a structure, it's also very move by move because if Blacklist, for instance, can play uh, can play queen b6 here and force White to uh, trade that bishop, then maybe it's not that bad. Yeah, because the knight is a little bit uh, yeah, too early is, committed. Yeah, mm -hmm. the knight is not on the best square. The knight on d2 is. Yeah, not not where you would want it to be. But if you imagine white kind of stabilizing and having this d4, f4 against d5, d5, e6 with the bishop on d7 and the light square bishop coming back to d3 and surviving, those types of positions in general are quite pleasant. Yeah, yeah. If white can stabilize, definitely. But I guess that black only allowed this structure because uh, she had something in mind. This is... Um... This is a big question. On the other hand, I'm not liking that she's thinking so much. Yeah, it, it, it signals that it's definitely not preparation. Okay, but it's a very, yeah, she's playing a very solid, uh, safe system. This e6, bishop, d6, mm -hmm. it's always solid, has a very nice reputation. Oh, hang on. Isn't this that white mixed up the move order? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is not supposed to be done. Yeah, I, I think I've had this conversation with people. Yeah, you place e3 here by autopilot. And then you realize you cannot take on d6 because d takes c3 exists. Or d takes exactly. c3, whichever one you like. There, there was one very early game between Firuza and Dominguez or something that, that I remember that it happened, it featured. So, yeah. And also, I think Magnus has done this maybe against Hikaru in St. Petersburg or somewhere. I think Magnus... I've heard Magnus complain about this as well, yeah, that he's done this. Yeah, he also, time. yeah, he also allowed this at, at, at some point, yeah. Yeah, and was very, very unhappy. Maybe against Ding Li then. Maybe against oh, yeah, against Ding, 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 exactly, against yes. Ding, not against Hikari, yeah, against Ding. Yeah, in uh, in the very first, which was not yet the Mad Watcher Champions Tour, it was, it was the Magnus Tour. I think mm. in the Magnus Tour, Magnus made this mistake, so I understand why he was Yeah, and he, I think he was completely lost and then somehow survived, or maybe even and won. And he won, yeah, and he, won he, and he even yeah, went yeah. on to win, the, win that game, yeah. Yeah. So this is board three. On board four, there is this really weird, uh, well, not very weird, but it's the the position you sometimes see. For those for those of our viewers who haven't seen Black do these things, it might look a bit strange because where are the B pawns? But this is genuinely a very good reply to the kind of a slow move order when White tr tries to play the Catalan with the pawn on C two. Uh, which is to play D five and then very quickly to just follow it up with B five shutting off the Catalan and just gaining space on the queen side. These systems are very, very legitimate and very interesting for Black. Yes, I have to say that I'm very, very excited about this game because Ga Joka is uh, the big Hungarian hope. She is uh, 15 years old and uh, she has been uh, world youth uh, champion already. And uh, yeah, uh, people are really hoping that she will achieve something big. And uh, this is her very first Olympiad, yeah, it's her first debut. She already played in the FIDA Online Olympiads and she was one of the dying forces on, uh, on the Hungarian team. And so far she has won all her games in the, in the tournament. 
And playing against Tanya, who is, of course, very, very experienced, we have had the privilege of commenting the very first game when she showed her class in this uh, long, long uh, pair of bishop end game, yeah, where she, she tortured her opponent and managed to win. So yeah. it, it's, it's, it's going to be a very interesting game. Yeah, I think black is completely fine. In fact, I, I wonder if we just take on c4 here, how easy it is to win that pawn back. I mean... In my mind, I have already taken on c4 long ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah when, when we have seen this position, I also thought like, okay, dc4 open up the bishop and, and okay, black is also coming out with knight bd7, c5. Yeah, or even my point is, let's say if you play queen c2, I am actually kind of interested in bishop d5 followed by knight c6, knight b4. Oh, wow, just like this, yeah? Yeah, just, just go for it. It's actually kind of annoying because if you go, let's say, knight bd2, I think I can play knight c6 and knight b4 next move against both e4 and knight takes c4. And it gets awkward for white. Like, you kind of run out of squares here a little bit. Or at least you, you run out of the squares you like. You, you still have squares, but you probably don't enjoy them very much. Uh, so yeah, I think I think Tanya potentially will have a very playable position by by move ten eleven here. Yeah, de definitely. She she already has a very nice position, and and I know that uh, Joka is a very very good theoretician. Actually, she knows her systems very well by disbalancing her. Yeah, that she has already spent so much time. It's already a big achievement. Yeah, because. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tanya is uh, more experienced and it's always kind of very nice to, to get the younger player out of the book and, mm -hmm. and get a strategical uh, position. All right, so a lot to play for. Yeah. It's going to be a very interesting match, of course, for me. And we have, we have the Bulgarian girls team play against uh, the Ukrainian. Yeah? And, and mm -hmm. we are seeing Salimova. I mean, Nurgul Salimova is a very, very dangerous player. And, and she's blitzing things out. I think this is Grunfeld and the fourth line. Please take it from here. Yeah, I think uh, playing, uh, uh, playing a six on move 10, this is one of the, the things that came back into, uh, into fashion recently, this idea of uh, should be five check, not on move seven, but on move eight. This used to be just a line people played to make a draw. And these days it's definitely played with a different intention. And here there are two different approaches. You can play d5 as, as she's doing here, or people have actually uh, developed some new ideas in the bishop e3, uh, or you know, let's say castles here is also something that people do quite seriously. And when you castle, people have now realized you can play d5 here. Because they used to just automatically take on c6 here, or play bishop e3, and then take on c6. And those positions have been analyzed more or less to a draw. Uh, but there's this new idea of playing d5 move 10, uh, which... I believe black is fine, but you do need to know what you're doing because it's uh, it's actually quite uh, quite serious. I had this twice in my match against uh, Nikita Vitugov in the Sochi uh, World Cup in 2021. In the classical game, I just played 95 here and was much, much worse. <clears throat> Barely survived that game. Then I was better, but I mean, out of the opening, I was in severe trouble. Bishop takes c3 is what you should play here. Uh, and then you, you you still are supposed to kind of know what you're doing because it's still quite dangerous. But uh, I believe Black survives. Uh, and the other thing is what uh, uh, Nurgul is doing today, which is uh, d5 immediately, queen a5, rook b1. And I think you're supposed to take on c3 here. I think a6 is slightly less precise because I have a feeling I didn't like the idea of giving white the option of taking on c6 and then playing castles instead of d takes c6. I think castles exists here. It doesn't really refute anything, but it's an, it's, it's an additional option which I thought there is really no point in providing for, uh, for white, which is why I thought taking on c3 with the check was stronger. But now that uh, Nurgul uh, took on c6 twice, we will get back to it again, I, I think. Uh, I think now we can take on c3 and play uh, bishop d2. I think they play bishop b6 here. Uh, and uh, this is supposed to be, uh, if I'm not misremembering things, this is fine. Uh, there is still obviously some precision 
that will be required. But I'm pretty sure that this is uh, this is okay. Yeah, actually, I'm even a little bit worried for white. Yeah, how how do we protect oh, this pawn on c6? It's still theory. Uh, you can go. Uh, I think queen c1 is one of the moves here. Um, it ends up it ends up really equalizing itself. Like you take on d2, you take on d2 with the king, and black goes. I think long castles very often, and I, I may be mixing things up. I, I do these days just open open chess base to <laughs> to consult my own work because I can't I can't remember anything at all anymore. It's just uh, really really upsetting. But look at this. She took queen takes c3. Do you know this move? No, you almost never take on c3 with the queen. As far as I can, yeah, bishop e6 is correct, and yeah, rook c1 is the rook c1 is the main move there. But still, after not queen c1, rook c1, but after bishop d2, you you do make a draw. Uh, oh, reason okay. like so queen takes nice. d2 and here yeah and this is if, if i can plug my own material a little bit after queen d2 there is a very smart move here uh where you start with queen d4 you don't take on d2 immediately you start with queen d4 uh trying to either force white to take which will take pressure off of our pawn on c5 or you provoke castles and now you take a new long castle Oh and wow! You, okay, very and, nice. And by driving the king away from the center and forcing white to take with the knight, you gain this very important tempo to castle queenside. And there have been some very easy draws made in 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 high level grandmaster practice. After knight b three, you take on b three, you go king c seven. It's a very easily holdable position for black because black has a lot of targets for counterplay. C six is weak, b three is weak. Yeah, it's just not a problem. Uh, but queen takes c three, I have never. Uh, like all of this move order is kind of mixed up, I think, by sort of by both players, in my opinion. I think uh, uh, this is this is not how it's at least supposed to go. But on the other yeah, hand, because uh, now, now I see your point. Yeah, because you you mentioned that in this move order, the the move that you don't like is the move short yeah. castle. Yeah, I would just castle here without thinking. Yeah, just not to give any of those options. But now after d takes c six, I look at queen takes c three. It definitely makes certain sense because. You expect bishop d2 to happen, and then you play queen d3 or queen c4, exactly. And you attack the pawn on e4, you prevent white from castling. Queen d3 actually looks better than queen, uh, queen Yeah, it even hits the rook on b1. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this looks, this looks very unclear and very playable for black. Um, yeah, actually, now I have the feeling that by not remembering and by mixing up things, uh, Maria has uh, tricked her opponent because... I mean, uh, she was probably trying to transpose to the other position, yeah, after bishop takes c3. And, and she gave this uh, chance of queen takes c3, and Maria spent quite a lot of time, but opted for queen takes c3. And yeah, she's to be honest, to I don't see how yeah. white is equalizing now. Yeah, exactly. And people are telling us that queen c3 is the best move and black is actually better. Uh, but yeah, you, you, should, you, you shouldn't get this position with black. They, like this option should not be given precisely because it, castles exists. And as I said, I think the engine thinks after castling black can still survive. But bishop takes e3, as far as I could work it out, is more or less a forced draw. And, uh, and after castles, you actually have to work for equality a little bit. So I didn't really like uh, giving white additional options, which is why I was recommending bishop takes e3. Uh, but yeah, a6 is not a huge mistake. It just, uh, in terms of, you know, quote unquote, clean solutions, bishop takes c3, I think, is a cleaner solution. But this is still playable. Yeah, exactly. This is the very high level of chess, yeah, that uh, usually when you are building a top repair to, uh, yeah, you want to be as precise as possible. And also because there is so much, um, I mean, such amount of material everywhere, yeah, that if you can limit things by exactly, knowing yeah. that. Okay, here I'm just playing like this and I'm shutting it down, then it helps you benefit in many other lines, yeah, because exactly. your, your yeah, brain just... will be ready to, to mm -hmm. memorize other things. Yeah, because you, 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 you know just how much stuff you need to keep in mind. So whenever you, you have some kind of a workaround to limit, limit it to one line where everything gets covered, you, you, you like that. Uh, so... so let's take a roundup of this match. Yeah. Anna Muzicuk on board to playing uh wow okay it's a french uh, i have never played this line with 92 f for c3 w what is your take on it um uh, yeah i mean it's i like this for white in general i like these structures i think um 
if black castles kingside, black probably gets mated very often. So you probably castle queenside for black here. But yeah, I like this. I I don't feel like we need to spend too much. Yeah, knight c2 here. I looked at this quite... Hang on, not in this position though, right? Ah, uh, but yeah, it happened from this move over there. Yeah, then after e6, knight e2 is a legitimate move. Yeah, because black wasted a tempo on a6, yeah? Yeah, but even even here, like I'm trying to remember this famous Morozevich lines. Like I think there was some position where Alexander all of a sudden was was like after knight c2, he was playing queen b6. And if you play queen c1, he was playing g5. Is it here? Maybe it's Yeah, here. something like this in Morelia. Yeah, he did this yeah, in yeah, Morelia, and, uh, I believe. A uh, kind of a typical position, you, you like you, you you want to play some kind of a quiet range, and then you know Sasha comes to the board and just goes g five somewhere randomly, and and everything just absolutely blows up. Uh, but what they have on the board right now, I think I I, I very much like uh, Anna's position, and then we have uh, uh, to yes. like a kind of a London ish, actually just a straight up a London in uh, Krastevo Shenina where. I guess we I guess we both kind of prefer white here, but it's exactly. not very much, yeah. yeah. And the line on board four, I think I played this with white. This is a very concrete line of the Reti where uh, black is trying to play arguably the most solid approach against the Reti with uh, d5, c6 and bishop g4. And this attempt where white suddenly kind of gives up on the Reti and goes d2, d4, which is not something that you always want to do. But that's connected with a very concrete idea of taking on d5 and playing knight e5 straight away, trying to sort of play against the bishop on h5, exactly. So what they have on the board now is... Ah, uh, yeah, of... because you had a game against Karyakin in Thor yeah. Vikans, in, in and Vike, I was... Yeah, yeah Jan played it against Duda, yeah, and, and we kind mm -hmm. of surprised Duda with this line in the candidates now. Yeah. Uh, once again, no need to, uh, to go into too much detail, but this is a very, very sharp line, which is... Uh, one of the best ways for white to try and get something in those kind of ultra solid retis. So it looks like the Ukrainians are doing quite well so far. And we'll, we'll come back to we'll come back to the women's, but uh, the, the top two matches there. Are, oh, hang on a second. There seems to be in the in the match between. Uh, uh, what is this match three? Well, it's Georgia versus uh, India two. Yeah, and looks like uh, uh, there is already one result there. Oh, wow, what? This is, this is what I was... She, she blundered Queen H3, I guess. Whoa, that's kind of painful. Uh, we, can show, we can show our viewers this game and then probably move back to the open section because this is a kind of a, you know, a, a book material, mini miniatures. Wow. Oh my God! Yeah, this yeah. Is, this I think is a... I think she thought she thought she was being you know tactically clever, uh, Varshini there, and she missed uh, a kind of a finesse and was immediately lost. Still theory, still theory, probably still theory, and now you probably are not supposed to touch this pawn. But she thought she was being quite quite tactically aware because knight e five looks scary uh, using the pin on this diagonal, but she goes knight c three attacking the queen and attacking the bishop on g2 but white has a way to protect it as it turns out by playing queen h5 threatening mate in one and then the move that she missed you don't miss queen h5 you miss queen h3 wow and it's basically resigns because uh, the bishop is hanging the knight is hanging and if you take on g2 as she did the rook is hanging on a8 so yeah she made a couple of more moves and then just resigned because she is a full piece down now what? This is, of course, a cold shower. This is a terrible blow for the second Indian team. Yeah, this starting, is... A, starting a match like this. Wow. Yeah, if you, if you, st if you start 0-1 after half an hour, yeah, it's, uh, it's not great for the rest of the team. But these things do happen. Not very often, but they do happen, yeah. Yeah, all right. We, we haven't actually even uh, looked at Magnus's game, yeah? Which, yeah? which just shows that how much yeah. action we have. So yeah, match, let, let, match let 13, yeah. it's match 13, so we can, uh, this is match 8, so we go down, 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 uh, and they're playing against, uh, ah, yes, against Mongolia, against Mongolia, yeah, and uh, Magnus is, we keep on saying he likes the Carlsbad, and he keeps on getting the Carlsbad, kind of confirming <laughs> our words, so, yeah, uh, with reverse colors, mm, with, with all kinds of colors, yeah, like, with, yeah, yeah, reverse color, reverse Carl's but with white, and uh, and then the actual Carl's but with white, and so on. Ah, so but how did he get this? Yeah, because it's a clean Ragozin. 
So he goes bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, castle. Ah, okay, what, what is this? Oh my God. So basically, black got bluffed. I mean, not bluffed because this bishop h4 is a very serious gambit line. Yeah, but you are supposed to actually take up the challenge and, and take the pawn because if you are mm. playing castles, in fact, from slowly from a Ragozin, you end up in some car. Yeah, and this is the whole spirit of, I mean, uh, le let me just show you that the main idea of this modern Ragozin is you have to see the, the bishop g5, you go h6, bishop h4, you go castles, and after e3, you go bishop f5. That's mm -hmm. the whole point that you develop the bishop quickly on f5, and then you go knight b7. Depending on the situation, black, what white is doing, you might get the chance to play c5 or get some g5, knight e4. In any case, everything is connected with the bishop on f5. However, Magnus, uh, Magnus, true to himself, I mean, he knows so many finesses. He probably felt like his opponent is, is not that familiar with all these details. And after bishop h4, he did, does not dare to take the pawn. Castles, e3, and already now white got what he wanted. Knight yeah, you're basically CD. like you're playing a Cambridge Strings with... Uh... With white getting everything, everything you want, absolutely right. Exactly. Yeah, the the bishop on b4 is terribly misplaced. I mean, there is no worry of knight e4 line that we have been uh, talking about before in in earlier games with when black has a bishop on e7. So white is having all the freedom in the world now. Bishop d6 is moved back, so the pin still exists. The bishop on h4 is not in any kind of trouble. Queen c2, rook e8, rook f e1. Very yeah, nicely no. getting ready for some e3. For exactly, ideas. like you would like to play knight of eight here, but it might be just straight up very bad because of e4. Like, you might not have a good reply to e4 at all here in g4, knight e4, and things just kind of start collapsing because bishop e7, we take on f6 with the with the bishop, I guess, and we that forces gf. Yeah, wow. I mean, uh, okay, very, very smart choice by Magnus and, and he tricked his opponent. Now he got to the dream position and I'm expecting Magnus to make the most of this opportunity. Yeah, this looks, this looks promising for Magnus for sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then it gives us the, the, the importance to take a look at other games that is there a chance for Mongolia to, to fight back in one of the boards? Because this is also the kind of probably the strategy from, from Mongolia. If you know that you are on board one black against Magnus Kars, and then you have to look for some some alternatives. Where do we where do we have a chance to score? And I mean, not necessarily because you are like the the higher rated player, but simply if you compare the scenario to to Magnus versus someone and anyone else, and then you understand that you have to you have to move to other boards. So I mean, yeah. it looks like a very sharp position. Tadi has blitzed out basically. Yeah, and, but there's there's an hour on the clock for for Arian here, uh, yes. an extra hour. He clearly knows exactly what he's doing. His opponent is, but also kind of it's a dynamic that I I discussed on air, and I'm sure you also discussed, but we haven't I think spoken about it together, where uh, it is you know slightly uh, you know cheerful for the white player here that Arian is playing so quickly because it means that you're still sort of following the main lines. So at least he can take some solace in that uh, he probably is still making good moves because his opponent hasn't started thinking yet. But on the other hand, it's not very fun to be an hour down on the clock by move 18, of course, because uh, yeah, you, you will need that time later. Yeah, it looks like some kind of a very heavily theoretical uh, Catalan, which should be fine for white. It's just that, uh, you know, Aryan clearly is still very much in book. Exactly. I mean, if, if Aryan would not be blitzing things out, I would be a little bit worried for black. And this is also one of the things we have to, we have to mention that th th there are different scenarios. If your opponent is blitzing everything out, and uh, of course you are a little bit worried because it's, it's not a nice, it's never a nice feeling. But if, for example, finally, at the moment when you actually like your position and your opponent who has been blitzing things out suddenly slows down and, uh, and is not reacting, not blitzing out so-called the final key move of, of his preparation or he does not know the key move, then there is a, a suddenly a comfort and you get a lot of confidence that, wow, aha, okay. So this is a computer line. My opponent knew up till here, but he might not know the, the, the final finesse. 
And how many times if you end up following computer lines, it's not anymore logical chess, yeah? So no matter how strong you are, it's very difficult to play exactly on the same level that you have been uh, using there so far. It, it can also sometimes the preparation backfires if, if you don't know it well enough. So Exactly, yeah. Yeah. It, it's definitely a very exciting position, uh, something to look forward to. I also feel that on board four, let me jump to board four, because isn't uh, isn't this queen c6 some kind of a very nasty double attack? Well, black can save, uh, you know, the big material by both rook a6 and knight b6, but uh, you have to calculate because rook a6, queen b5, I don't really like any of our options. Knight b6, queen b5, I'm not worried. Ah, hang on, e2 is protected. Oh, okay. And also knight b6, maybe there is some bishop g5 thing. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, we have a knight on h5, we have two pieces uh, hanging a little bit, also the pawn on b5, of course, but this is not the main issue, then bishop a6 comes. White is also ready to come with knight d3. I mean, I feel some some dangers here. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, I wouldn't be very confident here with black, but we'll see. It's still, uh, it's still all, all, all to play for, and... Uh, yeah, and uh, and just to make then a complete roundup, uh, John Ludwig Hammer with the white pieces on board three. Well, this is a very normal standard uh, knight off for black. I think black has nothing to worry about. Yeah, seems seems fine. You sometimes like some end games could become unpleasant because of the pawn on a five and the knight on b three. We are quite far away from there, and also d six d five seems to be quite well prepared already. So. Black will be able, hopefully, for, for them to um, free up the structure. And, yeah, so uh, in fact, just, just to conclude, uh, I think, our thoughts that, yeah, Magnus is doing very well. We are expecting Magnus to probably win. However, the match will be very, very tough. I mean, on all other three yeah. boards, Mongolia is doing quite well. And once again, the streak, yeah, it, it, the streak keeps coming back. Knight h5, knight d5 here. <laughs> yes. It's yeah, almost well, actually, it's almost the same point yeah, than yesterday with pawn on a5 and look on f1. Yeah, it's, I think it's exactly the same position, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but nobody, nobody blunders that anymore. And now he will blitz out h3 and he will enjoy himself immensely here, I think. Yes, yes. No, Magnus in, oh. uh, in the driving seat, very, very happily. Yeah, people, uh, are, well, people are demanding, I think the biggest two demands I see in chat are the, uh, the Dutch team. Yes, and let's take a look because, in fact, it's a very big duel. Yeah, the Dutch versus Israel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's take a look. I'm and then maybe the, the the Indian kids, the India too. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So Anish against uh, Boluhovsky. Wow, I mean, Anish playing the Philidor. Basically, he feels like it's a must-win game. Wow. Okay. Never seen this before from Anish. Yeah, it's, a, it's some kind of a new development, considering, you know, he has courses out for the Nidor of the Dragon and the French, and then he plays the... Maybe this is a kind of a preview of the new content he has in the pipeline. Yeah, what's coming up next, right? Yeah, yeah like that. Uh, and also, I think today, uh, if we are allowed to plug, uh, plug the products a little bit, I think today the, 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 the first ever uh, chessable course by Levon Aronian comes out. Uh, Levon Aronian, I think it's called Levon Aronian uh, Beauty, on Ch Beauty in Chess Volume 1. And apparently for Levon, they gave permission for him to wear a new shirt for every video, which they didn't let me do at all. I think they don't trust me with different shirts. But uh, <laughs> Levon, I think from, from what I've seen in the preview, in the preview, and I think this is a brilliant marketing decision, they don't show you a single position, but they show you Levon in like six different shirts. And this is exactly how you're supposed to market a, 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 a Levon course on anything, I think. This is very, very... Uh, yeah, sounds very, very, very exciting. But now for Anish, I mean, okay, I would, you know, if I would be Boduchowski and I would know that, yes, Anish is an incredible player, a fantastic theoretician and, and everything, but if suddenly he plays the Philidor, then my first feeling is, okay, it's not his style, he hasn't done it before. Yes, I understand he's Anish Giri, but uh, it's a Philidor. So, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm at least, Philidor, you know, yeah. equal to, to, to that, yeah? I mean, there is nothing to worry about. So, a4, h6, bishop f1, rook e8, h3, b6, bishop e3, a6, knight h4, 
Okay, I mean, a little bit strange, yeah. What 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 things? What kind of things are happening here? Not exactly the standard way of treating the Philidor. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. And I, I recently, I recently had the Philidor against. Was it against Berkesh? Uh, against uh, Berkesh, you could easily have, yeah, because he was terrorizing yeah, yeah. the uh, blitz, you know, with the Philidor, the, yeah, like and, 10, uh, 15 years ago. Uh, I, I was I was very flattered by what he's because it's it seems to be his main opening, and I spent some time in the morning preparing, and after the game, he told me that until a certain moment, where apparently I was kind of winning by force, but I couldn't find it over the board. Uh, he said, like, my first 17 moves were all the absolute best moves. And he said, yeah, like, this is the line that I thought is the line why I should stop playing this opening. But I still chose to play it one more time. And I said, he said, uh, as you were sitting there thinking, I was saying to myself, why am I doing this? Like, I know this is bad. But I couldn't find the, the final precision, uh, pre precise detail. And he made a very comfortable draw in the end. Wow, okay. But then you have revealed everything, yeah? So... Everyone only has to do one thing to, to look up your game, uh, open engine, and find that spot, and that's <laughs> I'm it. Not, I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying where, and it's, it's actually quite well hidden. And even after, I'm not winning, winning. It's like White gets a solid advantage. It's not really refuting the opening. I think he, in general, I think, and this is also something that I've experienced myself. When you play an opening for a very, very, very long time, the problems kind of you start feeling that the problems are bigger than than they actually are because there's like you think about them so much and every game you try to fix them and and they assume this huge proportion in your uh, in your mind when in fact like first of all nobody really cares as much as you do and secondly <laughs> probably the position isn't as bad so so it's not it's not really as horrible at all yeah, this I know for myself that uh, some of the openings I kind of give up that ah, this is unpleasant and then I had the chance to to get that position from the opposite side and I felt like, why did I stop this? I mean, where is the advantage? Yeah, yeah exactly. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, let's right. let's continue the tour because, okay, this is mm -hmm. uh, double-aged Filido. Actually, I feel like okay, Anish got a very interesting position. Uh, yeah, it's, it's I think be interesting. I, I, I think the computer really likes the, uh, the the Jordan's position here. I was trying to figure out exactly why, without too much success. I thought maybe some kind of a quiet move here, like rookie two to play rook b one later. But I don't know uh, if uh, if that's enough. You can of course also try to maybe be more concrete, but. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe okay, hang on. Four? In order to understand this mess, yeah, because it's a total mess, we have to know where it came from. It's it's again the Petlov. We see that, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, before what happened, Kramnik was patronizing the Petlov, yeah, in the beginning of 2000, middle of 2000, after also played it against me in the World Championship match and, and knocked my 1e4 out completely. Uh, and now suddenly Jan is the one who... Who kind of started winning so many games with the petal from the backside that people suddenly noticed that okay, come on, if you can win so many games with the petal, why not to why not to play? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. And this d four knight x d four bishop d c line was something that we were doing. I think both of us in 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 the middle and end of nineties, right? Yeah, I mean, I I never played it with black, but I had a lot of this with white at some point. Yeah, against. Uh, Arthur Yusupov was playing this uh, very often in like mid to late nineties, and other people. But as well. but you also played with ninety five, yeah. Yeah, I think I mainly played ninety five. Yeah, G five yeah. wasn't uh, anywhere near as popular in those years. Yeah. Yeah, D five knight C six. I mean, yeah, this, this is the moment when it doesn't really look like a petal. It, it becomes uh, like a scotch or something. Uh, the, the yeah, open Spanish. You know, there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of similarities to other things. Yeah, and this is very, very heavily theoretical now. Like it's a, a very central line. Knight c3 takes takes bishop c5, rook e1, castles. Yeah, this is very much open Spanish style. It's the bishop h5, rook b1. Yeah, white's pawn structure is compromised, but white has a lot of lot of activity and also tries to make use of the b file immediately. Mm -hmm. B6, bishop f4 h6 
Yeah, I think they were still playing quite quickly up until that point. So g4, at some point you have to solve the issue of the pin, so you go g4, bishop g3. And then Tamir made this move f7, f5, which might look strange, but I, makes a lot of sense both strategically and tactically, because you want to, uh, to have access to the f-file. And uh, uh, Jordan's reaction shows that it has, it has to be taken seriously, so uh, he takes on Passan, allows all of these trades. And here, interestingly, Queen takes d5 is available with check. But he chooses not, to, chooses not to do it, chooses to keep it uh, in reserve, plays king g4 first, king g2, sorry. And uh, now d5 is hanging, uh, c7 is also hanging, but it's probably less important. Uh, yeah, black kind of has to do something, plays d5, d4. And uh, yeah, the engines seem to indicate white is significantly ahead, but I'm not entirely sure how to, uh, how to prove it. You would like to land rook e6 at some point, which is why I was talking about rook e2, rook b1, or rook e4, rook b1, because you, you can't, like, you, queen c4, rook e6 would be excellent, if not for the fact that our knight on f3 is hanging. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, you, you have to do it while preserving control over, over the f-file, and this is why I was looking at those quiet moves. But maybe there is something very forceful here available, I just don't want to... Uh, hang on, but is it is it the case that yeah you cannot take DC three because of Queen D five check and this is what D6. I was trying this is what I yeah. was trying to calculate. But the thing is, like let's play rook e two here just to show mm -hmm. what I was yeah DC. Mm -hmm. We go Queen D five, King H eight, Rook E six. Black has knight E seven, and this is what I was trying to calculate. You go knight E seven, Queen E four. Let's say Queen F seven. It looks ugly, but I mean, have we lost? <laughs> Uh, well, maybe. okay, one extra pressure and then it's gone, yeah? So maybe, yeah, what, what about knight h4? Knight h4, rook b1 or something. Maybe we have lost, actually. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Those variations were also what I was trying to, what I was trying to calculate exactly, yeah. Yeah, so in fact, then your, your quiet move, rook e2, because you were talking about the position and we still wanted to look from the beginning. Uh, sorry that I did not appreciate Im immediately the strengths behind this little move, but yeah, and I understand the point. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for D takes C three, and then I can sort of spring into action and go for those tactics. Yeah, and in the meantime, I'm very much preparing Rook B one, of course. Rook B one would be a fantastic move to to be to be able to make. Maybe Black goes Rook E eight as yeah, well. Yeah, Black I'm should sure. go. Yeah, we have to fight for the E file. But now. Maybe we are happier somehow trying to win the c7 pawn, you know, just kind of make some trades because it, it lures the rook away from the f-file and maybe we have time to win a pawn somewhere. And and who knows? I mean, maybe we can also just insist on, on the very same idea, right? Yeah, yeah, takes, rook, rook takes and... Uh, yes, I mean, there. even even without the, the extra now, rook is... Now black will have knight before. The difference will be that if you do exactly the same uh, without the rook on b1, like if you imagine the, the position we were discussing earlier, knight before we had rook b1 takes before. Yeah, now but even have... then, even then, because the knight is coming. Yeah, okay. Are we sure queen f3 loses? Probably does, yeah. I don't know. But probably you have to already take it because otherwise knight e5 is coming. Yeah, yeah knight, knight e5 will definitely win, yes. So we have to go queen takes f3 here and take on c2 in the end. But the king is very close and the other king is on h8. Yeah, and, and we also have this check just in case yeah. to get out of the fork. Yeah, yeah I get the wow. feeling this is, okay. this is not great. Yeah, yeah, I, I think now we have given enough reasoning why, why we kind of agree that uh, the evolution bar's suggestion that White has mm -hmm. very dangerous initiative is, is correct. In the meantime, I'm very surprised by what Irvin is doing today. Like, I, you know, he has done this to himself kind of voluntarily. Yeah, this is terrible, horrible. Yeah, like, I mean, you don't lose every single one of these types of positions, but you definitely lose some. <laughs> and you also, like, I would just hate life so much if I had this with Black that I would, you know, work really, really hard on never having to play anything like it if I, if I have any choice at all, but... Yeah, wow. I mean, uh, also look at the clock situation that he kind of got completely surprised and uh, and getting a technical position against Mirin, yeah, who is such an experienced uh, and, and fantastic player. I mean, I'm not like... Having, having said that, I mean, he is obviously, you know, very, very experienced, like he is, uh, he is a veteran of the chess movement and all, and all that, but 
Ilya's strongest side, I feel, always has been, you know, tactical, messy positions, sharp positions. Uh, so it's not like he cannot play this. Of course, he will know exactly what he's doing, but, you know, it's not as hopeless, you know, against him as it would be against uh, some Wolf of the... Wolf Anderson, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah like, if you, yeah, if, you give, if you give the white side to Wolf here, even right now when he hasn't played any chess for 15 years, you know, <laughs> you still don't really fancy it. And also, <laughs> very importantly, if you give this to Wolf, you must absolutely forbid him from either offering or accepting a draw offer because otherwise maybe it will be a draw you know <laughs> like <laughs> if yeah you're... but if the game is played out you're gonna lose yeah that's yeah, for yeah. sure but yeah if, if you actually force him to make moves he will beat you yeah but it's uh in in normal circumstances it's not so easy to force him to make moves but yeah i i actually won't even want to take a look how did how did this happen because, I mean, Erwin is such a great theoretician and, and Smirin is usually an EFO player, no? I mean, how does this happen that in a, in a Catalan, Smirin out prepares Erwin? I mean, it's kind of... Ah, okay, it comes from BC. Okay, it's, it's Anish's territory. Yeah. It's, it's Anish's territory and it's very, very smart. But uh, what happened here? Takes, takes. This is all fairly mainstream theory. Takes, takes Bishop D7. Knight C3, this is the move that I think uh, it was heavily underestimated until uh, until Radek, Radek Wojtasek beat, uh, beat Van Kampen. Oh, no, mm. no, sorry, pardon me. Was it Van Kampen beating Radek in Bundesliga? Some very, very important game between Solingen and Baden-Baden. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I seem to remember that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and, well, and is... ever since, this, this move is, is not to be underestimated. Despite seemingly uh, symmetrical yeah, position, this is, this is just incredibly annoying for Black. And uh... no, but takes takes Bishop C six. This is like showing too much respect. I mean, you have to play Rook C eight here. You have to play something. Yeah, I mean, Rook C eight. I guess Knight B five is is still. You have to play. Uh, hang on, but this is my. This is some. I mean, it used to be my repertoire. I mean, if if we would turn the board, yeah, that <laughs> I would get Black. I would have the instinct automatically. <laughs> But uh, oh my God, no! I mean, takes takes bishop c six. This is this is terrible. This yeah. is uh, incredible. And honestly, torture. honestly, like after all the speeches we gave, I'm still a little bit surprised. But after after all the conversations about you know how annoying this is, I just turned to that game uh, on my screen just to check what the theory is, and I saw what the evaluation of the current position is. I, I can I can allow you to guess. What after Rook D1? What do you think the engine is saying? Well, I mean, I guess that it should give like plus one for white or not. Two and a half. Two and even two and a half. Okay, that's already. I mean, not, I mean, not two the, and a half. Two point two. Wow. <laughs> I mean, for for the human eye, it's uh, th th this isn't like plus two, but I mean. Yeah, exactly. Solid... This is why this is why I wanted yeah. to to kind of point this out. It really is not good. I mean, it's it's clear like a plus one, plus one and a half, and yeah, yeah, and yeah. you are very excited over the board. That okay, come on, risk free advantage. I mean, okay, when do you get this in the modern chess game? Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, okay, no, this is this this is very very dangerous situation for the Dutch team, but okay, Jordan has apparently a moment, but hang on, Jordan has taken CD4. So... Yeah, Jordan's taken CD4 and, uh, well, I mean, he must have some tactical justification for it, because in general, I think Black clearly uh, would very much like to trade some pieces here. It would make Black's yeah, life exactly. a lot easier, so I'm a bit surprised by this. I'm, I'm also surprised. And the, the board four game, I mean, Max Weimadam, who I felt like, you know, is, is like a very, very dangerous uh, player on, on board for, for, for the Dutch team. But today he is facing Maxim Rostein, a very, very experienced player. I mean, I would always think like, you know, in, in my head, I would, I would think like uh, Maxim is like a 2700 player because his, his, his chess culture, his chess knowledge, opening knowledge and, and his experience... Simply, I, I, I have to yeah, I, I played for him. I played for the same club as him for many, many years. Yeah, I respect him greatly. He's, uh, uh, but he, I, I think maybe he is not, obviously, as, as all of us were. You know, the last couple of years, people haven't really played that much chess because of the 
uh, the pandemic, of course. And uh, but yeah, I mean, he's still twenty six, seventy four, even after you know two years of relative inactivity, and uh, yeah, very, very good player. Um, these types of structures are kind of confusing because it seems like White has given up you know, a lot of control in the center. There's this knight on d4. You never really want to take it, or at least not without preparation. But the plan for white here is to sort of completely ignore that this knight exists, and at some point to start launching things on the king side. Like you want to play a four, you know, g4, a five, g5, and so on. And then eventually maybe you'll have to address the question what to do with the knight on d4. Currently a four is completely unplayable because it loses to knight takes b3. Yes, exactly. That, that that's why I put the queen on d2 first. Yeah, because unfortunately my head can't can't make a move like this. Yeah, yeah. F1, I'd be still so you, you have to at least you have to at least spend one more tempo preparing it, and maybe even more than one. We'll see. But uh, yeah, and queen d2 played by by Max uh, in the meantime. Yeah, wow, well, it's a it's a very very messy double edge match because yeah, Smithin has a very very good chance against Erwin. On the other hand, lot to play for on the other boards. Uh, also, the the key game will be definitely between Boluhovsky and, mm -hmm. and Anish. Yeah, because Anish is taking big big risk in order to to get fighting chances. Interesting yeah. match. Very interesting. Yeah, this is going to be a potentially a very sharp game, depending on what Boluhovsky chooses to do here, because. It feels to me that if you take on, if you play e4, e5 here, black of course goes knight e4. It feels to me that you might have to sacrifice that exchange. But I don't hate it. Because we want to play bishop d3 next, and we will have significant play against the black king side. But obviously, with white to move, I would be very happy with this. With black to move, black has a number of things he could try. You can play bishop c5 here, try to offload some pieces. You can play maybe queen d5. But yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting sharp position, which could happen. On the other hand, if you go e takes d5, I think black is probably just fine or close to fine. We will take on e1, we will take on d5 for the pawn. Once again, providing ourselves with a e4 square for our knights. Yes, and this I, this I think is very safe. Yeah, yeah. This I don't mind at all for Black, to be honest. Yeah. I think this is fine. So, uh, his oh, okay. Rook eighty one is an option I completely ignored. Actually, yeah. This this exists. Yeah, this was the the third option. I mean, okay. Simply, you had no time to get there. Yeah, because yeah, e five yeah. and this action sacrifice had to be mentioned. E d five had to be mentioned, and yeah, Rook eighty one played. Keeping all the options open, but I really believe that uh, with the knight on h4, whenever white has to take on d5, black will be always perfectly fine. So yeah. I'm also hoping for some some initiative with d5. But I want to say that, like in terms of those positions we were discussing, I think let's say black plays queen c7 here, which is it looks like a blunder of the pawn on d5. But I think I'm actually okay sacrificing that pawn in in most cases. Like if you go e5, I will play. Rook e1 once again, rook e1 cd. And if you take twice, I will play bishop b7, and I will claim that I have activity, nice pieces. Pawn on f4 is really, really misplaced. I definitely have some play for the pawn, at least here. But what I want yeah. to say is that after queen c7, my exchange sacrifice has improved kind of dramatically. After knight e4, I will very, very happily now just take everything. And bishop c5 is really no longer very attractive at all because it doesn't create, after the trade, there will be no threat of queen d4 check, giving me time to play bishop d3. Queen d5 is not a legal move anymore. <laughs> uh, so this suddenly looks very, very interesting to me. Yeah, I would be very, very scared with, with the black pieces here. I mean, yeah. In, in fact, yeah, Anish has to find a very good, uh, clever reaction after rook d1 because. Yeah. Otherwise, can can he? No, he can't. Okay, then. No, the question is maybe you can play something like bishop b7. But once again, it's not where it's supposed to go. It gives up the f5 square for the knight, right? Even yeah, if it no, doesn't lose anything, uh... even if it doesn't lose anything tactically, it feels like it's sort of going in the wrong direction a little bit. Yeah, I, I feel like that the position is so tricky and so complex that let Anish find his yeah, way. Exactly, right? Yeah, exactly. that's that's <laughs> always the way. That's always the way. Yeah, this is this is for uh, him. Okay, so ah, and we have to go to in second Indian team. Where, yeah. where are they? Ah, here. There they yes. are. Yeah, there they are. 
All right, so Gukesh versus uh, Vocaturo. And we, and we see big, big respect from, uh, from Daniele uh, towards Gukesh. He goes for this very, very modern semi tarash or it's not even semi tarash it's uh, what kind of the modern tarash then? CD5, yeah. CD4, Queen takes D4, ED5, a line that has served very nice purpose for black. I mean, uh, black is doing extremely well and white is finding it so hard to, to find any real ways to, to fight against it. Bishop g5, bishop e7, e3, castles rook d1. This this I kind of called uh, call it the Polish system because mm. I noticed uh, Radek was doing this and also Duda was was doing this rook d1 move order. Magnus has picked it up as well. It's now one of the main uh, move orders fighting against this opening. Queen a4, h6, bishop f6. Bishop f6, knight takes d5. Okay, so white is going for this very direct approach of, of hitting on d5 immediately. Uh, and this structure was how Duda beat Karyakin in this very, very important uh, World Cup game in yes. the semifinals. But here there is a detail that white has already lost some time with queen a4. And I think for this reason, it, it will be a completely different story. And uh, black takes, bishop takes b2. Sacrifices both bishops, but already <laughs> white has sacrificed the piece before. Yeah. So threatening bishop c3 check. White goes rook takes d5. Bishop c3 check is played. King d1. Queen e7. Bishop c4. Knight a6. King e2. Rook yeah, importantly, d4. maybe, you know, for a second there, it might look to our viewers that white blundered knight c7, but knight c7, rook d7 doesn't actually win any material. So it's, it's an empty thread. I actually still, you know, despite all the time that White lost, maybe in comparison to the Duda Karekin game, I still like this quite a bit for White. This, uh, I mean, it's I understand it's very move by move, but uh, neither of them have been blitzing, so they 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 both, I I mean, know the general themes, but don't really know I think the precise details here. But yeah, the, structurally, uh, the bishop on c4 against the bishop on this long diagonal c3 f6 wherever it goes. These types of positions are very, very dangerous uh, strategically because uh, the, the white bishop just does so much more. Uh, but it's not an end game yet, and maybe uh, just move by move, this is okay for black. But I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, okay, the, the, the bishop on c4 attacks the pawn on f7, the rook on d5, followed by rook hd1, white will have a fantastic grip on the d5, always be threatening rook d7. And if we all even forget about all these things in long terms, actually White even has this G4, H4, G5 plan. Absolutely, uh, yeah. If you yeah. have time for that, it's very, very dangerous because the bishop on c4 supports those types of attacks really, uh, really nicely. Yeah, I just but, feel like that now with the knight on a6 and with a very quick rook, rook ac8, black should be in time to generate counterplay. But yeah, the next couple of moves will be decisive because if white stabilizes his position long term, it's going to be very difficult for black. Yeah. All right. So a lot to play for here. Second board, Luca Moroni against Nihal Sarin. Yeah, this is something that I'm quite pleased with because uh, uh, I think this is sort of generally the, the move order I recommended uh, against the dreaded London. And... Uh, I think in general in these types of structures, yeah, we, once again, let's just get to somewhere around move seven because shockingly, as I was preparing the material for that course, I realized that <clears throat> after bishop f4, <clears throat> uh, starting from that position after bishop f4, bishop g7, move three, white has like 10 different move orders, which all try to do exactly the same thing, but they're all different. <laughs> and in fact, you cannot react in exactly the same way to every single one of them. It was driving me absolutely insane because I thought, okay, I will figure out what in general I want to do against the system and I will just give this idea against everything. But it turns out that like if white saves on the h3 move, you cannot do this. If white has the knight steal on b1, some things are not good anymore and, and so on and so forth. And, but, but generally speaking, the idea here is in particular with when the knight comes to d2, you are very happily taking on d4 because if white recaptures with the pawn, Black very, very quick. I mean, the e pawn, sorry, not the c pawn. If, if you go e d4, which generally in these structures you want to take e takes d4, 
But black is very much in time in all of these positions to play knight c6 and basically e5 next move against most of your replies. And it's basically the, the ready with colors reversed. And because it's ready with a tempo up for, for white compared to the classical ready, white is not worse. Uh, but white is also definitely not better, despite having this extra tempo compared to the official theory there. And because of all this, I guess uh, uh, Luca took with the C pawn. But if you take with the C pawn, with the knight already developed to G2, you're really not very happy because you want that knight to be on C3. And he is currently, I think, already fighting for equality because after knight C6, he developed the bishop to C4. And after queen B6, I mean, I don't know exactly what he didn't li like about queen B3, but B3 is not a very pleasant move to be making. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. B3, yeah. E5, I mean, it feels like, uh, oh my God, no? I mean, the king is still in the center. Yeah, I, I think the tactical justification here is D, D, if you take knight takes E5, I guess knight H5 is just incredibly strong. And your position starts becoming like genuinely, genuinely worrisome for white because all the things are hanging <clears throat> and you, you have to, I think, play very carefully to even survive. So he went bishop h2 and uh, yeah, this looks, this looks very promising for black. e4 is obviously the most ambitious way of dealing with this. I was looking at some slower moves, but e4, if you have a good reply to knight g5, if you have a good reply to knight e5, you are very happily playing knight e4 here. I guess knight g5, queen a5 is just a problem, right? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's very, very unpleasant, yeah? Yeah, queen a5 suddenly stopping white from recapturing on e4, and then we just go h6, and, you know, white could be, white could be just straight up lost here, which is why uh, Luca played knight e5. But even this doesn't look like... A position he will be enjoying too much. Yeah, no, I mean he is definitely in danger, and, uh, and okay, he has to somehow stabilize. I mean, somehow get his king. But but this one, it's seemingly one tempo, but it's still so yeah, it's hard still, to imagine how yeah. might we'll get that tempo. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, even here, I very much like queen a5 as an yes. idea. Queen a5, we pre we probably forced white to take on c6, and we have once again created this weakness for ourselves. But yeah, rook d8 is a huge threat. I think castles is more, maybe even unplayable because of rook d8. You might actually not be able to save the knight. And also, importantly, uh, with the fifth rank now empty, I am very much preparing to play queen g5 once white castles kingside. Exactly. And, and because, for example, going... my, you know, I was so nervous that I thought, like, maybe with b4 I can survive. Because queen b4, queen b3 is some kind of an idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, actually you can take and go back to a5, but even you have queen g5. Well, queen g5, yeah. yeah. You, you're just not going to be enjoying this with white at yeah. all. Yeah, it's just... It's no, just this is fun. this is a very scary position. I mean, basically, I just don't even believe that white can survive this. It's uh, It looks very, very dangerous. It looks scary, yeah. In the meantime, on board four, they already exchanged everything and agreed to draw. We don't need to talk about this too much. Some kind of a theoretical Raguazin discussion which ended in this position. And on board three, Prague is white against uh, Lodici. Uh, Lorenzo Lodici. And Prague is clearly better, but once again, the question is how much? Yeah, L Lorenzo was the hero of yesterday. Uh, he beat uh, John Ludwig Hammer. Uh, th that, that set the tone. Also, they went on to win on board four. But uh, yeah, that, that was the very, very big win, I guess. Yeah, takes, takes. And the big question in all these positions is that how can white go c4, c5, shutting down uh, black's bishop on b7? But also now with rook on e3, maybe there are some ideas trying to, to go for an attack against the king on g8. Would, I would also not rule it out. Promising position for Prague. Yeah, very promising position for, uh, for Prague. Obviously, uh, like if you allow black to maybe return with the queen back and then push c6, c5, and that somehow doesn't lose... Uh, black will be completely fine. Which is why even pushing c4, c5 is definitely one of the ideas you sometimes see in these types of structures. But probably not right now, because the idea of pushing c4, c5 is you ruin your own position a little bit in order to completely kill off the bishop on b7. But the bishop is prepared to come out via a6 already. So that doesn't work nearly as much uh, as you would like it to work. Exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, India, India doing 
quite well. India too, I mean, doing quite well in this match. People have been, before we return to, I think, the top two matches, can we briefly take a look at what's happening in the German in the Germany match? Because people have been remarking on... It's probably quite low down, though. I don't know if we can even find it. No, but, I will, because I think they are match 14. They are af okay. after the, the Norway. Yeah, here they are. Yeah, because yeah, apparently yeah, Vincent, somebody... Vincent is playing his first game against Baburin. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and probably you wanted to jump to yeah, the yeah. Blue everybody, Baum everybody game, wants yeah? the Blue Baum game because the Blue Baum game is something absolutely mad today. I actually know uh, something this about line, this okay, line. This yeah. line I happen to know as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a little bit about this line because uh, I, I noticed the people were doing it quite seriously and uh, there were some... Uh, maybe Nodjerbeck was playing this and I noticed some game of his and I started looking and I... I got very excited for a bit, but yeah, this is such an such an outlandish position. Like, what is this? Yeah, it's like from different planet, yeah, right? Yeah, we're being told Queen takes two is a blunder. Uh, well, maybe, but I don't know why. <laughs> like, well, okay, you. but but probably okay. We know where it came from. Let Let's just very quickly show yeah, sure. them. because Absolutely, this came yeah. from a Karokan. You know, seemingly solid Karokans are getting super exciting. <clears throat> Takes, takes, knight f6, yeah, and queen e2, yeah, this comes from this fancy system. Takes, takes, yeah. knight d7, bishop c4, knight f6, knight e5. The queen cannot be captured because of bishop f7 checkmate, yeah, that's the big trick. So, black is forced to play e6, and his bishop on c8 remains shut down. So, black will definitely try to activate that bishop quickly on the long diagonal with d5. And Bishop DC, and from here on some four sequence of moves. Yeah, Vincent himself played this with the black pieces. Yeah. A couple of couple of blitz games already. It's a razor sharp line. Takes, takes, b4, knight d4. And the funny thing is that black actually finds time here to play a7, a6. After all the craziness that went before, stopping both knight b5 and bishop b5 check is hugely important. And yeah, the, the game continues. Knight of five, and yeah, all of this, all of this goes on. Also, just briefly, I want to remark on on the fact that you know this is Matthias Bluebaum, who is one of the you know low key better prepared people uh, in in his openings. He's incredibly well prepared, and he's playing against somebody who is twenty four hundred, who seems like today actually out prepared him uh, in 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 this very topical line, which you don't really see very often. Well, to, to be honest, this uh, Conor Murphy is the is the person who I think he's a very young, very young player. He he was the one who beat Tabatabe in this ending that in this bishop endgame that we once saw, uh, and uh, and he's and and he's on fire in this Olympiad, if mm. if, if, if if we can say so, because be, beating Tabatabe is already something, and out preparing Bluebaum. Is is also a big achievement. Wow. I mean, okay. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on here. I don't know if I want to know what's going on. Here. Like, yeah, and apparently Queen takes C2 is a huge mistake. And uh, let's try to at least figure out why. Yeah, he's My 23 person. years old. International master, 23 years old. Definitely is trying to get his GM norm. One of his GM norms here in the Olympia. This is one of the big... Big opportunities for all the international masters to get a norm. And and he took queen takes c2, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's also the very big big thing, yeah. That at some point the preparation ends and the players have to start playing. And when you are in a such a complete jungle, right? Where where you don't yeah. know how to navigate and and you don't know exactly uh how the line continues, then it's so easy to start making blunders according to computers, right? Yeah. And yeah, having been told this is a blunder, I can I, I correctly guessed why. But if you don't know it's such a big mistake, I don't know how easy how easy it is to judge precisely. And also, like instead of queen takes c2, the move you were supposed to make, once again, I'm using the the the, the engine on uh, the Chess24 website right now, which really isn't the, you know, definitive authority on everything. <laughs> but apparently, the best move in this position was Queen H2. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> which I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, all I can do is laugh. Because I mean, even on a very surface level, like this endgame is a pawn down. Why are we so happy? <laughs> but apparently we are kind of happy. I mean, maybe, maybe happy is a strong word, but this is what we're supposed to do. And seemingly we are somehow equalizing there with black. But after the move that Matthias played, uh, the, the move that you kind of want to make here with white is actually the best move in the position, which is queen f6, uh, which is, you know, we're still not letting black castle queen side. We are attacking the pawn on f7. It's actually not easy to protect. No, but hang on, the king already moved, no? Uh, ah, yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah. Cast, cast uh, actually, the actually, the white king can steal castle, yeah. Yeah. But, but black king is already a sitting duck there, yeah? Yeah, and after queen f6, apparently black is in a, uh, in a lot of trouble. And you can believe that because, yeah, you, you still have the issue of your bishops needing to, uh, you know, come back from the cold. After queen e4 check, I think you can even play king d2, right? Because there are no checks. I, I just wanted to highlight that, yeah, why it is so nice to, to have the queen on f6 because it attacks the f7 pawn and protects on f2, right? This is, yeah. this is of course, a wonderful scenario. Yeah, and, and, and black is just kind of stuck. You, it, it turns out you don't actually have any significant counterplay. Queen e4 is just one check, as I mentioned. You don't even need to play bishop e3. You can play king g2, and there is no follow-up. And also now the bishop is hanging. <laughs> So you, you made your position actively worse, maybe, by playing queen e4 check. But then my big question is that, okay, queen f6 is not such a difficult move to spot. Yeah, then what, yeah. what was Matthias thinking by grabbing on c2? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly what was missed there. But yeah, it's, it's not a great move. And I think, I mean, finding queen h2 and correctly anticipating that queen h2 is the best move in the position is very difficult. Uh, and maybe he played queen takes it too simply because he, like, one explanation I have is that he just could not figure out what to do and he thought at least this way I am equalizing the material balance. But he and will have to. Stopping any kind of long castles as well, yeah. right? Yeah, but he will, have to, he will have to give up the pawn f7 with check after queen f6. The best move there is queen f5. Uh, and then white just takes on f7, takes on f5, and that endgame is pretty bad. Just you can play d5 here. You can also probably play something like king e2, but d5 followed by bishop e6 is white is, you know, very much in control. Yeah, wow. Okay, so if, if we assume that Matthias is in some kind of a trouble, then, then let's take a look at the other games. So what is Vincent doing? Okay, Vincent is pressing Vincent in, is a, better, yeah. Vincent yeah. Is better. in a symmetrical uh, is position. Okay, so there is hope there. Uh, yeah, Matthias is in, in trouble if White finds Queen F6. Rasmus, Rasmus, Rasmus is... has some kind of a messy position, which I, I don't think he's doing that brilliantly, but it's a, it's a very complicated strategic position. I think his idea is to play Bishop G6, he will go E5, and then he will take on G6 first, then E7, and then he will play F4. And... I mean, it's a mess, and if black misplays it, like if you imagine me, you know, getting knight c2, knight e3, and playing f5, you can just very easily get mated on the king's side. Of course, black will very quickly play c5 themselves, and uh, I mean, it's probably not great for white objectively, but it's some kind of a mess. And I think Dmitry Kolars is doing very well on the last board. I very much like his position. Yeah. Just... Yes, yes. This is this is a dream scenario. This is an All right. All right. Dream. I mean, okay, we know that yesterday was a terrible shock for, for the German team. It's it's always a very big challenge in general after the loss to 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 to, to I mean, of course, you get mo very motivated because you are very angry and, and so on. You you feel like okay, give me the next opponent, but at the same time always being calm and and not trying to show your best just play chess i think it's when usually you play the best chess yeah, yeah so absolutely. yeah this is always always kind of tricky but yeah germany definitely needs a win to to bounce back yeah we'll see and uh, uh we'll keep an eye on that and also uh as we understood from yesterday you know there is a kind of a standing invitation for jan to to join us at some point but after yesterday like if i were in his shoes I would wait until a couple of matches have gone well before coming back because we did not seem to bring him any particular good luck as a as a Bundes trainer yesterday. Exactly, yeah. And if you are already next to the Hungarian team, let me quickly take a look uh, because we are playing against Cuba. It's a very, yeah. very big match because both teams uh, have one draw, so there were not many teams with five points. 
automatically it led to some big clash. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. This is some. Okay. According to computer, why it is clear better? In my eyes somehow. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really feel that this is this is bad yeah. at all for. I I hope that it's gonna be a draw. Bear cash on board two is playing his type of chess, uh, squeezing his opponent. Okay, this is tiny bit better, but black is very solid. Black is doing everything mm -hmm. classically correctly. Mm, so I'm, yeah, hoping for for Ferenc. I will now use Ferenc, yeah, because this Fetzel was was double edged. But, but <laughs> the point bit, is that yeah. if you know, if if in Hungary you say to someone Ferenc and you know him well, then it's kind of why I what is this? Why are you so official? Yeah, so. I feel I know, like yeah. if I know him, I have to use the word uh, Fetzo because this is his uh, his name. So sorry for everyone who misunderstands. Yeah, it, yeah. It just the way how we, we say Ferenc in, in Hungary. So, okay, he's, he's putting some pressure. Board three. Maybe should be a draw. Should be a draw, yeah. Maybe a little bit better. tiny. Yeah. yeah, a little bit better for white, but should be a draw. Should be and, draw. And, and a board four, four some is... kind of a horrible mess on by move 11 13 i have no idea how to how to even start thinking about this position yeah some yeah. some kind i'm of i'm at least happy for the spectators that if someone wants to feel excitement in the hungarian games then i feel that this is the board that yeah they, they, they will definitely get uh, the adrenaline they need Absolutely, so yeah. all right lot lot to play for just as expected against Huber, very very uh, close and and tight match Wishing the best of luck for the Hungarians and, of course, also for, for the Cuban players. All right. So back to wherever we want to go. Yeah, let's, let's go to uh, the U.S. versus the young Uzbeks. So Fabi is slightly wow. worse. He's, he's in some kind of a trouble because against Abdul Satlo, if you get technically maybe. slightly worse, it's very, very dangerous. Spot maybe not. Maybe, yeah, and we were, we were actually kind of singing praises to his opening prep and saying, you know, that he completely kind of trick, tricked his young opponent. But I, I don't recognize the position. In, like, this is not fun. And also, how did we get here? Yes, exactly. I mean, just a very quick look at what happened. C4, D takes C4. A4, that was the moment. Yeah, bishop yeah. d3 played. Bishop d3, I, 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 I was kind of expecting bishop d3, but I, I assumed there is something white can do about it. And, yeah, uh, well, I guess also the, the, the trick is that this is such a specific position that with white, you also have to be super prepared and you have to feel the nuances. Now, the big question is, Fabi plays it probably for the first time. I'm not sure yeah. how... He went, he went 95, which is still fine. But queen of three apparently is already going in the wrong direction. Uh, he was supposed to play knight takes c4 here, bishop before bishop d2, uh, at least according to what I see on my screen. And there white gets a bit of a pull. It's probably a draw, but you get a little bit of an advantage here. Black takes on d2, takes on c4, goes back to c7, we play knight e5 back, we create a weakness on c6. Ah, okay, yeah, it, it makes sense, but probably Fabi felt like this is too little, and he, he knew that yeah, it's, but... it's probably not what Black is supposed to do, yeah? and he felt yeah. obliged to find some refutation to it, but he, this, this forced him in the wrong direction. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but what, what he got is just straight up unpleasant. Uh, yeah, knight c4, bishop before check here, and basically uh, we have the same position, only without the weakness on c6, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, exactly, it's exactly the same, only black is like fantastically happy about things. You know, somewhere around here, the advantage is really, really considerable, but maybe uh, Najee Beck is not playing it in the most precise fashion, but it, this is still very annoying. Like queen b5 right now uh, is a very, very large a threat potentially, maybe even knight b5, but I very much like the idea specifically of queen b5 trying to ask white, do you want to play a really, really cheerless endgame or do you want to move the queen away from the one good square maybe you have on the board? Yeah, this is... Uh, oh, yes, yeah. yes. Abdul Satorov is in, uh, in a wonderful spot. No more problems. I mean, definitely no problems. And he's the one who is asking questions to, to Fabi with the black pieces. However, yeah. I see one position I feel like we have to jump in right there yeah. is is the Narayanan Lagarde game because the move oh. d5 d6 had been played in this structure. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I also saw this and I thought, yeah, this is not how I expected this game to go at, at all. 
And interestingly, uh, yeah, basically, uh, Maxime Lagarde, he had a number of opportunities to play D76 himself, and he said no to all of them. And eventually, I mean, he was playing very concretely. I'm not criticizing necessarily, because if you play D6, White probably wants to play Knight D4, Knight D6, which is something that you need to at least have a good reply to. And also, the moves he was making, they're all very, very logical as well. He played Queen A5, which is kind of never a mistake in this structure. He took one of three and played knight e5 here, also sort of very, very concrete, very uh, straightforward play. Uh, and white understanding that if you allow black to develop fully, you're probably in trouble. He just kind of went all in with the push on the king side. Uh, and then this, this happened, queen e3, uh, Maxim took and gave a check from b6. And this is where basically, if the pawn is already on d6, black is winning. But it's not. So we get a kind of a very sharp position now. Queen b6, the trade happened. Bishop h6, winning a very, very important tempo. And now, of course, you play d6 because your entire counterplay here is white. is very much tied to the fact that the bishop on c8 is still there. And uh, Maxim took e takes d6. And now we can actually try to calculate a little bit, I guess. The first thing you want to do is to play bishop c4 check, but maybe you can even make an argument for something like bishop e2, trying to create a threat uh, of rook h. Pa pardon me, Peter, can you take the, the control for one minute? I need to, sure. to, to run and uh, I'll be back. Sure. Uh, and in fact, uh, bishop c4 already played, uh, Maxim instantly replying uh, with d6 d5. I think the reason for that is that if you play if you play king h8 after rook hf1, your position probably just collapses uh, with uh, your pieces not really having not really having any uh, any prospects. And the knight on f3, I mean, bishop e2 is uh, probably just a winning threat here. So bishop c4, d5, uh, e takes d5 is what I expect to happen. I don't think rook a4 does anything. You can play b6, b5, but once again. Yeah, maybe, maybe you do play b6, b5. And now white has a choice. Uh, you can try this position. You can go uh, d takes c6, discover, check, b takes c4, c takes d7, bishop takes d7, I think is completely forced, and we take with the rook. And in fact, I am actually expecting this to happen because this looks very annoying. If you could play rook f7 here, it would be okay, but rook f7 just straight up loses a full piece to takes, takes, and rook h of 1, uh, and the knight on f3 is gone. And if you cannot immediately defuse the, the pressure this rook creates, you probably aren't doing that well, unless this works out. You can go rook b6 check. If white goes king c1, rook takes a2, the threat of rook a1 is so strong that this probably just works out fine for uh, for black, despite all of the threats white can generate on the king side. So we have to play king a1, and now we go rook b a6. And uh, once again, black is actually threatening to give mate here on the queen side with rook a2, rook a1, and the second rook coming into a2. So maybe this is actually playable, meaning that after e takes d5 and b5, we can go either bishop b3 or bishop b2. And yeah, as chat is suggesting, bishop b2 is still looking incredibly unpleasant for black. You probably have to play knight e5, uh, trying to sidestep the pin. If rook f1 happens, we can hope to survive after takes, takes, and knight f7, protecting their fate square. And then finally, finally, we can play d7, d6, and start coming out of the corner. Um, so bishop e2, knight e5. But once again, maybe white can spend a tempo on d5, d6 somehow, like bishop g5 first, maybe. Or d6 immediately. And yeah, as, uh, as, I, as Chad has also been informing me, bishop b3, you do have to uh, worry about c5, c4, just blocking this bishop out completely. I'm not very happy about that. You have king g1, bishop c1, hang on, uh, I'm guessing it's here, right? 
Yeah, I can play King G1, but I don't know if I will enjoy it, right? Because I can go like Rook B1 check. And uh, if Bishop C1, I can take on C1 and do this, right? So I'll give I'll give the mouse back to, to Peter now. Yeah, wow. I mean, I see the position and I suddenly saw the analysis. You guys are having fun, right? We are, we are having some fun, yeah. Yeah, it's such a super sharp position and that, that's why I felt like I, I have to rush out so that I will be able to concentrate or focus because the, the, the tension is enormous here, right? So, bishop c4 check. d5, d5 played, yeah, and b5 also played. And my, uh, my initial feeling was that this doesn't work for black at all, but uh, in fact, I, I wasn't able to find anything that I absolutely love for white because dc6 i think it comes very close but it fails move by move yeah you can you can see the line i was showing yeah rook b6 check not rook f7 of course yeah you take on d7 and then rook b6 check yes and i think both king a1 rook a6 and king c1 rook a2 they are sort of exactly one tempo short for white Ah, yeah, this is of course lovely yeah that king c1 rook a2 and it's che checkmate yeah thanks to this knight on mm -hmm. f3 yeah, it's wow. just, if it was only a check, you would probably lose. But it threatens a full checkmate, and that is uh, a little bit too much for white to handle. Yes, yes, exactly. And, and okay, so we have to go king a1, and then you just go rook a6. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, so not, not so simple. Yeah, and in the meantime, on other boards, Levon is completely fine against uh, Yakuboev, but I think it will be very difficult for him to create any problems for for the young Uzbek player I think this this is likely to just be a draw yes this and is on board four the, the the really crazy position in the Shankland game has completely equalized itself as well I think I think this is going very likely to be a draw as well but Wesley is pretty much winning the big news there is that Wesley is more or less winning now uh so yeah, by move 20, I mean, it was so important to, to lure his opponent out of his King's Indian structures. Mm. Yeah, and uh, currently the material is equal, but the pawns in the center are about to, uh, are about to start falling. So yeah, yeah, Wesley is in full control here. Also, uh, uh, Java here is on five minutes, which is not going to be helping matters as well. So the US is basically effectively one nil up uh but uh, fabi is in a bit of trouble uh yeah, so, but fabi, yeah, fabi yeah. is very experienced and uh you know his position is not that bad it's just unpleasant uh so you probably should expect hang on a second, can we play d5 here all right so i take knight f5 and then knight f5 yeah mm -hmm. queen c5 queen c5 yeah, yeah. Mm. maybe not but yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to really get too much distracted. But it was a kind of a cute tactical blow, and I wanted to check. Yeah, yes, I expect, yes. You know, Fabi. Fabi generally doesn't lose these types of positions very often, so he probably survives. And uh, with the things standing as they are, the US probably ends up winning this match quite comfortably. Yeah, but I mean, knowing Nodier back, I mean, he's such an incredible. I mean, he has this Karpovian uh, technical abilities. I mean, I know, yeah, I'm expecting Fabi to hold it, but, uh, but I mean, it, it's going to be very, very difficult, yeah, especially if, yeah. if Nodier back knows that he needs to win this game, he will put all the efforts. It's, uh, it's yeah. not, not easy. And what about, yeah, okay, Levon's game, I agree that, okay, this Queen End game should be a draw. That's, that's guaranteed. Wesley is winning. And what about this uh, Wahidov game? Because, yeah, I mean, it's, move uh, is it? uh, it's black to move. Yeah, it should be quite dry now, right? I mean, but white king reached a1 and black king is on, on c8. Yeah, this is the small little hope that I, I have for white. But if... Maybe, yeah. But if, if, if we want to, we can go knight e5 and then go king d8 next move. Yeah, I don't think it's very much. But okay, knight e5, then we go knight d4, we target the f6 yeah, yeah. pawn. Yeah, I understand, yeah. Maybe yeah. a little bit. Okay, little it's bit. still something to play for. It's still sure, something to yeah. play for. I'm trying to figure out exactly what the crowd wants. Uh, people are saying Mickey is uh, just crushing somebody in the England-Serbia match, uh, which would be... Ah, probably Injic, yeah? I think Injic yeah. is board one. Yeah, and as we, as we see now, uh, we, we briefly kind of glanced through the, uh, the Spain versus uh, India 
three. Uh, Sheriff already drew. Paco is better a bit. No, Paco is completely equal as well, sorry, yeah. But uh, Santos uh, Latasha is, uh, is a full pawn up. And uh, Nino is, I guess, a bit better because of that bishop on g2. Yes, yes. It seems like Spain has things under control. Yeah, yeah Spain, will, Spain will push, yeah. I don't know if neither of those two advantages seems immediately decisive, but you expect them to maybe win one out of two normally and, and to win the match. Yeah, very important also to, I mean, Lupulescu, Wojtasek game ended in a draw, that, that mm -hmm. was kind of expected to classical players, but the Duda Dea game is very much on, and I find it hard to evaluate. It's... Yeah, white is better structurally, but black, very importantly, is already creating some counterplay on the king's side. And the rook on d6 is very useful for all kinds of uh, rook lifts towards f6 or h6 in the future. So, yeah, I mean... I think we, we both know that, generally speaking, these types of positions end up being equal if both sides play properly, but... And they, they both have a lot of time as well, yeah, they both are playing quite quickly here, so... Yeah, I'm expecting this to, to end up being a draw, but for a position where only... Probably only two pieces will be left on the board, I think Black probably ends up taking on b5, so we have a heavy piece endgame. It's about as sharp as they can get, but... But it's still a two-piece uh, two endgame, so it shouldn't be very much. Yeah, and there is the other game. I mean, the board four game is basically a draw. Yeah, Gavri Lescu, mm -hmm. Molanda, we are not expecting any miracles in this queen endgame, which, which actually puts a lot of pressure on this uh, game one and game board three game. Uh, because Piorun seems to be in a lot of trouble. I mean, oh, yeah, this I, one it, looks... <clears throat> It feels like he actually is maybe already getting mated by fours. Yeah, like some kind of rook takes e3 and then, I don't know, queen f4 or e3 yes. or something. It feels like, like if I had this position with black, I would already be looking for direct solutions which win me the game right now. Not just being better, but just solutions which end the game. And it feels like they might exist. You know, I, I don't know exactly what, but it feels like they could very easily actually already exist. Yeah, and Black also still has 40 minutes, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Th this is a very scary moment for Poland, because, mm -hmm. okay, this this position is very big danger, and it puts a lot of pressure on Duda, because actually then, if if he will feel like he needs to, I mean, he needs to make a solid move in order to protect his king, but, but draw might not be enough for Duda. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, that will be in kind of a difficult situation for him, because... Playing this position sort of sharply for a win and taking additional risks, you might run into trouble. You you might at some point have to start completely, you know, throwing objectivity out of the window. People are saying Magnus is completely crushing, but we kind of expected that. We can get back to that in a moment. So in a in a Azerbaijani match, uh, Azerbaijan versus Turkey, Shah already drew. Uh, Rauf is ever so slightly better on board too, but not really very much and not very exciting to be honest. Uh, uh, Wahab Sanal against Gadir Gusainov is also a quiet I mean, he position. actually, White is the one putting pressure. Yeah, but the, it's not it's not very pleasant for Black at all, because White can play knight c5, which probably forces you to take. If you take, it improves White's structure, and then, yeah, you are kind of suffering. And on the last board, Vasif uh, uh, Dorabaili against uh, uh, Ali Chan. It's not much, but I guess White is trying something because of the pawn on a5, right? You are now planning knight b3, knight c5, those types of ideas. <clears throat> yeah, slightly better, yeah, but it's basically 2-2 two, two looks like the, almost the maximum for, for Azerbaijan. Mm, if, I mean, Vasif is, uh, I mean, both Vasif and Rauf have a little bit of something, but yeah, seems like a very even match so far. Uh, yes. So let's take a look at what's happening. Yes, I, I actually have to say that to, to my my eyes, uh, whenever Azerbaijan has black on board one, yeah, when Mamed Yadov is playing with the black pieces, they are less dangerous, yeah, because okay, we know that if Mamed Yadov plays with the white pieces, he can crush everyone and sets the tone for the for the match. But I really like what Turkey has done. Y Yilmaz, Mustafa Yilmaz, you play white against Mamed Yadov, just make sure that he will never get any chances of using yeah. any dynamics, right? That's, yeah, that's what you yeah, see yeah. as a captain. That's, that's the way to go. Yeah, I think they're doing the right thing here. Yeah, and uh, thanks very much for the sub, uh, Sir Boson. Why did I say Sir? What do I, what's wrong with me? 
uh, Sir Bozone. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the channel. So in in the Dutch match against Israel, uh, the the exchange sacrifice did not happen. Uh, Anish did end up playing Bishop B seven, uh, which I think maybe is also a nod towards how dangerous the exchange sacrifice could have been. Uh, Avital played e5, knight e4, knight f5, uh, takes, takes. Uh, I think we should just show that why not, uh, it's impossible to sack the exchange, yeah? That yeah. after knight e4, knight takes e4, rook takes e4, d takes e4, suddenly the queen attacks the rook on d1. Yeah, it's not, it's, <clears throat> sorry, it's not as comfortable as in the, in some other positions. Uh, so yeah, he went knight f5, Anish took the bishop on f2, of course, it's important to get rid of it so that you have some positional pluses for the future. Uh, queen f2, queen g7 drives the knight away from f5, knight e3, rook a d8, queen g3, king h8. Very difficult position to assess because strategically, black is doing quite well. Black has the pair of bishops, black has a very solid central structure. Uh, if at some point you manage to somehow undermine the white center, if you, let's say if you get to play f7, f6, and then take on f6 with a piece, obviously not the pawn, but if you, if you can prepare and play f6 and break up the white center, like that, your position will look fantastic. But also sometimes you just get mated. <laughs> Maybe not every time, but sometimes you definitely in these types of structures, sometimes you just get mated. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a kind of a d difficult balancing act for, uh, for Avital here. And also Anish obviously has much, much more experience. Maybe not in these exact structures, but the chess in general, Anish knows what he's doing. Currently, I think the critical question I want to address is if I play b4, you play knight e6 because there aren't really any other squares. I play f5. I want to push that knight as far away from good squares as I can. I don't know exactly where it goes. Probably c7 or g5. I don't know. Yeah, I and want now to, I want to look at... support c5, right? Yeah. And the problem is, like, I do this with white. I have completely destroyed my queen side before it's hanging. And this is very, very committal. E5 is now much weaker than it was three seconds ago. But some kinds of ideas like, I don't know, bishop d3 followed by e6, or bishop d3 followed by f6, or rook d4, h4, as Peter is showing on the board, or something, you know, or knight e4 followed by something. There is so many of those ideas which look very attractive. But you would like to have like an hour and a half here. <laughs> exactly. You don't want to be playing this on 20 minutes because basically on every single move, your choices will be so wide that it will be very difficult to, uh, to correctly assess which one is best. And basically, but, black gets c6, c5, and d5, d4 in, black just wins the game, yeah? So it's... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before is, like, it's absolutely all in. You, by playing before there and then following it up with f5, you are saying, I will basically either win the game by move 5 and 35, or I will lose. And it's not an easy decision for Avital for sure, but maybe it's the one he is supposed to make. I don't know. It's a very complicated position. Yeah, very complicated. Let's let's take a look. How is the match situation? So your yeah, turn is a bit better. Kabati. A bit better, I guess, because Bishop D6 is coming. I thought A5 A4 was quick enough, but A5 Bishop D6 you still haven't equalized entirely. Uh, not much, but something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Smirian is. Yeah, he probably could have won without even having to play any end games. But this end game is <laughs> quite good. <laughs> Yeah, the rook on a6 is horrible. Yeah, the rook on a6 is really, really not much fun. And, yeah. and again, we are talking about this team, yeah, that this rook on b7 does incredible job protecting the, the b6 yeah, it does, pawn, so does it stops yeah. any rook b6 counterplay and hits the f7 pawn. I mean, yeah. th this is an incredible monster rook there. Yeah, and uh, there is like a developing mess in the uh, uh, armor uh, Rothstein uh, game because no, but at least uh, I feel like White is uh, gaining something because he eliminated this knight from d4, right? T trading this knight from d4 and then the knight can go to g3 and okay, mm -hmm. yeah, this is uh, this is tricky. Yeah, I mean, I think Max Warmedam is doing sort of exactly the right thing here. I don't know if he is much better, but he's definitely creating uh, kind of uh, good avenues for potential play for himself. Um, we are probably missing. Let me let me briefly check the pairings and see what we're like. We 
probably haven't talked about some matches at all. Uh, yeah, we were. Yeah, England, England, Serbia. Yeah, Mickey. I don't know why people are saying he's completely okay. I mean, because they, they see the evaluation. <laughs> it didn't. It didn't look so obvious to me, but I guess ninety three is just unstoppable, and then everything collapses. So yeah, Mickey is winning some kind of a very important clash against uh, Alexander Injic. Uh, here, you know, the White King turns out to be just much, much less safe than the Black King because the the open D file can always be closed by ninety three whenever Mickey wants. I have uh, to say something that I'm really surprised that the very, very dangerous Valimir Ivic is not playing today. I know that yesterday he lost the game. Pro probably that's the reason. But I <laughs> I mean, the, the achievements that he has shown last year and also I've been following his, some of his games, uh, always yeah, very, very agree, good, yeah. very I energetic. Was, yeah. I was tremendously, tremendously impressed by him during the World Cup. I thought he was just, you know, in particular because I... Uh, you know, as is, the, I think, the case with the players who kind of suddenly became better during the pandemic, uh, you notice this huge jump because for me, I didn't really know of that player at all before the World Cup 2021. And during the World Cup 2021, he was just beating like 2,700 players. He was just sort of eating them for breakfast. And when it happens once, you know, you, you think, okay, maybe it's some kind of a fluke. But then it happens in the next round as well, and you realize no, it's probably probably not the fluke. It's just probably some very young guy who, in the in the I don't know year and a half, two years where you know nobody really played any chess, he just worked on chess very seriously and improved tremendously, and is going to be a fixture now. Uh, but yeah, it's difficult. Like if you if you lose a game and you tell your captain, that I understand it's an important match, but I really don't feel like I'm playing my best, and can I please have a rest day? It's difficult for the captain to actually force you to play. Yeah, and also I think we have to mention that for young players, yeah, who who are maybe overexcited playing for their national team, yeah, it's it's you need experience, you need to calm down because on on one side, yeah, all this euphoria that yeah, I'm representing my country, I will try to show my best, is 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 not the feeling that you 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 really need to perform well. Yeah, you you perform the best when you are just completely quietly doing exactly what you usually do. Yeah, play focus on just making the best moves. Maybe he also needs a little bit of time to to adjust to this team team situation. Yeah, to playing for possibly a team. possibly. Yeah, but uh, in general, I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, I thought I thought uh, he was a very very exciting new prospect and. I'm expecting to see a lot more of him in the future. Exactly. Yeah, de definitely. Yeah. So England, uh, knowing that Mickey White win a very important game with the Black Yeah, England, guess... England are just doing very, very well because Luke is also better on board too. Uh, Gwen Jones is significantly better on board four. And there is some kind of a messy position in the uh, Ivan Ivanishevich game on board three. He is down a poem, but he definitely has some compensation here. But I'm, I'm, I'm expecting uh, David Howell to be able to control this. Yeah, but... Yeah, they, they basically have three, I mean, two borderline winning positions, the Mickey position and the position on board four. Uh, this English has gone really, really horribly for black, like you're really not supposed to. Uh, this is basically how my positions look like when I try to play the C5, C5 system. <laughs> Every time I try this with black, my position starts looking like this very soon. Uh, and then I watch somebody like Grishuk play the system and he never has a single problem. And I think, hmm. Maybe I should actually learn something <laughs> instead of just trying to do it by, you know, uh, by hand without knowing anything at all. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I also feel that Gavin is like a big expert of this structure from, from the black side as well. Yeah, he plays a lot of Kings Indian, so he, he might have known all the finesses from white side as well. Yeah, England looking very comfortable. What do we have? What else do we have? Uh, we're being told Vidit already drew. We didn't really uh, return to... Yeah, okay. Ah, yes. Also, Harry. Yeah, he was Harry always drew, pawned down, drew, but, yeah. but, but draw is pawned down. And, of course, he comfortably held the draw. Mm -hmm. uh, Vidit Fresine draw. So basically, only this mess is still alive. Yeah. There's three draws and this mess on board four is the only game still going, which the computer depressingly also suggests is equal somehow. <laughs> which is uh, often often the case, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, let, 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 let us use the chance to, to say a few words about French chess. Look at this. I mean, we have been talking about uh, MVL missing, 
Firuz are now missing, Bakro missing, and they are still able to to bring a team which is fighting here against India. And uh, I mean, the, the French chess is also developing enormously. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of uh, lots of young talent coming in, and uh, yeah, this is a messy position. He did play uh, d6 here, which I think allows White to win this pawn back, right? I think the the, the issue with d6 is I can play bishop g5 now. And then I will take on c6 next move, and then I will take on d6. But I guess uh, Maxime Lagarde felt that developing the bishop on c8 was just much more important than any of this. Uh, which I can actually very much relate to. I think finishing development, connecting your pieces here might be the most important thing that he needs to try to do. Yeah, and also let's not forget, this is the very, very last game. So I, I understand both players feel tremendous pressure because it's a total mess. They want to get some stability. Of course, if if one of the sides could stabilize a little advantage and would be able to, to play for a win, that would be a dream scenario. Um, the, the big question is who might get it? Let's take a look. So after Bishop G5, what kind uh, Rook F7 looks like? Rook F7, I guess. Yeah, you play Rook F7, you take with the B pawn. And you play bishop f5, I guess. Something along those lines. And now there is still some counterplay with rook, f, rook fa7 you can threaten white with. Uh, and uh, the bishop doesn't really have good jump. I mean, bishop takes b5 exists, right? Yeah, well, I mean, knight also knight f3, fork exists. Knight f3, yeah. Uh, you have to you have to analyze all of this. Yeah, Bishop G five played. We'll get back to this because there's so much going on. We have an opportunity, a very exciting opportunity, Peter, to look like complete idiots. Do we want all to right. look like complete idiots? All right, what, let's let's look like. Yeah, what do we think about this pawn ending in, in Levon's game? Ah wow. I mean, okay, <laughs> no, this this I'm hating from white side. I mean, first of all, I think one of the most scary things are to, to reach some pawn ending yeah. like this. Yeah. Why on uh, earth? Yeah. Yeah, I, I've. Levon is doing the right thing, but yeah, I really, really am very surprised uh, Nordebeck so confidently went for this because I suspect it's a draw. But like looking like idiots for us, it's no big deal. We, we do it every day. It's fine. It's not <laughs> our games. Uh, nobody really cares all that much. You know, we provide entertainment. But if you trade queens like this in a very, very important match, uh, and the end game turns out not to be a draw, <laughs> which it sometimes does. Exactly. Which it sometimes does. You just look so incredibly stupid. But it seems yeah, like he's, he has things under control here. And also the problem is that whenever in, in opponent game you make a mistake, it's, it's the final mistake. Yeah, that's, yeah pretty, pretty you, much. You never yeah. get a chance to, to correct it afterwards. So, okay, I guess it's a draw. And if he already went for it, he believes that it's, it's mm -hmm. a draw, but still... It's, it's kind of scary. Wow, we have a lot of developments because yeah. Fabiano has sacrificed the pawn, but yeah, he has actually, not clear pawn. Done. Yeah, he actually has gone for the line that we were discussing. He did play d5, pd5, knight of 5. Uh, queen c5 did follow. He played queen h4, not queen g4, queen h4, attacking uh, uh, the e7 square and also creating some queen g5, rook c1 ideas. Uh, Nordebeck played f6, queen g4. And here, for some reason, I briefly saw that the engine was much preferring rook c7 instead of g6. Like the engine is kind of screaming that rook c7 is much, much stronger than, than uh, g6. I guess simply for the reason that you want your king side to be as untouched as possible. You don't want to create potential targets for counterplay. White most likely still has to play 94 or something like 94. But uh, you just you just want your king on g8 to be as safe as possible, and you you don't want to be further softening uh, your king side. Uh, what they have on the board right now, black has obviously a very healthy extra pawn, but white will start some kind of h4 h5 play. Uh, white can also stabilize on the queen side by playing b4 and then rook a d1, uh, and uh, with the safer king and a uh, very nice blockade on the d4 square. I get the feeling uh, Fabi will hold this. Exactly. I, I have the same feeling. I feel like the last couple of moves definitely were in Fabi's favor because mm -hmm. practically speaking, you I much prefer to, to have this position than the other one with the isolated opponent. Yes. Yes. And always pay attention if I'm losing it or not and then I'm losing the game. 
And one very important information, yeah, this, this I also heard already, but so this is highlighting that he's seeing Ivan Sokolov always behind the Uzbek team, yes. Uh, Ivan Sokolov is, uh, is the coach, I guess, then also the captain of the Uzbek national team. And we had him in on air last year, and I think with Tanya. And then he mentioned that he will be working with some some very, very promising uh, juniors. So maybe mm. this project is already on for, for quite some time. Okay. I mean, uh, the, the Ivan Sokolov uh, was, was the person who was behind this very, very ambitious project in, in Iran with all the, the mm -hmm. youngsters, Absolutely, with Firuza yeah. and so on, with Max Todlu, Tabatabai. So we have already seen what kind of amazing job he has done there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, b before we move on, because there is a lot of stuff that people people want to see, I just want to say uh, Wesley is completely winning. Wesley will be two points up in some end game, which we assume he just converts quite comfortably. But uh, Fabi will have to hold that pawn down position, and also uh, uh, Sam is actually in a bit of trouble now. Exactly. I mean, this this pawn structure with the rook on g six, not with the rook on g six specifically. To... Yeah, yeah. You're, you put your rook on g6 and you are now kind of expecting it will stay there for <laughs> for quite some time and uh, it's not going to be i mean it's still very difficult for white to do very much because uh, like the, the the weaknesses are quite well covered shifting the rook away from g6 you don't really have any particular uh good ways of doing that because you once you push h4 your pawn on g3 will become weak and yeah and, uh, sam is doing the right thing here just saying i i want to uh, I want to uh, take the queens off, put the rook on d6, perhaps start hinting at rook g5 and come out of the corner that way. He is still not equalizing by playing queen d5, but um, he's done a lot of work on, on the tec technical aspect of, uh, of the game with his, uh, with his coach, uh, uh, Jacob Ogard, and... Uh, mm, I think he probably survives, but it's uh, it's not what I expected when I saw a position after move 10. Yeah, and then the situation is that I think he's very lucky or, or happy, not lucky, because actually this is his strategy, he likes to play fast, that he's up on the clock, yeah, because if the, the clock situation would be exactly the opposite and uh, Black has this very unpleasant position, plus only 10 minutes to defend, that, that would be horrible. But with thirty minutes on the clock versus nine minutes, uh, he has good practical chance of, of holding this. Yeah. Yeah, I think Wesley actually, if we can bring the camera to uh, the the American match, yeah, I think Black just resigns here because ninety seven followed by Rudy <clears throat> check is coming and White just wins more material. So the game will not even continue past. I think he just resigns here, honestly. I'm expecting I'm expecting a handshake and he did resign yeah okay yeah yeah there is a yeah there, there we there we see a handshake there yeah yeah all so, right all so, right this is also what what the United States team needs because uh, two boards they are under pressure so this gives some stability mm -hmm. and and also some pressure on on the opponent's team. Yeah, perhaps we could briefly take a look at how your Hungarian girls are doing against India. Because yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, this is this is very very serious. Here we go. So board number one, Humpy with the white pieces. What what do you think of this? It's better for white, but uh, I think it's just better for white. I don't I don't particularly like. Uh, this setup. The pawn on c5 is about to become very, very weak because we don't have control, like we, we don't have good access to the c8 square or the d7 square. Feels like you might have to play like takes, takes and g5 to at least get some pressure off the center by driving the knight on the 4 away. Um, and if you go knight e2, I think I, I might have to play rook c, bishop c8. Because I need I need those squares. Without those squares, I think my position just collapses. Yeah, but then also if if I get all this, then with this structure, I also have counterplay. Yeah, sure, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe actually black is fine. I don't know. It's mm -hmm. uh, it, it's double edged end game. Yeah, but then it, the the reason I wanted to bring this up is that people were kind of uh, 
directing our attention towards uh, Tanya's game. And yeah, Tanya's game is is a very Oh funny my game. god, Rook on HD, no, this this can't be. Yeah. This can't the, survive. The Rook uh, the Rook did something uh, ill advised. Wow. I mean, you know, to be honest, I'm very, very happy for the way how Tanya is playing her games because uh, we were commenting so much and then people were asking, you know, that how much influence I have on, on her chest and then we are kind of, you know, always commenting and I feel that in, in the, her game she's playing very much in my spirit. Yeah, this stable chest and then squeezing and then very healthy everything. However, I think that she was always like this already. I mean, she had always this this feeling mm. for 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 strategic finesses, and now this look on H three. I mean, this oh, she black, black is just winning. Yeah, we, black would be doing quite well even if the rook was on some kind of a normal square. But but yeah, with the rook on H three, it's just. I mean, on top of everything else, simply Bishop D seven will pick it up next move if if uh, if Tanya wants. Yeah, this is horrible. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to see how did this look landed there because this is this is insane. So C4, yeah, she took D C4, Queen C2. Actually, she did not bother protecting. She just opened up everything. This is Bishop C5, Bishop B2, Knight B7, Queen C4, Rook, Rook B8. Yeah, but Black is winning so many tempis. I mean, nothing is nothing is developed. Queen C1, Queen E7. Yeah, Rook F C8 will come as well. And then she needs to find the square for the queen. That's the problem. Yeah, that she yeah. wants to get it to a1. And she plays rook a4 and goes for this adventure, which then heavily backfired. Knight of eight. And here we go. Yeah. Well, T Tanya is doing very well. And on the, on the other boards, do we have a chance? I mean, uh, Vesali against Sidonia. I mean, if, if the knight comes to c3, white is maybe even slightly better. You can try playing b5, b4 right now. I guess b5, white goes like rook a, e1 or somewhere. I don't think we can allow b4 very comfortably. But after rook e1, I still don't know what you can achieve with black. Yeah, it's, it's very solid. Of course, black has a wonderful bishop on e4, so it should be always fine. But uh, draw is probably not what we need. I mean, for, for the Hungarian team, because mm -hmm. yeah, Tanya will win. I'm pretty sure about this. And uh, and wow, black goes for, for queen f7. I mean, this is probably connected with the max situation. Otherwise, Yeah, I you, you get the feeling that this is because the match is not going well, but it's risky. Um, I don't see the immediate refutation, but it clearly is very risky. And uh, yeah, white is... white is better. So it looks like India is, is favored to, uh, to win that match. Um, yes, they have everything under control. What let's just briefly take a look at positions, yeah. Ukrainians. This should be a draw. Yeah, this should be a draw. The other game is much more exciting. Whoa. Uh -oh. Yeah, this is a kind of a some kind of a wild position, which yeah, I have no idea what this is. Uh if we didn't have very, very many other things to follow, this would be a, definitely the position to talk about for like 15 okay. minutes, but we should probably stop ourselves before this happens. Um, Anna Shenina is doing fine. Not really. No, Anna right? Shenina is with black, so she's in yeah. trouble. Yeah, so knight d3, knight c5 is kind of annoying at the very least. Yeah, so uh, this is a position with hopes for, for the Bulgarian team. Yes, and uh, Yulio Smak. Yeah, this is also kind of okay for uh, for for the Bulgarian. For Bulgarian black, group. yeah. Yeah, for the Bulgarian. In fact, in fact, yeah. not an easy match at all. And anything no. can happen in this Bulgaria versus Ukraine. Yeah, so far Bulgaria is providing uh, providing very difficult matches, both in the men's and in the in in the open and in the uh, in the women's section. Uh, they've beaten uh, a much higher rated creation team in the open, and today they're giving a a very very solid fight to. Uh, to the Ukrainian women who are definitely one of the favorites for the event. And what about the, what about the India 2 match versus Georgia? Because uh, we have seen that already Georgia won mm. this miniature on board 3. Uh, Zagnitze is clearly better on board 1 against uh, Isha Karavade. Mm -hmm. So basically it's, there is a threat of being 2-0 for Georgia. So... Yeah, the Indian uh, team needs to strike back on their white boards. 
But looks like, I mean, this is a nice position, but on board four, Georgia is also, I think, doing very well. So it looks like Georgia will yeah. win very comfortably. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's it. Yeah, this is looking very, very bad. So, and what about the Polish team? Alina. Yeah, this is, I recognize this. Uh, Petrov, yeah? Structure. Yeah, this is a Petrov structure, yeah. <laughs> Shockingly, it's very easily recognizable these days as a Petrov structure. I guess Alina is fine. You sometimes well, don't entirely equalize in, in, in these types of positions. Like, Nikita Vichogov famously won a very, very instructive game against Wesley So in one of the World Cups, but people have, I think, become more accustomed to, to what you're supposed to do. So I think it's kind of around equal. There's also an end game on board three. This is wow, this is much better for the Polish player. Yeah, board two. Monica is having a big advantage. Yeah, board uh, three. Uh, this is the one that Chad wanted because this is, uh, I think, maybe the youngest Fanfarest, uh, uh, and she's a very very exciting prospect. But she clearly is not not very experienced. I don't want to. Let me actually Google this because I think she is like unbelievably young. Uh, well, actually, if you are, yeah, and, and on board for uh, Lunch Avatea, very, very experienced player. And mm -hmm. I, I know her from 89. Yeah, I thought she was even younger than that. She's, she's 15, uh, Machteld. Uh, yeah, but, but then please Google uh, Elena Roberts because I think that Elena Roberts is incredibly strong and she's also very young. I'm expecting her to be a 2500 uh, chess player pretty soon. She, Elena she's Roberts. wonderful. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, Alina Robbers. Yeah, she's 16 now, and yeah, she's... Yeah, she's uh, 16, she has 20, 44. I think she's already much, much stronger and heavily underrated. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember <laughs> our discussion yesterday, but <laughs> I, I do stand for it. I mean, I have seen her games. I see her playing very, very important theoretical games. I mean, like the, the real Dutch chess of chess school, right? That they are very well prepared. She has very good feeling. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm expecting her to be to top 10 female player in a couple of years. I will, I will remember that. Okay. Yeah, mar mark my words, guys. Yeah, that uh, she, she, will, she will be top 10 in, in like three years. And I think the, uh, the, 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 the Dutch player, I think, is possibly just completely winning on board four. Yeah, and it's uh, Lunch of Atea. Yeah, because, you know, she had this incredible name and I was like 10 years old when I first heard this name and I, and then she moved to, to Holland, I mean, mm -hmm. to, to, to the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, she's, she's always a very, very experienced uh, player. Very solid. Uh, but, Georgian yeah, chess here, school, yeah, because from the name yeah. you can actually, if, if someone is more experienced, knows that she's from Georgia originally. Yeah, but she, I think just taking on d6 here, if we want to just continue for a second, you take on d6, you go rook c8 check, and then you go rook dc1. And uh, yeah, the, the knight comes to e5 eventually and everything collapses. Uh, I just realized that she's black. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, that, yeah, yeah. that means, she, yes. Th yeah, then probably the age tells, yeah, because she's experienced, but, uh, but not the youngest anymore. Yeah. Yeah, rook dc1. So Poland is is doing quite well because uh, Machtel is in trouble. Uh, Monika Sochko is also much better, and on board one, uh, maybe Elina is uh, Roberts is doing fine. But she, like the match situation, even if she wins, it might not be enough now. Yes. Yes, and um, okay, she plays against a very very strong uh, Alina Kashlinskaya. So yeah, of course, yeah. It it might not be enough, no matter how strongly she will play. Wow, okay, so we have, I guess we have back, back to the course. open now because we've uh, we've talked about the top three matches and uh, things are kind of uh, uh, defined there. Yeah, what, what about this Sunil Dut uh, position? Yeah, in the meantime, Livon actually drew that pawn ending, so uh, Nadia Beck uh, Yakuboev correctly assessed that it wasn't really very dangerous, so all the talk of Lou looking like an idiot was. For nothing. Yeah, then, then we survived this test. Yeah, everything yeah. is fine. Yeah, Sunil Dut. I mean, uh, Black actually played the move Rook F2, and I feel that it's, it's a clever move. Yeah, because if Black anyway follows it up with Bishop F5, then it makes sense to put pressure on C2 pawn. Absolutely. Yeah, I like this. I like this. Yeah, and there is this now, of course, White is fighting with Rook D2, now setting Bishop C4 check with a d double attack. 
Mm -hmm. It's a very, very high class. I mean, it's a very entertaining and and double each fight. Yeah, we can play knight f3, but then the king on g8 is actually not very safe. Like, we, knight f3 stops bishop c4 from happening. The five will just take, perhaps spend the tempo on king b2, and then he will start playing like rook e7, bishop h6, all of those things. If, if we had a rook on f7 here as black, I would be feeling quite okay. But with a rook kind of stuck on f3, I do have b4 here, though, right? Before c4, rook a3. But then rook a8 check. Yeah, rook, rook, some check, rook d8, rook e8. Rook e8 is stronger. Yeah, I mean, just to illustrate, yeah, that there are a lot of, lot of uh, things to, to consider here. Yeah, no, and, uh, not, not it's move 27, right? Because they don't have very much time left, but they've made a bunch of moves, so it's not as horrible in terms of time uh, time management. Yeah, and, and we are talking about this position. Imagine the Indian fans, they, they are going wild because they know exactly how important this game is. Yeah, this, this game decides everything for today. And, uh, well, lot lot to play for. I mean, I... What, what do you think that, okay, we know that it's kind of equalish, but uh, which side would you feel that it's safer? Do, do you think there is some side which is safer here? I would probably, despite the completely horribly ruined structure, I would probably still choose the bishops. It's just so difficult for me not to choose the bishops. Uh, for, for, in terms of personal preference, I just always, always take the side with the bishops somehow. I don't yeah. know. I, I also have this feeling that if maybe someone, then maybe white is tiny little bit safer, yeah? But but maybe Maxim finds a very nice way of uh, of handling the situation, and then we say, ah, of course, black is perfectly mm. fine. No. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think it's it's more or less balanced. Two two is the most likely design. Yeah. Just very briefly sh show this show the Sam game. This is kind of funny. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, maybe not even that funny to be honest, because I assumed he would hold this end game quite comfortably, but like I'm not really enjoying uh, looking at those rooks. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, uh, okay, Sam is trying to get out with rook g5. So the big question is with white, how do you stop black from getting out? Yeah, and also I wanted to ask you, like, if we assume that there is no counterplay, what would be your plan for making progress here with white? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, but but first I really have to find a way stopping uh, rook g5, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, but... Still, like my question, uh, because I'm, it's, it's always, I think, a very important question when you approach endgames like this. You have to figure out, uh, like, what, what, your, what your aims are, what, what are you trying to, to achieve. And it's kind of weird here, because the, apart from the king side, there are no weaknesses and there are, not, are no real targets to play for on the queen side. And on okay, the one side, could argue that, okay, if you give me all the time in the world, I'm making some progress like this, but uh, I don't think that is really relevant because we don't have so much time, right? Yeah, that, that's a, a bit too much time, yeah, it feels like. Yeah, I don't know, you can play rook e4. Yes, which and sort then, of okay, stops. I don't but know, then, king yeah. e6 or king e7, right? Exactly, yeah, but then we give, give the king those squares and Sam definitely will do something like this and once again, rook g5 is uh, on... Mm -hmm. Uh, exactly, because well, now white would love to reach uh, all the way to b6, but then black will be in time to create counterplay with rook g5. Yeah. Yeah, not, not, not so easy. Um, and white is down to six minutes. Okay, he, he needs to basically stabilize the position, make those six, seven moves before the time control, and then spend, uh, yeah. spend the time to, to try to find a way to break yeah. through. And just very briefly, because I think that game is, might, might be about to end, Magnus apparently has some kind of a very fancy position today. Um, uh, and I saw a kind of a funny tweet by, by Peter Hanen and Nielsen, because uh, he referenced uh, a, a kind of a, a bit of chess culture that... Uh, many people very much like that the, the bishop a7 game between Karpov and Unziker and uh, Magnus today <laughs> put the bishop on h7 and it's still somehow on h7. <laughs> Actually, the game is over, yeah. So The game is over, yeah. So let's just yeah. quickly take a look how did Magnus win this. I mean, we already understood that White got the dream of all dreams. Yeah, h3, b6, e4. 
D494. Yeah, basically against Magnus, you should never give him any freedom because if you give him freedom, let him play chess. He knows very well. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's scary. Yeah. And uh, here, yeah, he, he, he. I was already wondering if some kind of knight takes f7 was winning, but he chose a more a more classical approach. Just put everything in the center and then start looking for correct, precise decisions. And yeah, here just the, the, the f pawn kind of being rammed down the board is but the, the the final move is very cute though i very much like the final move that he made in the game yeah e6 queen c6 i'm pretty sure there were other other decisions as well there but he went for style points with that final move king e7 i mean e takes f7 is completely winning but he went with bishop f6 check which i i think is a nice touch <laughs> Yeah, it's too beautiful not to be played, right? Yeah, if you if, if you see this move, you kind of want to make it. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit too cute to to not make. Yeah, king of six. Yeah, so. I guess queen e five check is the cleanest, right? Queen e five. Yeah, I mean that is, that is a choice, but yeah, this. And now, this... Yeah, and then bishop takes c. Oh no, 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 no. Bishop, queen takes a would be a mistake because we give the we give the f six square to the. Yeah. yeah, this okay, was this basically way, yeah. the line that uh, we immediately had in mind. Maybe maybe Queen H4 wins on the spot as well, but yeah, I mean, just to, to illustrate yeah, that this probably does, yeah, but are coming. Yeah. And and G takes F6 runs into uh, E takes F7 check. Just go yeah, 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 and it's yeah. You get made it on the G8 square. Uh so Magnus, Magnus does win, but the, the match maybe is not that clear, yeah, because this seems like a still a pretty unclear position in the Tari game. We don't have to discuss it in too in depth. Yes, John uh, Ludwig. Okay, John Ludwig Knight at least with Knight on C4 is stable, definitely stable, and put some pressure. Yeah. Okay, and, but, and yeah, board but, four. But, this is where we were the most worried, and it's still yeah. worrisome. Yeah, this is not this is not very beautiful. The bishop coming to f1 will exert a lot of pressure against the the b5 pawn, and Black really is kind of struggling to. Uh, to deal with all the pieces which have occupied the the queen side. So yeah, also this... impressive, impressive play by Mongolia yesterday against Hungary. They even had a chance to to maybe get more than a draw, and uh, and today they are putting a lot of lot of efforts into their match against Norway. And yeah, and since we're already here, we can take a look at that blue bomb game because apparently maybe he will. Oh yeah, he will now survive. Yeah, I, I think he doesn't lose this. So uh, yeah, okay, opponent... still it's unpleasant. Yeah, <laughs> whenever it's a pawn and rook, uh, rook. Oh, of course, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, rook bishop opposite I mean, colored compared to what it could have been. Well, actually, queen f6 happened. Yeah, queen f6 happened. He played queen f5, takes takes, and here instead of preserving all of the bishops, he chose to trade f7 for g1, which makes the position completely safe, but makes winning it, I think, a bit more difficult. Yeah, at least now Matthias has really good hopes of... <clears throat> yeah, he has decent drawing chances. Uh, yeah. we're, we're being told uh, Vincent is maybe doing really well. Yeah, the bishop on a2 probably just gets picked up, right? Like rook c1 and then king e1. And then you just lose that bishop. Ah, uh, yeah, the bishop is kind of trapped, right? And Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. It, it will be wonderful. It will be the first game of, of Vincent. Uh, in the tournament, and he probably starts with a win. Okay, till it's not over. I, I never like to, mm -hmm. to 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 jinx anything like this. But yeah, looking good. Uh, yeah, Rasmus, was some kind of a mess. Yeah. Yeah, some kind of a mess. Of course, the first thing is some exchange sacrifice on f6, and then knight c, knight f5, uh, Tig Tigran Petrosian style. Yeah, eleven against four. Also, very importantly, it's twenty move twenty three, and neither of them have very much time. But uh, Rasmus has more time, which is the important detail here. And uh, Dmitry Kolars is still doing quite well, I assume. Yeah, a, a nice position. Somehow, I, I really expected uh, the white position to have collapsed by this point because it looked like it might just fall to pieces. It's still sort of alive, but yeah, black is always going to be in control in these types of situations with the two bishops and the weakness on d3 and the rest of it yeah yeah definitely um, long-term pressure so yeah, yeah we're being it, told we're being told that Azerbaijan is actually in trouble against turkey wow okay but uh, yeah that that match actually looked uh, very shaky anyway you remember because san alvaha yeah. was was clearly better 
and then the big question was if uh, if board four was doing something yeah let me bring it up yeah here we go so the the mamedov game ended in a draw this we knew already mamedov made a draw okay sanal wahab is uh, putting he's... the pressure with this bishop on g3 this structure is just hard yeah machine, like... machine is actually suggesting white is completely winning yeah because you go i guess you just maybe even go b5 straight away and you don't you don't wait you go b5 a b rook b5 and the pawn on b7 is just in desperate trouble if you play b6 i go rook a7 it looks yeah. horrible yeah it, it feels like it's it's kind of a winning position yeah it feels feels like it should collapse actually and yeah. then it then it all depends if if do is able to squeeze out something out of this uh slightly yeah, he, better he got somewhere uh he got somewhere he he has he provoked c6 and then now, now there's this pawn on b7 which is a bit weak but on the other hand it is a you know very very little material left kind of symmetrical structure and you are playing against one weakness you have to you you try and kind somehow to exploit the the one weakness on b7 it's not going to be easy for sure uh and now that we're here uh the the netherlands match is yeah anish still a huge mess but Apparently he was much better at some point and is no longer as much better. I have no idea where the supposed mistake was, but okay, let's just see what happened. So because this was very interesting in the So game, he went the five without yeah. even going before, so kind of less all in maybe. And yeah, then a little bit more controlled approach, right? Mm -hmm. Bishop C eight B four, finally B four arrived anyway, ninety four takes takes, rook d eight. Queen d8, e6, yeah, all these moves. And now e6, f6, yeah, the typical the typical way to kind of close down the bishops and open up the king side a little bit. Uh, gf, rook takes e4, f5, knight e5, and f6. And I, I mean, guess... Basically, what, what we are seeing is very logical, humanly speaking, right? Yeah, from, from, from a human perspective, yeah, all of these moves make perfect sense. But I guess you can, like, if all else fails, I can go knight g6, check, I can take on f8. And I will have some compensation because my king is safer and also there are some weaknesses on the queen side I can perhaps exploit. Maybe there is something smarter though. I don't know. It's, it's possible I'm missing something. Uh, yeah, um, okay, in any case, yeah, black is having things under control, but it's it's a very, very complex position. Jordan Farm Forest, I believe that this should be now very, very drawish. I mean, just too little material left. Still, some ideas like king d4 and against look fc, that is look c3, and then trying to get with the king to the b pawn. Yeah, obviously the, the, the side with the more active king generally is the side trying to win, but... But, ah, king d4 runs into look d6 check, actually. And then king c5, look d3, this should be enough. Well, I go before here, I mean... You sometimes lose these types of yeah, positions. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You sometimes lose these types of positions, but yeah, it should be it should be okay. Uh, Irvin is two pawns down. Uh, yeah, he did well, it's, to... it's the punishment. Yeah, he lost yeah. both those weak pawns. Yeah, and uh, now his rooks are active, but he lost all of his weaknesses. So, yeah, and the problem is, like, if you go rook c6 here, I think the cleanest way to go about things is just to play rook a3. Ah, you you want to highlight? I that just thing. I just I, I want nothing to do with that c pawn. I just want to put my rook behind the a pawn, give you the c pawn, kind of force you to take it, <laughs> and then go. I straight. will never take it. No, no, yeah, no, I know, no, no. I know, but uh, never. Like the the only hope for black really is in the current position. If you could maybe play rook e six, and already I think maybe e three is not even necessary. But let's say I play e three. And then somehow you manage to get that rook from e6 to like b2. But the problem is, it's too <laughs> far. It's not going to get there. It's way too far. But also I can go rook e3. You're you not even getting that because I probably play rook e3 instead. Yes, yeah, rook e6 on the board. Yeah, of course, rook e3. And I'm expecting right. also maybe some invasion on the 7th rank. Yeah, with rook e7, yeah, rook it's e7, just, giving it's just up the c5 hopeless. pawn. Yeah. Completely. All right. So Erwin in a lot of lot of trouble. I mean, he really needs more than a miracle. I mean, I, I don't know what mm -hmm. should happen that he's not losing. And all eyes on uh, Max Marvin Van Madam against Maxim Rothstein. Probably about equal, right? Everything gets traded on e2. We get this light PSN game in which Black will play 98, 96. 
shouldn't be too horrible as long as you don't lose the pawn on c5 because of which maybe you go king f8 king e7 first exactly yeah this this pawn because knight e8 knight d6 is so thematic it was also my first thought and then hang on ho oh, oh, not that this i mean something happens with the c5 pawn but yeah. i i do believe that black should be fine right yeah i think i think it's not very much if anything at all but the problem is you know uh He, he kind of really needs to, uh, to to play this sharply for a win here with white and pieces are coming off with every move and it's going to be difficult. So I guess it, like, it will probably get decided. Uh, the Netherlands have to win one out of, at least one out of the first two boards. Yes, so and, this and position... Anish's game went along your lines yeah, with, with knight g6 and then white took on f8. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's better for black, but the question is how much. I mean, it's a, it's a pawn, but the king on g1 is clearly safer than the king on h7. The rook on e5 is a very pretty, pretty looking piece. And yeah, and there are all those targets on uh, on the queen's side. But you can maybe even, I mean, it looks ugly, but you can maybe consider playing like b6, b5, just to secure everything, and then play bishop d7, and your entire position is under control. But then how do you win it? Yeah, Anish will have to play really well from here. I mean, he is better, but it's not a foregone conclusion that he wins. And then there is this rook ending in the in the Jordan game, which yes, should be a draw, but maybe you can create some kind of a problem for Tamir. Yeah, I mean, it's as you said. Yeah, it, it looks very drawish, but sometimes because Black's King is terrible on G8. Yeah, if, if Black's King would be on G6 already activated, then there would be then, no conversation. Yeah, that would be exactly. Just yeah, yeah. So, all right, just a very very dramatic match. I mean, I think we will see a lot of dramas and Dudai Bali against Ali Marandi. Yeah, Vasif is trying to get with his knight to C5, and Black is yeah, trying to get his king. Closer, but you can actually time? play. You can actually play King D6 here because C4, C5 seems to work out for Black, right? Yeah, very important. Yeah, this is very important. So if I can get my King to C7, like it's it's just not going to be very much. Put so probably White has to play Rook C4 and then Knight C5 yeah, and but, then Rook back to B4. Yeah, exactly. Or... But even if you achieve all that and I play the Knight, like King C7, Knight C5, Knight D6, you go Rook B4, I go I don't know Rook E8 or. Also, at some point, I'm very interested in the idea of playing h5, h4. Mm -hmm. Just to ask you the question, if you want to king, if you want to close the entire king side, I'm obviously very happy about g4, g5. And if you want to give me uh, some counterplay along the h file, I think I'm also quite happy about that. So yeah, yeah, I think it should be it should be holdable. It should be a position. Yeah, which, should be. Yeah, should yeah. be holdable. I mean, definitely, it's it's much more holdable than than the position that Gusano is having because. Yes. This, yeah, this might one, just just collapse. Yeah, this one looks like it should just lose. Yeah, I, I, I will, I will be very, very surprised if it's not. And as you notice, I didn't even mention that we can take on e5 here, which is a perfectly reasonable decision. Like, it's a full pawn if we want. But I think b5 probably just wins faster and cleaner. Exactly. And also this e5, e6, e5 is like a provocation. Please take this pawn. Mm -hmm. be, because, for example, okay, let's just... I don't have a heart even to, to trade this bishop, but okay, let's just to illustrate mm -hmm. something. And then I don't know, maybe black can hope for some b7, b6 break. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Try to break everything apart and somehow hold those types of positions. I don't know if they're holdable. I, I mean, they also might be lost, but I think it's by far uh, the, the, the easier position to imagine not losing than exactly. the position of the b5. Yeah. I think... Like you feel a little bit stupid not just you know winning a healthy pawn here, but I think you you want to make sure that you don't have to you know solve any kind of difficult like you don't want to be playing some kind of a tricky rook ending, which may be winning but on a bad day will not be winning somehow. Mickey's position maybe is still alive, is it? Yeah, well, it, no, not but the really point not. is that you can put queen on c three and your king on g seven will be perfectly safe, right? Yeah, yeah. Not really. Yeah, I was also my first thing. You know, come on, I mean, queen f4, rook d1. That there is always with pawn on g5 counterplay. But then I realized that we just can't do anything. Yeah. Queen yeah, Mickey. Mickey also goes. very very professionally. He uh, basically they've had this position ten moves ago, <laughs> and he gave all the checks. He gave <laughs> all the checks to get the move forty, and uh, yeah, I think I think yeah, as you said, you just play king g7. 
No, wow, Mickey J. Ah, ah yeah, F7 protects. is protected. F7 is protected. Yeah. Very clever. Okay. Okay. Well, clever. What, what am I talking about? <laughs> he just finishes the game on the spot. All yeah. right. Good, good for. Uh, okay, so what's happening in Gutierrez's game? Yeah, I mean, uh, England will win. Yeah, because I, I think the the trick is that the Luke McShane game got stuck. I mean, yeah, we don't know what's happening there, but yeah, uh, this is Gwain, Gwain is also completely winning, pretty much, and uh, I think David is completely safe. So yeah, because Ivan Isavich is trying to create some mess because because of the match situation. Yeah, but it doesn't look like he is going to manage. So yeah, England will win. What's happening with the uh, Indian kids? Yeah, this is very interesting because this Gukesh Vuka. Wow, according to Computer, Gukesh is winning. Yeah, King of Seven, Rook of Six, I guess is. Yeah, but but something has gone badly wrong even earlier because you know black is missing very many pawns, not just the pawn on f7, very many pawns got somehow misplaced. So yeah, after queen b3, yeah, something something must have gone. Ah, uh, this rook f5, rook b5. It's so easy to miss this, and if you have to okay. play a5 and give a pawn like ah, okay, then now it's no, every yeah. Lost. We we don't really have to continue from here. It's just yes. very obviously horrible for. Uh, for Daniele today. So yeah, Gukesh will win. Uh, I think uh, uh, Nihal Sarin is also completely winning. Just yeah, a, he's also winning. Just a clear exchange up. Prague so they've already is... won the match because board four is a draw. And Prague is not better, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. In terms well, of actually, that. if if uh, if Prague wins, then then only Sadvan is draw is the first draw that uh, the Indian young team uh, has uh, has conceded. Really? I th yeah, they have won all, all their games so far. Yeah. Why this is the four, first draw. I mean, there is no shame on it. I mean, the, the, the first draw will oh, come. They are on 12. Whoa. Yeah. Why are they playing on board 8 then? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is, no no, this no is respect. Yeah, no respect. Like I, I, I looked at the I looked at the results and I thought, okay, France is on 11 and a half out of 12, and this is a fantastic result. They must be leading on board points. Because I like I couldn't imagine that a team on a hundred percent is playing board eight somehow. Yeah, and okay. now we understand how important it was uh, for Prague to win win, win that game against uh, Palatier, yeah? Mm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of obvious. Uh, ah, well, hang on. What about Austria against Armenia? Because after what what Austria did to Germany yesterday, I don't think that we can underestimate this Austrian sure, yeah. team anymore. So this will be a draw. Okay, this is draw board this two. Will be a draw Wagner. board four already is a draw, so it's one one. Yeah, one one. Okay, here a lot to play for, big strategical battle. But but black is pressing, of course. With, yeah, with I mean knight. the knight on the four being completely like you cannot shift it. Yeah, black is in control. Yeah, yeah in, in total cement and would... uh, board three, Terza Hakian against Felix. I, I'm telling you guys that Felix Bloberger is heavily underrated. Now he's clearly better against Terza Hakian. I mean, this the, this guy is like 20, almost 2600 in my view, to be honest. I mean, uh, and people underestimate him. Yeah, I mean, after yesterday, I think it would be a bit strange to not take him very, very seriously because he, like what he did to poor Livio Ditter is... Uh, is quite something. Yeah. And look at this. Only now I understand. This is exactly the same line. He opted with white to, uh, for this h4 line and, and Nisipianu played h6. And mm -hmm. now we understand that Felix is in fact playing this opening from, from black side as well. So that's why he was such an incredible expert. Yeah. And, mm. and he, of course, he opted for h5 and outplays Terza Hakian. I mean, outplaying strategically an Armenian player, this is, uh, th this is already very tough. And this is what Felix is doing. Yeah, and uh, it's move 39, so the fact that Tersakian has uh, only one minute here is not that relevant. But yeah, this is a very, very poor position, obviously, with the rook on c4. You can't really uh, do anything about the rook on c4. The knight on f5 is also permanent. The only real question is, where do you find the breakthrough? Uh, but yeah, Black is, Black is really, really enjoying themselves there. We'll see. So yeah, uh, Austria continues being a very dangerous team in this. Olympic. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, this is incredible. I think actually Germany will be quite pleased to see Austria do well. Yeah, this is typical. If you lose to an underdog, yeah, then then you really want to 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 see this team perform very well so that aha, uh -huh, yeah, you see guys, yeah, they are very strong. 
All right, and what about the Iranian team? So Max Todlu made the draw uh, with the black pieces. Eric Hansen, okay, of course, yeah, Eric Hansen uh, representing first board of Canada. And on the other boards, yeah, Tabatabe should slowly win this with two rooks. Uh, Probably, yeah. Win. Yeah, with the weaknesses, yeah. If the if the e-pawn was on the f-file, you sometimes actually hold this. You're still in trouble, but you sometimes hold. But when one one pawn is so separated from the rest, you just kind of gang up on it and and win it. And from that moment on, the the position collapses. So what's happening? Yeah, it should. Elsewhere. And, uh, board three. Idani in some kind of a trouble. Actually, the I think Preoto was the one who won yesterday also for, for Canada. Mm. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, so he's like a jolly joker for, for the Canadian team. He might win another game, and this means game number four is very, very important. The Iranian player is... I mean, yeah, white, white has a white has a number of extra pawns, but black has counterplay against the pawn on d3. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you play rook bishop e8 here, I guess black just maybe even you no know, e4 doesn't work straight away. But yeah, you you definitely have some some counterplay here as black. So uh, we'll yeah, it's, see. it's a mess. So basically, yeah, Tabatavi needs to win at all costs to to basically guarantee safety, and then still two 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 is very much in the air. Hang on a second. Anton lost again. What is happening there? Wow, Anton lost. Ah, but against Jergu Peshak. I mean, Jergu Peshak is, is an incredibly strong player. Also heavily underrated with 25-94. He's 21 years old Slovakian player. No, I mean, he's like a machine. I happened to, to discuss his games with Vincent because Vincent played in Prague in the big, big group. And uh, when, when I looked at Peshak's games, I thought like, wow. And, and also Peshak is the one who, who got now the, the Glikovic Prize Award, yeah, for this incredible mm. fair play that he showed towards Gelfand when, when he offered the draw and Gelfand blundered uh, with a mouse slip a queen or something. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, yeah, and, I mean, and, and, uh, and, I mean and a fantastic gentleman, an incredible player and a and, uh, force to reckon with in the future. Yeah, and also Volakitin is lost on board too. Like, you, you, Ukrainians are getting like crushed today in, yeah, in the is... match against uh uh hang on a second this is uh very unexpected yeah slovakians are just like the board one and board two are basically over An anton korbov has already lost and uh andrei valikitin i mean this pawn ending is completely lost uh and Yuri Kuzubov on board three is also in trouble. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's basically a massacre, in fact. Yeah, and uh, Kirill Sushenko will make a draw, but it's like three and a half half against, against Slovakia is not what you would have expected. I mean, uh, Ukraine is, a, is an absolute powerhouse in this. Like, they have such a history of winning Olympiads that yeah, this, is, uh, this is very unexpected. Yeah, absolutely unexpected. And... Uh... Wow, I mean, I'm I'm really shocked, yeah, because the U Ukrainian team is is no matter which lineup, they are just always incredibly strong, and then getting crushed by this by Slovakia, this is, of course, uh, shocking, shocking development, but it also just shows that yeah, chess is developing, and uh, the, the the Slovakian team is getting stronger and stronger as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, I mean, no disrespect is meant towards uh, you know towards the Slovakians, but like in my mind. You know, Ukraine has always been one of the absolute, absolute best teams in the world. And, uh, you know, you, you, you don't beat them three and a half, half very often. Let's put it like this or ever at all. Yeah, absolutely. And OK, let's take a look because we are next to the Hungarian team. And I see that Erdős lost actually this this Bishop and Bishop Luke end game, which we felt mm. like humanly it looked quite OK. But the computer said that uh, Black is in trouble. It, it proved right. And this is a heavy blow. Berkesh has only drawn his game. He couldn't finally squeeze out anything. So we are one point behind. Tomasz Banus's game. Okay, this is a max draw. Okay, it's, it's going to be a draw. And board four is completely lost. And we lost. Or, oh, my God. So actually, we are losing 3-1. Yeah, this, this did not go well for... Yeah. No, this, this, is a, this is a total disaster. I mean, ever since that, that uh, okay, Rapport is not playing, I'm not there, 
Now even uh, Benjamin got COVID in the last moment, couldn't travel to the with the team. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it it wasn't good signs, but but yeah, this is now a disaster to to lose three one like this. Oh my god! Yeah, this is uh, this is not great at all. I mean, uh, Cuba is a very dangerous team, of course, but still, yeah, this is this is this is not a good result. Yeah. Okay, back to and, the and also the, the way how it happened. Yeah, the, the the way I'm not I'm not liking because it wasn't really like a big fight. Yeah, that. Okay, suddenly you lose in the last second after dramatic actions. You you just got got crushed basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah wow. But okay, we have also seen with Ukraine team. Yeah. What what could happen? I mean, one losing one match it's it's not a disaster. The the big problem is that if if you if you get very emotional, or if suddenly inside the team you start doubting yourself, or I mean, if if you can control your nerves and and you can somehow recover from a loss as a team then then i think it's it's doable but it's so easy to collapse uh, once once the team is not performing right yeah can this you show we, we should, should show what happened in the, like the, the volakitin end game i wasn't really sure why it was continuing but uh, andre found a way to uh just one one down from there yeah it's kind of funny the final position <laughs> yeah because I was wondering why why Andre wasn't resigning and in that position after yeah he went a six h three a seven here oh wow it's beautiful yeah <laughs> he went a seven here and actually I think maybe no okay well a queen and the bishop would be a draw on the why spot, didn't right? he play f six here whoa why do you not play f six here oh wow then, yeah this is and then h one <laughs> bishop mate. <laughs> Yeah, that would be that would be a fitting conclusion to this. But he said, yeah, but H1 of course, rook. yeah, G, G, H one rook and then G C rook H four was also very very cute. Yeah, but H uh, one bishop mate would have been funnier, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, so we should probably go back take a look at what's happening on. Yeah, one absolutely. Of our... I mean, first of all, the very first question about Narayanan's game. And wow, we are getting this opposite colored bishop position, which is very, very dangerous for black, I guess. With this Yeah, game. I mean, I, we, black pro, hang on a second, rook f1, right? Because if, if, if I could be in time to play rook f5, rook f4, rook f5, rook f5, I'm probably okay, but rook f1 is very dangerous. And now bishop c5. I think miraculously we have rook c4, rook c4. otherwise rook c5 right. would yeah. be the end of the game. But we can probably play something like rook a7 first, right? Yeah, we can just move this rook somewhere. Somewhere, I don't know, choose a square, a7, b7, I don't really know. And ah, rook h5 exists then, which stops yeah, bishop c5. Mm -hmm. And we're also maybe preparing rook f5, yeah? Maybe. Okay, so it's not it's not immediately winning, at least not that I can see, but Yeah, but there are even some other dangers. Yeah, for example, if we, we consider that black can't really move, then is there an option like maybe to put rook d7 protecting the bishop and then go c4, provoke b takes c4 and then start pushing the a and start and, pushing, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, like... and sit on the cc square, I don't know with the king or with the pawn. Yeah, I like this idea quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, wow. I mean, it's it's very, very scary. And and Maxim is down to 50 seconds. He knows that this is very, very critical. He's he's trying to... This is move 38, so the time travel will be over pretty soon. But yeah, uh, Narayanan is very much in uh, in control here. Yeah, but so on the other hand... What about the US team, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, so Fabi is two pawns down now, but he managed to force G take. Well, okay. Yeah, force something, but uh, how to how to target this king? Yeah, and also like maybe if the counterplay is just not fast enough, and Black is in time to play H five H four, and then you really are in trouble. Because Queen G eight check is only one check, right? I have King H six, and the checks completely run out. So. I think we can play h4 here if we want. Uh, in fact, it's black to move, right? Yeah, it's black to move. Yeah, this is what I mean. And Nodebeck has four minutes to uh, to decide. Yeah. Wow. I mean, okay, this is... Uh, but after h4, maybe there is g4, right? And, and try to get the f5 square. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, okay, yeah. He needs, he needs to calculate in any case... 
there there is a big big danger on on Fabi's plan. But look Queen at this. Before. I mean, th- these are the new kids. I mean, yeah. Queen C8. Queen, I understand that you can spot Queen B4, but do you have the nerves to do this? I mean, I definitely not. Yeah. Yeah, this is quite impressive. Yeah, just Queen B4, very quietly taking control over the F8 square and saying, "Yeah, give me one check on G8. I don't care. Uh, it's uh, it's your right." Yeah, G3, and yeah, he is now thinking. He has other options as well. I mean, H5, H4, I think is kind of very logical and very natural, but he definitely has other options. Uh, and in the meantime, I think Sam is in a lot of trouble. Yes, yeah, Sam is, yeah, because the rook on h6 is complete and white in, I mean, you remember you asked the question how to improve and he's improving, yeah? Yeah, queening, queening the deep on counts as improvement. <laughs> <laughs> queening, yeah. queening the deep on definitely counts as improving my position here. Wow, but actually if, if white is winning this game, then then everything is... Everything depends on Fabi holding or not holding that, and the yeah, United exactly, States can yeah. eventually just lose this match easily. Yeah, not not only not win, but they could actually lose this match. Yeah, yes. because I think I think Sam is objectively lost. I don't know if he will lose. He defends very like he is a fantastic calculator. He will continue looking for best chances for the rest of the game, and uh, it's absolutely not not a given that he loses. But he is in trouble, and definitely so is Fabi. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we felt like when, when we saw the pairing that that this is the match that anything, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. And and that's why we always asked already before the event, the, the, the our viewers, that please don't get carried away by ratings and everything. Because, of course, these guys are very strong. But we know exactly that in four, I mean, in one match on four boards, so many small, little, tiny, little details can can decide the outcome of any match. And there is just no safety. I mean, Peter mentioned his experience with the Russian team. I mean, for for two decades, the Russian team was the absolute, you know, powerhouse and the main favorite to win. And and since two thousand two, they did not manage. Yeah, it's yeah. It's we, just we, we should have we should have that conversation at some point. But yeah, I mean, this record is very well known, and uh, uh, people have all kinds of opinions on exactly why that is. But uh, even without getting into the the, the the question of why simply the, the the record is there we on paper i think there wasn't a single olympiad where we weren't number one seed and since 2002 we haven't won a single one um which uh shows you just how tough the field has has become and also of course you know with every new if if we want to have this talk a little bit obviously like when we didn't win in 2004 we were extremely upset but okay, it's one Olympiad, and then you don't win in 2006, and you start thinking, huh, because we we won, like, every single one apart from one in 1978, like, if you talk about Soviet Union and then the Russian team, uh, those teams won uh, sort of all the Olympiads for, you know, the, 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 the entirety of recorded time, so it seemed, and then we stopped, and with every new one you don't win, you start having more and more doubts, and you start putting more and more pressure on yourself. And as someone who played, at some point they stopped selecting me, so it became less of a problem. But uh, I played in many of them that, that we didn't win. And I definitely felt that with every new one, it became harder and harder for me to play my best chess because I just wanted for the team to win so much. And it was very, very heavily impacting, you know, the freedom of my play because you, you, you really you don't need additional pressure. It's already difficult. It's a long tournament. It's very grueling. Uh, team tournaments in general, for me, at some point became kind of harder than personal competitions because of the desire to not let your team down. And yeah, just... I also have to, I can mention my own experience that basically when in 2002, it, it was our highlight also for the Hungary and the national team. Yeah, and, and we were the, the main chaser of, of your team. Yeah, but it just could not even cross my mind that we can win, yeah? Because at that moment, it was so obvious that there is just no way the Russian team will not win, yeah? It was just so absolutely automatic. And, uh, and yeah, once you start to struggle, then also the other teams are getting some confidence, yeah? That it's possible, yeah? And, and, and it's so much happening and so many teams are improving and, and fighting all the matches. And, and we see now, America, United States, brilliant players, almost all players, top 10 players, and there is just no guarantee at all. Yeah. 
But they are playing, I mean, uh, I, I would even before the turn, tournament started and before today's round started, I would definitely name this uh, Uzbekistan team as one of the teams that could potentially challenge uh, the absolute top seeds uh, in the tournament because, yeah, I think you know, at some point maybe we should have a competition about you know who can who can say the word underrated more me or you but you know these guys are all still growing and with with every you know with every year all of them all of them become stronger and stronger and uh, they're also it seems like at least they're sort of completely fearless which is a huge thing to have in your corner when you're playing against a team you know which has Caruana Aronian and so on top three boards if you're worried about playing those guys, you probably will not do very well against them. But if you feel that this is just your opportunity to, you know, further prove yourself and you approach it with that mindset, it's a huge improvement. And I think these guys, the, for my, at least my, my experience of like talking, talking to the, the, the young Uzbek players and also just watching them play simply is that they, they approach it with zero fear. They just have, have no worries whatsoever. They're completely fine uh, playing whoever is in front of them. And that is a huge advantage. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know exactly if if the Uzbek team is already ready to finally, for example, get a medal in this tournament. Yeah, this is a big question because it's 11 runs and you you have to maybe experience at some point will play a big role. But I mean, definitely the Uzbek team was one of them that can beat anyone in this mm -hmm. case, exactly for the for the reasons that you, you mentioned, yeah, that they are just yeah. completely fearless, they don't care, they they just perform. I, I recall this that I played against Abdul Satlov, he was very, very young in build 2019, and I had a nice preparation, I outplayed him also in the middle game, everything. I was looking for some wins, I couldn't find the win, he kept the game alive. Then I got into time trouble, I missed something and suddenly the position is completely equal and, and I kind of offer him a draw or I want to repeat, yeah, let, let just finish. And, and he just automatically deviates, you know, I mean, he survived a very tough game, he should be very happy. I was still, you know, uh, I, I was at least expecting that people respect me. <laughs> no, not, not <laughs> Abdul Satorov at all and also on his eyes. I could see, you know, this this tiger, yeah, that he's not jumping on me and he forced me to make some 10, 15 moves, uh, best moves on, in time travel to finally hold the game. And and uh, since then, I I know exactly who Abdul Satodov is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, this is exactly the experience I'm, I'm sort of expecting. And in the meantime, yeah, uh, Anish? Yeah, in the, sorry, in the meantime, actually, yeah. Vahidov played brilliantly, I think. Yeah, I like it, yeah, I yeah. like it very much. He took some time and he played rook f8, uh, forcing the rook to even even further poor square. And he played rook c6. You are simply threatening to take on e6. And if you play something like king g7 here, there is rook takes f7 as a kind of a decising tactic. So Sam is pretty much forced to take on c6, which is what he did. But now the d pawn should just decide the game. Like he will probably play h4, but why just goes d5 and just starts running and like normally speaking, this should be fast enough. Like rook h2, you still have to calculate a little bit. Like d6, we go check. Maybe it's how clear is it? I mean, maybe, maybe when you don't, yeah, maybe we have to be more professional, but it's definitely completely winning, yeah. Yeah, because d6 rook c2 check, I'm not not that happy. Exactly, yeah. But maybe we can actually switch to a different plan. Maybe we now we go like king b6, rook d2, and we take on a6. Yes, there was also a question that maybe we could have just pushed B4 already. Exactly, yeah. We could also not, pushing play, D6, yeah. not play in D6 so early, yeah. But yeah, it feels like it's now kind of a matter of technique. And uh, yeah, Sam is, Sam is going to be going to have to be very, very lucky to, to hold this. Fabi is doing his best. Yeah, but creating looks... counterplay against the king on H6, very clever. Yeah, but it looks very, very poor. Yeah, hard to, hard to be, but who knows? I mean, because against rook e2, queen e4 idea, suddenly we have rook d4, yeah? We, mm -hmm. are, we are still holding on. Maybe it's not so simple. I mean, okay, Fabi definitely needs to hold to, to keep the match alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So we have seen it. The time table has ended here. What else do we have? Spanish team. Ah, David Anton has one on board three. So a huge win for, for the Spanish team. And uh, Santos Latasa was actually pulled up, but he might not win. However, it's not, not important anymore. Yeah, he's not going to lose this position, so it's not really, uh, not really that that critical. Yeah. So then, what? Ah, uh, okay. Then, then Poland versus uh, the, this game ended in a draw, and we kind of felt like if Deak Deak makes a draw, then then Poland might be in trouble. Ah, uh, no, yeah. all games drawn. Look at this. Piodon survived. Piodon uh -huh. survived. So it's two two. Yeah, he must have been. In a lot of trouble there, right? Yeah, I, I guess then, then okay, now, now Poland should be super happy and then Lumina very, very disappointed. Because he actually wasn't, wasn't completely lost at any point. He was like clearly worse, but not, not really uh, doing as poorly as we, as we, no, he actually, I mean, he, he was kind of lost, but not, not by force. Yeah, you know, around... I mean, we, we, we were just very worried because, okay, the position was bad and, and there were no, no positions where there was any hope for, for Poland to win. Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. the situation looks so bad. But finally, they, they survived. Okay, very, very important save by Poland. Absolutely, yeah. In the meantime, yeah. I, we, we can get there at some point, but just to read out some results, uh, Georgia is winning huge against India 3 in the women's. Uh, uh, Hungary is 1-1 and the position on board 1 is around equal, but unfortunately, like, we know that Tanya will win, so he, uh, Hungary will probably lose 2.5-1. Bulgaria is beating Ukraine so far because uh, it says that Yulia Osmak actually lost the position on board 4, which is very, very bad news uh, for, for the Ukrainians there. Poland is winning like against Netherlands, but we expected that. Uh, and many, many other matches are still seemingly uh, still very much in progress. And in the men's tournament, so the one we know finished is Poland-Romania, but looks like everything else is still at least a little bit up in the air with the first time control either completely over or close to being over. Yeah, wow. Then let's just quickly take a look at uh, look at this uh, India versus Hungary duel. So Hampi, yeah, the the time time control has been made. Move forty one, queen d five. Yeah, Hampi keeps on offering the trade of queens, knowing that yeah, just securing a stable Jewish position is is perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, you, you can imagine black winning this, but in general. Like with with proper play, this should not be a problem for white too much. But uh, yeah, in order for for Hungary to not lose the match, you you need to win this position with black, which is not going to be. Uh, yeah, because very Tanya, easy. yeah, Tanya is just exchange up and uh, has yeah. a completely winning position. This is this is actually kind of better than I expected. Having you know, if if we remember what the position was like on move twenty with the rook on h three, I kind of expected it to be even worse. But obviously, this is completely. Completely yeah, winning. I mean, I tell you, Joka is very talented and is is very strong. Just that her position was so so disastrous. Yeah, she, yeah. she got out prepared somehow, not move per move, but that she was forced into a territory where T Tanya, with her experience, was outmatched her. Yeah, and and that that's why this this game ended like it's it's ending. Yeah. So now that it seems like most of the time troubles are behind us, can you give me like five minutes to to get myself? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I mean, we, because uh, just to, to inform our audience, there is so much action going on. We decided not to have a real proper break, but uh, to, to keep you entertained and, and uh, give you the information as much as we can. So we will just, at some point, I will also ask for a, for a few sure. minutes of break, yeah. So, yeah. Take a rest and, and we are waiting for you, Peter. All right. So the, the women section, yeah, India seems to be winning against Hungary. This we have already discussed. I do see some crazy position. Not this one. Okay, here Black is uh, torturing. This is still very, very unpleasant double rook endgame because whenever your opponent has doubled on the second rank and you have weaknesses, 
despite that it should be a dead draw, it's still somewhat unpleasant. Let's take a look at the other boards. Uh, yeah, Anna Muzichuk seems to be winning this crazy mess. Yeah, this was this completely crazy position, but now she uh, has stabilized her position. She's look up and time control has been made, so Anna will win. Uh, on board three, we were very worried for Anna Yushanina. However, now she has everything under control. She is also better. And, uh, ah, wow, Osmak Yulia lost. All right, so this case, this case, then there is still a lot to play for. Yeah, wow, this is, Black has won this game. So Bulgaria is leading. Okay, Anna Yushanina is, is fighting for, for advantage now. Anna Muzicuk can equalize the score and they have two positions where they are squeezing. All right, okay, then, then I understand that Maria Muzicuk is also trying everything with this double rook end game to, to squeeze out something. Yeah, no easy matches, just tension all around the places. Yeah, Georgia, Georgia won very convincingly. I mean, also this very unfortunate loss. Yeah, this sets the tone. Then it's uh, very difficult to keep up the moral and and of course the Georgian team is very very strong. There there was just no chance for for the third for the second Indian team to to put up a fight. We have talked about the the Poland Netherlands match. It seems like uh, Alina Kashlinskaya has taken over. Look at this bishop on e4. White's king on g1 is suddenly very, very weak, very vulnerable. Black is threatening to give queen c5 check and then enter with queen f2. Rook c2 is coming. I mean, the position is almost, almost losing. So Alina is winning. Uh, Monika Sochko has won. Kjolbasha has won. So yeah, basically it might be 4-0 even. It might be 4-0. So yeah, okay. it might be. And uh, something I wanted to mention, we, we, we can leave that at some point, but... Just as we were finishing uh, with the uh, previous uh, overview of the Poland match in the in the women's section, I just wanted to attract your attention to one specific moment in that game between Elin Roberts and Alina Kaszlinskaya, where oh, I think yeah, I think it's a bit below, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, just as we were leaving. Uh, Elin played g3 on move 26 and I thought rook b8 kind of hints at the idea of playing queen d8 so the pawn on h4 is a bit vulnerable and even then I thought maybe we could stop there for a second and I wanted to mention you really want to play king h2 king g3 here I think and not g3 because you don't really want to open up your position uh, and to, to kind of soften your king side to open up the, the, the second rank for the future. It seems kind of stupid to mention it here because nobody's really threatening your second rank. But as you see from what happened in the game very quickly after, if the position does get opened up, you, you very much regret later having played g2, g3. And this is what we're watching uh, right now when the king on g1 looks very, very uh, unsafe for for Aline after the time trouble is over. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, those little pawn moves, yeah, that uh, seemingly it's, it's nothing but, you, you know, guys, yeah, I'm, I'm the person who always likes to cement. And, and with the pawn on G2 and the pawn on, I mean, and the bishop on F3, this is exactly the construction that we feel like nothing will ever happen to our king, right? It is seemingly the king on G3, where well, are you walking, my friend? No, no, it's, it's safety. It's a safe walk. No, nothing to be afraid of. But yeah, after G3 slowly, and okay, Alina showing her class. Yeah, this queen c8, queen g8 idea also wonderful. Mm -hmm. Targeting the weakness on, on c4. Forcing white on the defensive and now e6. Yeah, wow, very, very quickly things are turning. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, you know, this one little moment, which maybe will be useful to, to somebody watching because uh, it, it seems weird to spend two tempi to protect the pawn on h4 with your king instead of spending one tempo uh, doing it with the pawn. But as you can see now, your long diagonal is very vulnerable and uh, this will be a problem for the rest of the game.
I mean, okay, whenever I feel, I'm, whenever I see such a wonderful strategical performance, you know, I feel like uploading because this is so, so close to my heart. Yeah? And, and the way mm -hmm. how Alina played this game, this, this middle game part is, is just wonderful. I mean, it's the highest level. Yeah, I'm, I'm also very much, very much enjoying this. There may have been some inaccuracies along the way. We're not trying to provide like proper move by move coverage here, but strategic ideas that Alina has shown here are very, very nice. I and think yeah, Radek seems... would be proud himself playing like this with Black. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think Radek is enjoying watching this right now. Yeah, this yes. is a very, very good performance. Anyway. Um, yeah, let, let, yeah, let's get back to... What's, what's going on? Uh, on yeah, well, let's there. take a look at Nadayan and Sunil Dutz game. Mm -hmm. Wow, the C-pawn disappeared and the B-pawn is still alive. What does that mean? What happened? So... Ah, white played bishop e5, hinting at bishop d6. Yeah, this was mm -hmm. the other way. Rook c4, rook b7, rook c6, protecting against bishop d6. And he's gone c4 now, which is very close to the idea that we were suggesting earlier. Like, we're trying to provoke b takes c4, and then the a pawn will be a huge, huge uh, trump for, for white. We play bishop c3 or king c3, whichever one, just to stop c4, c3 checks. And then we start pushing. And... It was scary enough for Maxime Lagarde to actually take with the rook, allowing rook bishop d6 and playing rook d8. But okay, we have the option now of going uh, rook f7, rook g7, rook h7. But do we win that position? And I think he is going for that. I think from what I've seen on the video, he has taken on f7. Yeah, because it looks very promising, yeah, after all. Yeah, so black has to play king g8. And now we can go, I guess, rook g7, rook a7. No, I mean, probably... Ah, yes, pardon me. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, BG7. yeah this, is, this is very clever and very instructive. Yeah, you open up the way for the other rook, yeah? Yeah, king g8 once again forced. We go rook h, b7. Yeah, bravo. Um, yeah, rook has to bravo. drop back. But I don't know if I win. Like, eventually I'll have to take on b5 and you will play like... You play rook c8 here, right? Eventually it looks like I have to take on b5. Ah, and then you are targeting the C2 pawn. And then I will play rook dc6 here. Yeah, do I lose this? I'm not sure. No, this you are not losing, yeah. Wow, sure. okay, okay, so it's not 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 that same because actually the first look would like uh, white should just win this, but in fact, maybe black then escapes. And look at the computer evaluation. Yeah, evaluation also says that black is actually doing fine. Yeah, surviving, yeah. Yeah, and we are getting information like Norway is about to lose two and a half. One and a half, there's a good chance. And also Germany is by no, gar no way guaranteed that uh, they will win their match. So hang on, let's let jump in there just very quickly to, to, to notice this because this is very, very important. Just no, no easy matches. No easy matches. So yeah, Magnus has won. Yeah, this wonderful game, very nice achievement. Tari, Ali Antari is getting checkmated. Oh my God. After the time control, he's apparently getting checkmated. Somehow. Yeah, I still don't entirely see how, but it wouldn't be surprising. This king on f6 doesn't seem safe. Yes, um, exactly. I mean, yesterday we have seen that Manuel Petrosian survived something, but uh, I mean, this one humanly looks much, much more scary hmm. and, and much more hopeless. Maybe okay, so Adrian is in trouble. A queen h8, I think it's actually not that difficult, maybe. We go queen h8, you cannot go to the e-file because rook e8, unfortunately for you, just wins the full rook. Ah, yes. This so is you have to play king g5. The only way not to resign immediately, I think, is to play king g5. And now something like king f3, maybe. <laughs> yeah, just stop. Yeah, say ah, rook <laughs> f5 check. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah, I missed that. <laughs> yeah. I missed that. Yeah, oops. And yeah, this is probably perpetual. Okay, so... Hang ah. Ah, uh, no, no. At okay. least some little hope, yeah, but... Uh, Rook f5 check is such a cute thing to miss, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is what you are dreaming of in a, in a, in a time trouble, but in, uh, once the time trouble is over, it's, it will never happen. Mm. Yeah. So, okay, this is the position, and then Jan Ludwig is still maybe a bit better but not i mean much. okay he's squeezing yeah i mean i feel like this still is is a game where there is some potential and what about the last game but this ah, seems the last game looks bad game. yeah 
Yeah, this is completely lost. Because now either h5 or g5 will fall, bishop e2, bishop f3, and more pawns will disappear. And yeah, I don't see how you save this. Yeah, no, this is this is hopeless. I mean, this is actually quite remarkable that uh, Norway is suffering on board four. Yeah, that Johan Sebastian Christiansen didn't find his form at the beginning. And now Urkadal is given a chance and now he's also losing. This is always one because... The, the problem is that if you start well, then everything comes automatically. You are not questioning yourself. You just play normally. Yeah? And yeah. then suddenly also, if you substitute someone who is suddenly a little bit disbalanced, then the other one feels like, ah, now I have to, you know, correct everything. It's, it puts additional pressure. It's, it's very tough to handle. These are team competitions. It's a completely different dynamic. Yep. Wow. Okay. So, so Norway in trouble and Germany next. I mean, okay. Vincent has won. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very happy that Vincent started with, with a nice win, but I mean, Matthias Bluebaum. Wow. This, this now with King on F4, pawn on D6. It looks very scary. This is looking very scary. Uh, Dimitri Kollars has won on board four. So Germany is up to zero, but apparently also Rasmus Swane is losing. Oof. Oh my god. Yeah, this is this is completely unexpected. Turn on, I mean Erasmus is such an incredibly stable, strong player, but yeah, it's sometimes maybe too much risk taking backfired. But they're two nil up, right? So maybe they can they save one of those two games? Well, this is uh, th this is what they need. Yeah, they need a miracle. But for the moment, it, it's looking very bad, and it looks like it might be two two. Norway seems to be about to lose. However, of course, these are after all not our main matchups. let and I'm hearing that Shankland has lost. Well, Sam not lost yet. But he, is, he is lost. I don't know. Maybe ah, uh, he's lost. Yeah, he did not resign yet, but he's yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, but hang on, hang on. White is going for this uh, fourth line, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's completely winning, but maybe still some precision required. But it is completely winning for White. Um, yeah, because, the, the, uh, the deep one is just... The deep one will cost, will, will cost Black the Rook eventually. And it, they are too far away from creating their own passers to, for this to become some kind of a race. Uh, Fabi might save his game, though, because... Uh, uh, Nodjebek played a 5 on move 42, which looks like a kind of a logical move. But it also opens up your his own king a little bit too much. And queen c8 immediately followed by Fabi, a very clever move. And now rook d7, uh, queen takes b7 types of counterplay are coming in. And this is an improvement. Like, once again, I'm sort of quoting the computer evaluation here. If I had to assess this on my own, I would kind of give up. It's a little bit too difficult with the time we have. But apparently f5 was a pretty significant misplay by, by Noderbeck. It's a very difficult position to play, though. And the best move in the position seems logical, but also you're kind of scared of making it. Like, he could, instead of f5, if he put that position back, he could have played queen e8, which actually probably takes the queens off the board, or at least offers the, the trade of the queens. But... You're kind of worried about all of those endgames, like takes, takes, rook d7, for instance, and a lot of pawns will come off. And you probably want more. Like, I can very easily, from a human perspective, I can very easily understand just badly wanting to win without trading queens. Or at least to force the position in such a way that when you trade queens, there is not even any question that you're winning. To do it in such a way that the resulting rook ending is just dead for for white. But yeah, right now he yeah he, he has taken on g three. Mm -hmm. H take g three, and I would really love to get a camera if if we have a chance to have a camera to see the body language of the of the players. Yeah, because yeah. I think it would it would mean a lot. For example, Fabi is now we, we feel the excitement that he knows that yeah he's he's coming back. He has all the chances of. Of, of creating enough counterplay to compensate for the material deficit. Yeah, rook d7 apparently now is just enough, uh, definitely enough for uh, to, to, to hold um, white suddenly generates uh, a, a lot of very, very direct counterplay. 
Yeah, with all the we are getting like... told this is the best camera setup that that we can have. Mm, yeah. I mean, I have a very small screen there for, for the camera. I'm, I'm not really getting any information out of it. Do you see something? Well, Fabi is uh, in, in, in the usual Fabi pose, you know, ah, hands, yes. Yes. hands ah, on head, it. concentrating, because you can still go badly wrong. Like, for instance, Queen takes a five, looks like a very, very logical move here, right? right? More or less immediately loses to Rook H4. Wow. Once again, not claiming any credit, I'm just reading out what, what my screen says. But this is what my screen says. More or less immediately loses to rook h4. I'm, I'm guessing the point is after king takes g3, you can play rook h5. And then after, let's say, queen f4 check, I can play queen g5 check. And this is the rook ending I was talking about. The one where I'm completely winning because I yes. win the a5 pawn straight away. Uh, so... Queen takes f5, I think, is a very uh, attractive move on general terms because we want to play rook h1 check next, and I think it makes a lot of sense optically. And it's very possible to miss rook h4. I think rook h4 is not a, 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 an immediately obvious move at all. But if you do miss it and your opponent finds it, you're probably lost. Yeah, or maybe actually, you know, Fabi intended queen takes f5 and then now he realizes that rook h4 is there. Yeah, it's, it's rather... Also possible, yeah. Because also we are told possible. that rook d7 is the right move or, or what it is. Also, was. shockingly, f takes yeah. g3 is probably a draw. Wow. I Which mean, is really, like this, this is just very, very difficult to believe. But apparently even this, somehow, after rook e2, king h3, there is no mate. Uh, but this... I legit like I don't think you can you can play like this. You yeah, really I'm not, not sure if you even consider it as a candidate move, right? F yeah, yeah, three. Yeah. But rook g7 you definitely consider. Yes. The good the good thing here for Fabi is that the best move in the position is rook g7, and rook g7 and queen takes f5 are the two moves that you want to make. And you choose between them. And I guess after queen f6, maybe the point is uh probably queen takes b7 or queen c7 or something like that, yeah, because I wanted to play queen g8, but that allows rook e7. So, yeah, we, we start picking up pawns while also creating uh, additional counterplay. Uh, queen g6 kind of bothers me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. queen g6 bothers but me. Maybe we can play queen c7 now. Yeah, me maybe it was better to play queen c7 yeah. maybe queen c7 immediately. Yeah, just to stop, just to stop queen g6 or at least make it. But harder. okay, I anyway go queen g6. Yeah. No, none, none of this is easy. None of this is... Uh, uh, even sort of knowing the best move and knowing the evaluation, I'm still struggling to figure out exactly why rook e7, queen f6 is not better for black. Okay, apparently queen f6, <coughs> you are now worse. Because, because of rook, queen g8 or...? Because rook takes b7. <laughs> oh my god, rook takes b7. <laughs> and then okay. rook b6, wow, yeah, yeah this, okay. is, this is brutal. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, imagine after the time trouble, usually after the time trouble, you would really love to, to rest a bit and, and mm -hmm. walk around, take a look at other games to, to calm your nerves down and everything. I know, Peter, you are also one of those who are non-stop walking around. Yeah, I mean, please, please explain what is your reasoning? Because I almost, I always felt like if I'm walking, I'm, I'm kind of relaxing and getting ready for... For, for the battle af afterwards? What, what is it, your it, take? It, it allows me to kind of, first of all, you know, at our age, just kind of sitting down for five hours is not good for me. Like, I just, I just need to stretch. Like, it, a part of it is very simply that it's just not very healthy to be sitting for the, for the amounts of time that uh, people are, uh, are playing a classical chess game. But mainly, it's, it's, I, I've, I've done that for as long as I can remember. I was, even as a kid, I would not really sit at the board very much uh, if I had a choice. And uh, walking around allows me, like I, I like thinking while walking generally. And, and also like you can approach it from the other side. Uh, and for me, the, the bigger question is why do I need to be at the board? Because like I know where the pieces are. <laughs> it's not like I need to constantly remind myself where my pieces are. So it's a, uh, it's just a question of uh, whether, you know, for some people it helps to concentrate when they're at the board. Uh, but for me, it never really worked exactly like that. Uh, but also, of course, part of it is that I just, 
I don't concentrate as hard as let's say somebody like Fabio or somebody like Veselin who basically almost never get up, gets up from the board. I'm pretty sure they actually do more during the game than I do. There's also definitely, definitely that in the equation. But for me, it just never felt like I needed it. And I like walking. Yeah, and also for, for me, somehow it was always important to take a look at the other games, yeah, that to, to see, the, to get the atmosphere of the other games. Uh, yeah. Also, it unwinds me a little bit. And uh, what I also like, because I'm also thinking while walking, that while I'm walking and thinking, I don't feel any pressure, right? That you, you know that you are not forced to make a move, you are not forced to make yeah, a yeah. decision. You you have suddenly the luxury like to to be like an outsider of your game, yeah, and they yeah. take a new angle, a new perspective as well. While over the board there is always the tension, and uh, and I don't feel like I can look from 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 outside, yeah. Yeah, and uh, actually, like I, I I didn't want to mention the fact that you know there's also other games to look at because it it sounds unprofessional and probably it is unprofessional, but I actually really enjoy chess as a spectator. So for me, if I play in a large tournament with a lot of boards, when I'm walking, I'm actually looking at all of those positions and some of those positions will be very interesting. So I will, you know, start thinking about somebody else's game. And this is not helpful. <laughs> like, I, I know this is not helpful. So I, before you brought it up, I didn't really want to mention that part of it. But <laughs> I'm a curious guy. Like I, you know, it's still very difficult for me to, like we're both now, you know, 40 plus. I don't know how big of a problem it is for you in Hungary because I don't know if it, you know, people playing chess like in public parks are a thing in Hungary. But let's say you walk in your home city and you see somebody playing a friendly game of chess on a bench and it's not very far from you. Can you actually manage not to look at the position? Yeah, well, I, I should, yeah, I, I can try, yeah. I mean, I can handle <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> it's a problem. I think uh, for some people it's more of a problem for some less, but it's a, uh, and apparently Tari drew with uh, our chat is informing us that uh, Tari got some kind of repetition because his opponent did not. Wow. Fight. Okay. This is very good news for Norway. Yeah, this is excellent. This, this gives them a very good chance of not losing the match. Yeah. And also it will not put, not put the pressure on, on the other players. Yeah. Because, okay, then, then they are already kind of, Okay, but yeah, look at that. I, I, I assume, no matter with or without pressure, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I assume it, all the people, all the people saying question mark, question mark, question mark. Like the win, I actually looked it up. I was curious <clears throat> in the final position of of Tari's game. So the win is you you go uh, instead of uh, uh, yeah here you go rook a six check. Yes. The, cle the the cleanest victory is rook a six check rook e six, and now you go g five. And whatever black does, you give a check from g7. And then you simply take on e6. And the pawn of f7 is pinned. And black wow. resigns. Yeah. But this is not obvious. This is not obvious at all. I mean, the, the move that I had in my mind was rook a6 check. Yeah, but after rook e6, I kind of stopped that. No, that's the wrong direction. Yeah, and also, right? yeah, the, the, the problem is rook e6 improves black position so much that it's very easy to just stop calculating here, exactly as Peter is saying, because it, it feels like you're helping your opponent by forcing this move. Uh, and also, you know, the fact that your win here is not like giving mate with checks, but winning material by seemingly trading stuff, like rook takes e6, you, you need to, like geometry needs to, uh, you know, occur to you uh, in the first place, the geometry of using the pin on the seventh. So yeah, I mean, the machine does say does say like plus eight, so of course people now, you know, very very seriously questioning why this happened, have a point. <laughs> but uh, th this is not one of those plus eight positions where you just make some move, any move, and you win. Exactly. I mean, you would prefer much more like a plus one stable position and let me bring that home, yeah, nice, uh, nicely and quietly. In fact, uh, John Ludwig Hammer game has ended with a draw. So the oh, okay. match so is then... tied to, I mean, okay, basically I think the, the last game, this is completely hopeless. So we can more or less conclude that the match ends with a 2-2. Yeah, that will be a, that will be a draw. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I, I, I don't want to defend 
you know, even by my standards, and I really, really, people who have watched me talk about chess really know that I hate using the word blunder. Very few things in my book are straight up blunders. Uh, because, you know, I've made enough mistakes in my life to know exactly how they happen. And I kind of prefer to use the term mistake and not to criticize people too harsh, too harshly. But yeah, I mean, taking a, taking a repetition in an endgame like this definitely kind of qualifies as a blunder. But you still have to uh, you still have to sort of measure like you know what's curb your disappointment here a little bit. Yeah, the, the, I think the reason why it's kind of uh, such a shock is that it happened right after the time control, right? That yeah, he, he, exactly he did have the, half an hour. Yeah, you have yeah. the half an hour, uh, but but maybe he just you know maybe the whole game was such we we didn't have a chance. It was just a very complicated mess that. Why did not believe that logically he's winning? Yeah, yeah, that could also easily be, and that absolutely, yeah. And yeah. after all, he is he is a 20, 2500 player playing against a, a very very strong player who is you know two hundred points above him. Fabi did play Queen takes a five, by the way. Wow, yeah, because th this was once you told me that Queen f five is a blunder, and Rukesh for blitzed out by Abdul Satarov. Okay. Uh, yeah, the U.S. could lose today. U.S. can lose easily. And, and it was, like you said, Queen F5 is so tempting because it looks like you are eliminating this very important pawn and you are getting closer to, to Black's King and you really want to create some yeah. threat. And uh, as you can see now, you know, Fabi shifting in his seat there a little bit and kind of refocusing. I think he missed Rook H4. I think it's fairly... Uh, he's already played something in reply. He yeah, played... took King take G3, but Rook H5 is coming. Yeah, yeah, I think and, and look at five. this, Abdul Satoru is not even blinking. He he has so much confidence. Yeah. Rook yeah, this rook, ending, this rook ending should be completely lost. I don't think you can avoid rook ending here because queen g5 check is too much of a threat. And and then black takes on g5 again with a check with the rook and then takes on a5. And it will be like two against zero on the queen side very soon. And yes, white has a passer on the f-file, but it's on the starting position. So, yeah, I assume it's just dead. But, yeah, we'll see. And yeah. in the meantime, I, what's you happening... You know, I know the extremes of, of the people, yeah? That uh, before the tournament, everybody wanted to give the gold medal to the US team. Now, after they will lose, then they will say, ah, no, they are in crisis. No, no, actually, nothing happened. I mean, just nothing happened. The, the US team can still easily win the Olympics, yes, but yes. It, it just shows that how difficult and how tricky all this is. Just, uh, just nothing is guaranteed. Can we confirm that the Swane game ended in a draw? Let me, let me wow, see. okay. That, that would be for Germany a very, very important situation because then they are winning the match. That's what it says, yeah. But how Whoa. others do you give a... Okay, maybe it was a computer... Ah, because, okay, white is a piece up, yeah? If you don't see the computers... Uh... Yeah. His opponent just gave this perpetual. Yeah. Wow, it's... Uh... Minus six, it says. Yeah, I mean, another one of those situations where, you know, you, you, you definitely have a point if you want to criticize this decision. It's, uh, you know, obviously you, you should continue playing here. If you you know if you know the evaluation, but you know, I'm assuming it's you know it's a player who hasn't played about uh, against very many 2600s in his life, and he is down a piece. And honestly, like it says, Rook FD8, Queen E4, Queen C1, minus six. It doesn't wow. give mate or anything. It goes Queen C1 here, and it says the threats are too much. Eventually, something will fall. Black is winning. Yeah, but this is the yeah. Then the, this is not trivial at all. Yeah, and I, having seen what the machine suggests, yes, I absolutely believe it. <laughs> but without knowing what it says, it's not immediately uh, obvious. And you get these types of situations, like every day we're discussing this. Yeah, somebody rated 2379 is playing against one of the best German juniors and uh, plays a very, very good game, obviously, like a very sharp game. There were plenty of difficult decisions. Uh, to for him to get his position uh, here, you know, he obviously had to play really, really well. But it, it's also exhausting to play uh, chess at this level, and uh, this kind of a disbelief in in the fact that you could be winning against a player so much stronger than you at some point also starts playing a part, I think. And uh, yeah.
but obviously still a huge huge break for uh for germany who will now win uh win the match instead of potentially drawing it exactly and and this feeling of getting back on track yeah this is the most important thing yeah because after losing yesterday and not winning today the the crisis could have arisen yeah then then automatically yeah, the sure. yeah, atmosphere gets tense yeah everybody is nervous and so on but after you pass such a moment then that can also give you a yeah. lot of lot of Absolutely. energy and somebody is suggesting in chat that tomorrow you know like a top top board pairing tomorrow could be uh uzbekistan against india too where not a single player will be uh, above 20 years old, <laughs> which will be quite something. Well, it depends if Adiban is uh, uh, yeah, it depends selected on or they, not, yeah? Yeah, it depends on whether they want to select Adiban <laughs> for sure. Well, yeah. But look at this. I want to take a look at and, and discuss because finally White ended up with a pawn up and, uh, and they agreed to a draw. And just offer the draw here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, okay, it's, we understand. This is what we are talking about, that finally Black King activates itself and the g pawn will be very strong. Of course, uh, I understand it's, it's anyway a draw. I just find it kind of amusing that exactly by taking the pawn, you, you, you offer a yeah. draw, but yeah. Of course, yeah, this g pawn is, is very strong. Yeah, it's probably, yeah, you probably don't actually have very many chances to win this. Yeah, but, no, not yeah. at all, yeah. yeah. And I mean, remember, you always was... want the rook behind, and Black will get the rook behind. Yeah. <laughs> and this is this is a big threat. So two two between India and uh, and France. And France. Yeah. Well, to be honest, it's a very fair result because uh, it never looked like any of the teams can uh, can really win this match. And apparently, Vahidov made a big mistake against uh, Shankland. Wow. Oh, okay. So or so the chat says anyway. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, it it's a draw now for some reason. Whoa. Wow, okay, this is then incredible because you remember we, talk, we talked about this and we felt like maybe there is just no need for, for White to rush. Maybe yeah. it was just possible to play, but okay, I mean, if you can push, you of course want to push, it's understandable. King d7, king d8, a5, d7. Yeah, this is still all, all of this is still fine. Uh, rook h8 is also fine. Ah, but okay, let's give credit to rook c2 because this is yeah, such a, a is cool a move. Rook c2 is a clever move, yeah, for sure. Yes, yeah, such a cool move. Boxing invites king. So after king e8, black can play rook e2 yeah. check. So rook h8 is, is no correct, yeah. Rook h8 is fine, but after before, yeah, not taking on before is such a strange decision. But I mean, what's the difference? Yeah, that well, why why is A for such a big mistake? Yeah, A for well, it B3. gives like a tempo to play B three and B two very simply. <laughs> ah, like, and then it's an elemental draw. My God, U.S. team just just when we said that we buried them and they are alive. Yeah, yeah. Just now, now it's not even difficult because you play B two and you start giving checks and uh, exactly there is never any way to to actually uh, create enough of a threat of pushing your pawn. Just checking f7, rook d2, yeah. You can pick you can pick the pawn on f7, but that doesn't win you the game. And instead of that, he could have played a before, a before, rook h6 check. Let's say king g5. And machine says rook d6, but I'm wondering if rook b6 is also winning. But rook d6 is very clean, right? You just go rook d6 here, and then you just move the king away, and you queen your... And also it's a check on d8 even, so you can't even play b3, b2. Yeah, well, which means that probably we had to go to e5 then. No, but then king e7 ends the game, Ah, right? then king e7, oh my god. Or yeah, king then, e8 or something, yeah, it just ends the game. Then this is just... Wow, okay, I see that uh, Vahidov is down to three minutes, so... He was in some kind of a time pressure. Nerves. I mean, this 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 is clearly nerves. Yeah. Yeah. This is just yeah, just people becoming becoming nervous when they're so close to to such an important result for the team. Yeah. Well, this but then I I have to say that I'm really rooting for for Nodia back to to win this game because if the Uzbek team would go on to lose this match, I mean that that would be just yeah, insane. that would be that would be unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, he's he's winning this, yeah. Yeah, he should win this. It's difficult to imagine how he doesn't win this. Yeah, wow. But I mean, okay, Sam will be very, ah, Sam even opted King G7. He because he knows that there is no more race. That it, yeah, there yeah. is no more need to attack. You can put the king on the fate, even yeah. He can just put the king yeah. on the fate and lock the white king down completely, and nobody goes anywhere. Wow, what a save, yeah. 
that, that that's that, that that chess is about yeah it's it's always a struggle always a fight till the bitter end and what is very nice that the players are no not engines yeah that's why we see all these dramas beautiful ideas great moves but also human terrible mistakes that's what makes our game so special yeah and apparently there's also a mention that uh, Irvin might not lose but this can't be right. This is. Oh my! I mean, no. This. No, no, no. He already lost. No, okay. No, that that is just unimaginable. <laughs> no, yeah, because that, that okay, would have been, exactly would have been what, too much. What, yeah. what it means to be in a completely hopeless look and game, yeah, without any races or whatsoever. Yeah, Spain has one, two and a half, one and a half. That match ended with a draw, Poland between uh, Romania, two two. Azerbaijan, yeah, Gusainov has lost and uh, Dulai Bailey has to win his squeezing. I mean, okay, suddenly yeah, there is something a now. H5, yeah. is, H5 is a bit weak, yeah. Weak, weakness on H5. Well, okay. No, this the clock be... situation is under control, yeah. Then... Yeah. And by the way, in that Gusainov game, it looks like his opponent actually ended up taking only five. And yeah, he took yeah. only five, yeah. And he still won, yeah, okay. Yeah, because that, they reached this position shows, exactly yeah. that, that I had in mind after B6. Takes, takes, and ah, first B5. This was smart, yeah. Mm. This, this was smart. So not taking on C6 first, but B5 immediately. And yeah, again, the, the Peter Swidler look, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, because you were uh, highlighting it and, and very rightly so, yeah, that if, if you can really put the rook behind the pawn, then, then just do it and it wins by, by itself. Yeah. And, and this game is a very nice illustration that that's it. No matter, black king is coming, but you are you just can always, putting yeah, your you can opponent in six and uh, Yeah, things just collapse eventually. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, uh, Vasiv needs to win this game against uh, Ali Marandi. Um, he might. This is now yeah, kind of sharp. Yeah, this is this is very winnable now. Yeah, there is a lot to play for, but also Black gets some counterplay with Rook B five. Is is yeah, that it... a move? No, he plays Rook E five. Okay, also understandable. Rook but E5 actually, Rook... Knight H five. And Knight G three, King F four. King of four against any of your discovered checks, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can do it, then just do it, yeah. It seems quite strong, yeah. This Beautiful. loses knight c3, king of four. Also, probably loses because the h pawn will be very, very quick, yeah. Yeah, I mean, my, my gut feeling suddenly told me that this, this rook b5 maybe is a hope, yeah. I was just. Mm -hmm. So, so happy to, to spot it, yeah, that some disbalance in whites can, because this knight f4 structure is, is wonderful. You need to create some disbalance. All right, so Azerbaijan might bounce back. And what about, uh, what about Netherlands? Anish game ended in a draw. Uh, he, took, he just took a draw there. It's kind he of interesting. He just took a draw, me. yeah. I mean, but, I mean okay, what to do? Yeah, he isn't better, but yeah, yeah. he just decided not to, not to try. And so everything is hinging on this uh, Rothstein game. Yeah, Rothstein and, and yeah, Lamy has lost. Yeah, actually, Erwin managed to win a lot of the king side somehow, but unfortunately, when your opponent wins both of his, both of his pawns, it doesn't really help very much. Yes. Uh, so. Yes, and unfortunately, after Rook D2 check, I guess White rook has Rook D6. Yeah, rook D6 yeah. yeah, just Rook D6. And ending the story, yeah. So, yeah, Jordan Fanforest also couldn't make anything out of this look end game. It, it yeah. ended in a draw, and then what I'm about this game? I, I think, I think Rothstein could be better now, which will be quite, quite a change from, from what we were used to. But still, it's, it's a complex. You have the knight on h4. No, I mean, the point is knight c5, I think bishop takes d5 works. This is why he played a4 first. Yeah. He is luring the knight to c5, and now he can take on d5 and go knight f5 check, and all of those pieces will start dropping off, yeah? 
Yeah, this is very important. Uh, well, my feeling was actually I wanted to jump with the knight to e5, but then you have bishop a6. Yeah, so then bishop a6, yeah. I kill off, I kill off that knight completely, and the, the exactly. f will start coming. Yeah. Yeah. Then black can't be worse, and that's exactly what they need. Yeah. Then it's there yeah. might just maybe knight uh, d2. Knight d2 is the the, the best option. Yeah, yeah. Knight d2. Okay, you still go bishop a6, right? No, but it's yeah, but then it's a better square. I and can... then you take on h7 and knight d4. Exactly, is yeah. At least I can take on h7 safely without having to worry about knight of three check and, yeah. and all those things. And and still there is some tension in the position. Absolutely, yeah. No, it's uh... ah, but okay, maybe you will have g6, but okay, anyway, if you give a knight e4 knight check, check and your king yeah, is coming. Yeah, uh... yeah. All right, so then then it's not over yet. Definitely not over yet. Yeah, England won very convincingly because Mickey mm -hmm. won with Black David Howell won his fourth game. So he's four out of four. I mean, this is what it does for commentators when they are suddenly allowed he's to probably play. Probably on the right? list now, yeah? yeah. After some years. Uh is he? I mean, let me check. He should be he should be on the list now with four out of four. No, I mean the, the David uh... David's uh, rating was quite. I mean, the, he, I think this, was, unfortunately, I think this is a typo. Yeah, because uh, the website says he's twenty six fifty nine. So yes, exactly. I was like shocked. Yeah, because okay, I, I, I recall his incredible success in the in the Grand Prix. I uh, know. Sorry, I mean in the Grand Swiss. I mean he's like a Grand Swiss specialist. No, in in Isle of Man, he almost qualified. In uh, in uh, Riga, he almost qualified. Just showing his class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Gukesh is up to 2708, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Gukesh is doing quite well. And and Plug made the draw just to no, not to let uh, Sadvani down, yeah? because it, it would have been unpleasant to keep him <laughs> the only player who drops a, drops a half point, point. Yeah, so what else do we have? Austria versus Armenia. We haven't had an update there. Marcus Rager drew. And what? The game where we saw like Malcolm Young has things under control is uh, out of control. Completely out of control, yeah. Yeah, the, the queen side somehow disappeared. White is an exchange up. G takes, like, it looks weird, but GH, queen uh, D7 or queen C8. Maybe we can take and go like bishop 3 but there is a lot of checks. I don't want yeah, to a lot of checks. No, this, yeah. this, this no, we is don't want to do that. fine for black. But but yeah, things are definitely out of control. Let's take a look at the other games. Ah, Bloberger has won. Bloberger won with black. And uh, Hovanesian drew with black. So in fact, yeah, Malcolm Jan needs to win this game with the black pieces. Ah, this, is, this explains why uh, all of those things are happening. Why is Bloberger's game so... Like, why is this final position so completely lost? Knight g4 we just take or what? what? What's happening there? Knight g4, ag and checkmate or not? I guess, yeah. I mean, otherwise you don't resign, but still. But look at this queen on a1. Like, you can understand why this is probably mate, right? Because yeah. this, this queen on a1 isn't really participating in the game very much. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, second just... day in a row. Such a nice game by Bloberger. Yeah, no, this is uh, in insane and... Okay, Austria will be on uh, maximum points, yeah, if, if Malcolm Jan is not winning this crazy position, which yeah. apparently, objectively, is clearly worse for him. Unbelievable. Yeah, and in, in the meantime, I just, I, I checked with our producer and we still only really have the top six matches for the women's. And then India will win because Tanya is completely winning, three draws and that game still running. Uh, Bulgaria versus uh, Ukraine. Uh, is currently at 1-1. One, one. Uh, top, top board will probably be a draw and on board three. Uh, yeah, Anno Shanina is now completely safe, but maybe she will not win. It's unclear if, uh, like, objectively this is a draw, but people sometimes make mistakes, of course. Yeah, but let's not forget that board four actually Ukraine lost, yeah? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, but they anything... won on board two. Anna, Anna Muzichuk won on board two, so it's 1-1 one, one right now. With two games running, both of which look like they most likely will end in a draw, which will probably means that the match is most likely to go 2-2. Georgia has beaten India 3-1, three, three, uh, with only uh, Batsyashvili uh, losing her game and everybody else winning. Poland is 3-0 up 
uh, against the Netherlands. And Alina Kashlinskaya will actually not win her game. Yeah, actually, she is even slightly suffering now. What yeah, a probably, probably a draw, but yeah, definitely not winning for Black. Yeah. But the match is very, very safely won for, for Poland. Uh, France is 1-0 up against Serbia, and there are some other games running. Probably draw on board one. Uh, definitely draw on board two. And on board four. France is winning again. So France will win. And match number six, uh, Israel against Azerbaijan is currently 1-1. <clears throat> uh, and two games still running with uh, some very unclear positions. Yeah, this one is still very much alive. I, I don't know how to... Yes, how to for example, I mean, this... Uh... Game between Balayayeva against Belenkaya is uh, is a mess. Yeah, on board four, uh, Azerbaijan is very very far ahead in that uh, in that very messy position between uh, Fatalieva and uh, Mihal Lahav. But yeah, that game also had a lot of uh, a lot of things go uh, very dramatically in the time trouble. Black Black were doing completely fine, and then uh, suddenly they weren't. Yeah, well, a lo lot of dramas, but this case now back to Abdul Satoru because yes, definitely. it's so back. important, yeah? Okay, so he is now three against one, and the F-pawn alone should not be providing enough enough counterplay. But yeah, Fabi is doing the right thing. Fabi is not even trying to contest the queen side. The queen side is gone. Forget about the queen side. Uh, you need to uh, you need to play on the other side of the board, but yeah, Black can just uh, push. Yeah, he played uh, a four. Played a five, a four. F six can always be nicely met by King G six. So actually, White needs to play something like Rook C eight to to start giving some checks, but it's not really clear what does it really bring. Yeah, you can even continue pushing. You can play three and then King G five, King H six, King G seven. Exactly. You always have enough time. And unfortunately for Fabi as well, like uh, very often the the A pawn will queen with check in in some of those lines. So yeah, it's uh, it's it shouldn't hold if Black holds holds his nerve. Yeah. In the meantime, Sam did save his game, uh, which is a, a huge huge miracle for for Team US. There he was in a lot of trouble. Let's put it mildly. Uh, uh, Jahangir Vahidov was playing a kind of a masterpiece until a certain point. Basically, until a kind of a strange to understand decision to not take on before move 52. Um, and really, you don't even need to calculate variations. You just common sense should tell you that allowing the black pawn to reach b2 is not a good idea. So you should do something about not allowing it to happen. No, you know, I, I actually have the feeling that I know why it happened. Mm. The, the the point is that he simply was thinking on general terms, like if ever there will yes. be a race, then it's better to keep the pawns, yeah. And absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know exactly how it happened, but it doesn't make it any better for him because, yeah, it's a, uh, you know, for him personally, it would be very good to be the twenty seven hundred player, and for his team, of course, it's a it's a very very big uh, setback that he is not winning now, uh, because uh, it means that even with Nodjebek, you know, beating the one of the world top five with black. They are not going to win the match. Yeah, yeah, but now Nodia back is seemingly winning. Yeah, A4 looks it on the board. That was and also one. importantly, he keeps the clock in check, right? It's very, like if you have a minute here with black, you probably still win, but it becomes a little bit nervy. Yeah. But yeah, he's playing quickly, which is very, very useful here, meaning that when the time comes to actually calculate something, if that if that time comes, he will have plenty, plenty of time in reserve. Well, I mean, it's it's enough just to to mention that Abdul Satov has won the World Rapid uh, Championship mm -hmm. last year, yeah, or basically mm -hmm. almost, yeah, end of last year. So his uh, his playing skills and his uh, skills of handling the clock is is wonderful. I mean, he's definitely not a player who, who is afraid of having little time and he's also playing super fast and then with a lot of... Yeah, I mean, he, he knows he's winning and also, as we, as we mentioned earlier, like these guys 
they don't suffer from you know horrible attacks of the nerves so yeah he trusts uh, he trusts in himself he trusts in his calculations and uh, you know he will he will convert this most likely yeah, AC, look at check, check played, so King G5 will be played. Yeah, King G5, you you, you, you give another check, the king goes to H6. I guess he wants to play King F6 there, I think this is his point. He wants to play King F6 there uh, and try to set up some kinds of perpetual ideas, but there's never any perpetual ideas, not really. Yeah, look, G8 check played. Yeah. On if you want to completely avoid it, you can go in the other direction, actually. You can go King H4 and... I can kind of abandon the f pawn because I think it will be enough actually. F six, a two, and and then rook f two, and but he went to h six, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm pretty sure Fabi wants to play king f six. This will force ah, but now you can actually go king h five. <laughs> yeah, this is this is lovely. Yeah, yeah. Now you can go king h five and then king g four, and you've won an important tempo because the f pawn is no longer really being pushed anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah, that's uh, it, it. Yeah, it's pretty much over. Yeah, and, and as you can over. see how how Abdul Satov is sitting at the chair before he was just leaning backwards. Like this is kind of the body language. Then when you signal that that's it, I I know yeah. that I'm winning. Yeah. Mm. Now he he comes back because okay he's kind of thinking like what what, what is my opponent still hoping for? Did I miss something? But he's already completely sure that he he's winning. Yeah, he knows he knows everything is under control. Yeah. And Fabi realizes king of six, king h5 is completely empty, so he goes f6. And now we can give some checks. Yeah. Yeah, there's some suggestion in uh, in chat that the the, the uh, board four player for Uzbekistan is uh, now kind of desperately unhappy about what happened, which I firmly believe, and uh, you know we can we can give him the space the, the space to to be unhappy about things. Yeah, of course. I mean, in such moments, he goes crazy. The team captain goes crazy. I mean, everybody, the the teammates are going crazy because there was this chance. The only person who has no right to go crazy is Abdul Satulo because he still needs to win his game to to secure everything. Yeah, and in fact, it looks like there is a chance. Like what most likely will happen is that. Black cannot win without trading the a2 pawn for the f7 pawn here, but he will be in time to, to get safely behind the pawns on b5 and c4. There are some, some setups there where it becomes tricky to win or maybe even becomes drawn. Like if you imagine the f pawn disappearing, the a pawn disappearing, and Fabi getting his king all the way to b4. Some of those positions are a draw. Not every single one of them, but some of them are a draw, and they're also all very tricky to play. So even those which are not a draw are often uh you know people people mess them up and yeah fabi designed yeah this is correct yeah look f2 and designed Con congratulations yeah. for abdul satolov it's a very very impressive victory but finally i think uh you us team can be more happy by really saving this match yeah it's a it's a, obviously a, a, an unbelievable improvement over what it looked like when fabi missed rook h4 and uh uh sam had basically a completely lost rook ending. Uh, but yeah, now now it's 2-2. It's only one point, one match point dropped. Obviously, they would have preferred to win today, but it's not it's not the end of the world by any means for them. And uh, uh, yeah, life goes on. Uh, there will be some teams on 100%. India, two, as we've talked about, have dropped. They made two draws today, and the, those were the first points that they dropped. So they're on like... 15 out of 16. Uh, also, some other teams, I'm sure, are on 100%. Let me let me briefly check. Yeah, well, I mean, Austria is coming to 200% to as well, yeah? Yeah, Austria will be on, on 100%. Uh, I mean, Spain is on 100%. England, England is on 100%. Yes. Spain on 100%. Uh, Turkey, after beating Azerbaijan, if they will beat Azerbaijan. If they Turkey. will beat, yeah, okay. Yeah, this Turkey is on 100%, yet. yeah. And Israel might be 100% if they, if, if Rochten is not losing. Yeah, and I think, I think he's experienced enough not, not to lose this position, but we will see. I mean, it's still, it's still a little bit up in the air, so not, not a guarantee, but looks like he, he'll be. So th there will be a lot of very close pairings tomorrow. Yeah, we're currently scrolling through the list, try, just trying to figure out if there is something that we absolutely need to watch. I guess it's maybe this position, yeah. 
uh, Hrant Melkeman trying desperately to create winning chances for himself to save the match for his team because uh, yeah, Broberger beat uh, Tersakian with black on board three. But looks like now that the knight on f4 got traded away and there will be no immediate checks, it's just very, very difficult to imagine how black is supposed to be better here. Yes, exactly. So for, for some reason, this is some technical error. It's written that uh, Hrant Melkumjan won, I guess, because, okay, the, first of all, it's impossible that this game ends like this. Sec, I mean, I'm guessing that this is just completely wrong. Yeah, it shouldn't. Like, I, I don't see any way this is real. Uh, unless something very dramatic happened here, like, I don't know, once again, a phone rang somewhere, <laughs> you know. Or, or he forgot about the clock and somehow lost on time on move 51. But it doesn't really sound very probable. Yes, yes, this no. is very unlikely. I think what probably happened is that he played bishop takes f4. I think white is, if anyone is winning here, it's white. So maybe he played bishop takes f4 and he offered a draw. And the draw was accepted because Hrant now understands that there's really no winning this game. And then there was once again a mix-up placing the kings in the center. Yes, exactly. This is, the, is, this is the most likely yeah. scenario if if Yeah, if I the think game I really think this ended. is probably probably what happened here, yeah. Ah uh, no, no. The the position is different or what? Ah, what? Because now what? suddenly we are jumping with the pieces. Maybe somewhere some piece Okay, was... so yeah, we we're being told that the the game notation is being fixed sort of live on air before our eyes. So we'll 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 wait for that to figure to, to to work itself out. But ah, okay, then maybe it's possible that the result is correct. Yeah, the the, the game is incorrect, but the result mm -hmm. is correct. That that would be, of course, a great news for for Armenia. Yeah, and people are asking for uh, be a crumbling game, but unfortunately for us, we uh, in the in the women's section, we only have access to the PGNs for the top six boards. Uh, it's a kind of a regrettable situation. I understand this is not ideal, but we can't actually show you uh, the, the the Sweden match because it's further down. Pia is such an inspiration, though. Like a, her entire family is just uh, you know a, a kind of a, a fairy tale story of. People being in love with chess for their for for, for like their entire uh, entire life, and everybody in the in that family is, uh, you know, very strong players, but also just you know that their outlook on life is something I would very much like to <laughs> to experience once in a while. Yeah, I mean, okay. Also, the Pia is uh, such an incredible player. Yeah, that she has this incredible strategic feeling. So the the class is permanent. Yeah, she can simply mm. never lose it because she has such a wonderful chess education. She has all this feeling for nuances. Always a pleasure to see her games. So wonderful yeah, chess player. Absolutely. And the wonderful person, of course. Okay, one of the most sympathetic uh, persons ever. Yeah, uh, Canada, Canada against. Iran in in the open section. I'm looking at this really strange position in the uh, Idani Pupuya game. I think it might be a draw now, right? Because we go a three, a two, a one, and then b two. Well, that that would be incredibly important, big news for for Iran. Yeah, that if they can save the game like this. So a three, the line you are. Bishop mentioning... seven. You know, I think bishop d seven needs to be played, right? Because otherwise, I go a two and b two. And maybe I win. Ah, you so have bishop, bishop d7. d7. Or bishop yeah. g4, bishop d1. Yeah, yeah. Or... yeah, and now a2, bishop a4. And unfortunately for black, b2, bishop b3 check loses. But a1 is a draw, right? Okay, oh, you no, have to put a1 knight, right? a1 knight! <laughs> a1 <laughs> knight is the only move. But maybe, I mean, how easy is this? <laughs> I guess b2 is such a strong threat that it actually is still a draw, right? Bishop takes e5, maybe? B2, bishop c2? Is this easy? <laughs> no, not easy at all. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, 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 this is not what you told me, yeah? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I missed it myself, obviously. Like yeah, I, this is I, not, I not what you promised. Wow. Okay, so hang on. What happened here? So bishop b4, bishop b2, bishop c3, bishop c1, bishop f5. So yeah, white is getting ready to bring the bishop back while g4, d1 or d7, a4. 
Can we play King E7 here? Just to stop. And you just want to sit, yeah? Yeah. No, but I. Okay, no. we're we gonna go Bishop G4. Uh, it's the same. Yeah, it's uh, no, it's actually worse because after Bishop D1, I will not be in time with any of my stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I will. So you have to go now. You have to go A3, A2, A1 now. It seems to me that if you don't do it now, you might never have another chance. Uh, and then this entire line with the knight on a one yeah, probably. Yeah, I happens. will. I will not do with bishop just to show that. Yeah, it basically maybe, does yeah. not matter. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Okay. A one knight. Still the same. A one knight. Bishop takes e five looks correct because we need to take that pawn at some point. Yeah, just to show these ones that yeah, yeah, in this case it's a draw. This is a kind of a very funny checkers style of position. Yeah, bishop e five. Yeah, bishop, bishop c two. Yeah. I don't know what this is. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, to... very hard to say. Yeah, it's uh... very hard to say. I mean, okay, white needs to win, black needs to draw, and uh, the the teammates and and the countries are going crazy. No guarantee for anything. Yeah, because the the match is two draws and Tabata by one on board too. So if uh, if Razvan Pretu wins, it will be a, a drawn match, and if he doesn't, uh, uh, Iran wins. Yes, exactly. Now I'm taking a look at what. What about Blue Bomb? Yeah, Blue Bomb seems to be losing. Yeah, uh -huh. it's time yeah, to design. Already, yeah, he just lost, resigned. Yeah, already lost, but Swane, but, but they survived. Yeah, this yeah, Swane got 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 a draw for very very fortunately. So Gusti is uh, spared from. Gusti is still alive. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Gusti is spared from two days of heartbreak uh, in a row, yeah. but. One one uh, update we haven't talked about. We only talked about Croatia when they got crushed by Bulgaria. That mm -hmm. today it was their time to crush their opponents. Okay, to be to be fair, they played against Federal Islands and they won three and a half. Half the only draw was conceded in the first board when when of course the very very strong Helgi Damziska made the draw against Salic. Yeah, and judging by this position, maybe he was better at some point. Yeah, we, exactly. Yeah. There definitely, it looks like he was putting pressure, but Croatia is back on track. And what about Czech Republic? Navarra, David Navarra, is he winning or? Should be a draw, right? Yeah, C4, should be. C4 should hold, I guess, at some point, right? Yeah, yeah. Although, I mean, it's still kind of tricky, right? Because you play C4 here, I take, you take on A4, I play King F4. And I start kind of pushing you and trying to run with both of my pawns. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, black definitely runs zero risks, but... Yeah, of course. It's it's very comfortable to be black and all the more comfortable that actually... Yeah. Uh, Everybody else won, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's 3 zero already. So it's a very comfortable situation. What about Georgia? Georgia, after losing yesterday to United States, yeah, Badur has won. Badur on second board, Chadlish really has won. Draw on board three and... Yeah, and, and there will be a win, yeah. So three and a half, half. Okay, very convincing. And what about Greece? Uh, I see that uh, Greece. Mastro Vasilis lost, but uh, Nikolaos Theodoro won on board two with black against uh, Svetan Stoyanov. Stoyanov. They're playing Bulgaria, right? And uh, uh, Banikas won on board three. And uh, Eugenius Ioannis, Ioannis also won. Won yeah. in like 10 moves on board four somehow against yes. Alexander Tashev. So Greece is winning big today. Latvia is playing against Denmark, I guess. Yeah, Denmark had this shocking defeat against Zambia in the second round. Yeah, and they're struggling against Latvia as well, seems like, because, yeah, uh, Jonas Bulbiere is probably just lost again. Tom Cantans. Uh, Cantans uh, is a very strong player, but still... Uh, yeah, also heavily underrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, he is a good player and uh, he probably ends up winning this position now because white really has no moves and black should be able to somehow force the force the issue with an extra queen. Draw on board two uh, and then... Uh, uh, Taibo Jesper's underguard won on board Ah, okay, three. so it's, it's not that bad. Yeah, they won on board three and uh, on board four. Ah, but they are losing on board. They're four. losing on board four. Yeah, they're, the king on g three is completely safe, and there is no wow. real, no real play. So they will lose three one. Or so, no, 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 no. They will. Well, no, uh, two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half, half. Yeah, because. Two and a half, one and a half. Yeah. 
Wow, yeah. So so Denmark is also not, but okay, there are no easy matches. Just nothing is easy. And okay, let, let me check uh, Hungarian woman team against India. So the, the first ball ended in a draw. The marathon duel, the, the big clash between Hampi and Juan Trang. The second board was drawn very quickly. Third board was drawn in, in a Rukand game. And unfortunately for, for Hungary and for the big happiness for, for all the Indian fans, Tanya has won as expected. Yeah, Tanya is crushing, yeah. Yeah, Tanya is very, very convincing. I mean, she had this very dubious opening moment in, in the first game, but ever since uh, she won that long game, she's very convincing. Mm. So... Yeah, it, it seems like the, that, there, that's not... it in the women's section, right? Or did, did we have some close match there or not? Ah, the, uh, the Ukraine but... match was very close, right? Yeah, Let's the Ukraine match is, is actually still going on, yeah. Because they lost on board four, one on board two, and they have this position. And uh, Maria Muzichuk is also playing uh, a rook ending uh, one against zero. But yeah, that, that one is a dead draw on board. Yeah, one. that one is not very exciting. Yeah, you can, yeah. you know, if you want, to, you can go king f2, king e1, and it's still a very easy draw. But uh, the, the one which Shanina is playing is kind of slowly becoming borderline playable. Like you go king b7 here, and maybe at that point, the way to make a draw will be. I don't know, playing rook e5 or something. and Yeah, that's the big, but rook e5, king c6, and then Exactly, you can... like how happy are you about any of this? The engine, yeah. seems, the, the engine still seems to be suggesting this is a draw, but I'm beginning to think uh, uh, experience might actually prevail here in the end because... Yeah, hang on, let's see how did this happen. So king g5, f4, king c7, rook e6. Okay, king b7 not yet played, so clearly white is trying to play this rook e5. But... Uh... I mean, rook e5 is only nice if you know exactly that the pawn end game is, is drawn. If the pawn end game yeah. is lost, then you don't want to do, do this. Not particularly, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really wondering why, why this is such, such an obvious draw. So after king b7... Ah, okay, so... I don't quite understand. Ah, okay, so the, the engine suggests we can switch to the defending on the third. Like you play king f6, a4, rook a3. Oh, sorry, okay, e but this is very difficult. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if this is a draw, honestly. I think this might be lost. I think the engine is glitching. Yeah, I mean, humanly, you would, you would feel like you almost have to design. No, I mean, okay, king yeah. c6, what is this? This is hopelessly lost. Yeah, king b6. Yeah, I have no idea why it's suggesting this. It seems, yeah, the, to my eyes, it just seems lost. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the biggest fairy tales if this ends in a, ends in a draw. So Ukraine could still quite quite comfortably win this match, right? It's one one, and they have those two rook endings, and yeah, they exactly. they probably they're probably not winning the one on board one, but they I think by this point, and also it's it's down to a minute there for uh, for the Bulgarian player, which is not fun either. Ah, okay, uh, so the setup here apparently to make a draw, and this is quite clever. I, I want to show this. So we want to, what we want to do is we shuffle until you play three. So let's just rook h six, rook e six doesn't matter. No, no, keep keep the keep the six wrong rank open. So we shuffle until you play three, and then we go rook e two. You go king somewhere. We go rook a two. Just. It's important to do it now because then we'll be too late. You have to play rook a5. And now we just go king g6 or king f6, yeah. And you cannot cross. No, but this is the this is the biggest miracle ever, you know. I mean, this is never going to happen. It would probably <laughs> not even happen in the World Championship final between the two best players in the world. I, I just don't, don't expect this to happen at all. Yeah, and she's gone rook e5, and I think now after king c6, uh, you have the, to These expect. are the kind of things that, first of all, somebody has to tell you that there is a draw because, okay, you already mm -hmm. don't believe in it. And uh, 
even even then you need tons of time to to finally eliminate everything else and then to understand yeah. that ah this is the one that the computer thinks no no this is yeah. completely just look at five and as you, as you can see like on our screen we can see that king c6 just drops the evaluation all the way down uh i think maybe she wanted to go king takes the five here and she will now realize that black can play a4 without trading for one more move and if you yeah. go king f6 here like if you don't king, king if you don't go king f6 here you don't queen your pawn and if you go king f6 here a1 is a check so hang on a4 king g6 by the way why is this lost <laughs> i mean okay no, is suddenly is the reason i, game, I disappeared right? for the moment is that I, I closed my window because the our neighbor is cutting the grass in front of the house and there is some incredible noise and i'm concentrating hoping that the sun will not not enter the broadcast ah yeah, yeah. now you've taken you taken you go king g5 yes okay this still king f5, king f5 a3 and then and king then king d6, d6 of and course then yeah king d6, kindergarten d6, stuff yeah and then king okay. d6 yeah 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 it's uh thanks thanks to chat we, we would have eventually found it but chat showed us and yeah because of that king takes a five is unplayable and now the black king will join the a pawn and basically you can never take on a five so you have no counterplay so black just slowly slowly continues improving and eventually you lose Peter, I think I will give you for for two minutes. Sure. Uh, take sure. take the because because the noise will be unbearable. I think for for one minute, yeah. Absolutely, I will disappear. Okay. Just uh, I mute myself. So here we are. Uh, as I mentioned, we only have the the matches that we've already covered here for the women's section, ending with uh, the 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 match between Israel and Turkey, which currently there is a draw on board one. Then there is this position on board two, which is apparently completely winning for uh, the Turkish player, or possibly the Azerbaijani player, I'm, I apologize. That is Azerbaijan, not Turkey, yeah, uh, my bad. Uh, draw on board three and on board four. Uh, the Azerbaijani player is also completely winning, so uh, that's the, the last one we have access to. And uh, Durabaili is winning, I'm being told. Let me scroll all the way up and try to find that. Um, that would be very, very good news for, for Azerbaijan because... Uh, hang on. So we left it here. And he chose not to take on h5. Which is very curious. I thought my takes h5 was very strong and the engine kind of confirms that it was pretty good. But he went king of three instead, preferring to kind of keep the tension going. And they started shuffling and continued shuffling for a while. And we're still shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. Ah, and then he found this plan. He found the plan of playing c5 and, sorry, c4 and c5. And suddenly his opponent realized that if you take on before here, you actually get mated. Uh, it's not just one check, it's actually, you, I mean, not immediately, but you have to play b7, b5 here, not to get mated. And then white has a kind of a pleasant protected passer on on b6 and can also play, for instance, rook a6, rook a8, rook a7 and pick up more material. So uh, Ali Marandi had to play king b8. And now you can go rook d6, I guess, and start picking stuff up. Yeah, rook d6. Uh, knight g4 looks logical. Maybe we go even knight e6 here. I don't know. We can also just take on h5 and start pushing pushing our passers because this, these are not passers. These will never go anywhere. And uh, while I'm here, you know, having your you know complete and undivided attention, I want to remind you guys that there is currently a 50% discount on going premium on chess 24 with the uh, code uh, Olympia 2022. And also, uh, as you can see, Nightbot constantly informing you about the uh, the final of the uh, the tour starting in Miami in uh, about a couple of weeks' time. And there you see there are some packages being on sale right now at chess24.com slash Miami, where you can buy 
uh, some packages which provide luxurious accommodation in Miami, some without accommodation, which are obviously cheaper. And uh, that gives you uh, some subscriptions to Chess24 services, subscriptions to Chessable services, plus uh, a chance to uh, meet uh, uh, the players in Miami, which is, uh, you know, arguably, you know, the biggest prize are the friends you, you made along the way or something along those lines. Anyway, uh, shameless shilling probably done for uh, for today. We haven't really done nearly enough shilling today, so I had to uh, I had to get some of it in. Um, so what are we watching? Uh, the uh, India France match has finished. The America uh, uh, the America Uzbekistan match is finished. Uh, Poland Romania finished some time ago. Uh, there is this end game. It seems like the the, the highest ranked game on, on my screen right now is this game between Vasif and uh, uh, Ali Ali Mirandi. Uh, what else is there? Um, okay, so uh, Max Rothstein did indeed draw his game against Max Farmerdams, which means that Israel beats uh, the Netherlands, which is maybe a little bit of an upset, but. Uh, those are fairly closely matched teams, so it's not it's not such a shock. And it seems like board one of the Ukrainian women's match has been uh, a great draw because now I think uh, they know probably that board four is or board three, whichever it is, uh, is now kind of winning. So no need to continue pushing in in the very very obviously drawn Fedor position there. Uh, what happened in the Dragnev game? Let me let me try to find it. Uh, I, I am actually very curious. Uh, let me find that match first and foremost. It's a bit further below. One sec. Ah, it's still not fixed on my screen. Uh, it still gives the exact, this, exactly the same moves and still says that Dragnev lost. But I have no idea. I have no idea exactly why or uh, what actually happened? Somebody grab him for an interview. Yeah, not me though. I'm very, very far away. Yeah, it's not fixed anywhere. I I checked. Uh, uh, I, I checked on all of my sources and. Uh, uh, it seems to not be fixed anywhere, uh, so I can't really provide you. Uh, I can't really provide you with any particular insight on what exactly happened in that game. Yeah, and I'm also back. The danger disappeared. <laughs> now it's all okay. So where do we stand? Uh, the the only game that I think it makes any sense for us to to continue watching here is the Dura Bailey game against uh, uh, yes. uh, Ali Marandi, which became quite sharp. He chose not to play that knight takes h5 move, which he could have played earlier, but he's still now much better. Um, but there's definitely some some chances for black to hold. And it's two minutes against one. So I think this is the one that we will watch. And then once this is done, we might actually have, uh, you know, a reasonably short day today with only, you know, five and a half hours, arguably, something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, luckily, no queen endgames in sight, yeah? But who, who knows, if white queens yeah. page phone and black queen something, then, then we might be for a marathon, yeah? Yeah, we could be, yeah, but it seems like but it's, it's very likely. unlikely, yeah. Seems like it's less likely so today. So what, what, well, first of all, okay, the main problem for white is that white can't play the move king f3 because of... Yeah, you would like... Mate. Yeah, you would like to go there. You would like to go to f3 and f4, but... Yes. And and then if you can't do that, then you have to decide that uh, where do you really put this king? Because uh, everywhere you don't want to go to the back rank, of course, because then the knight and the rook combo will be very, very powerful. On the other hand, if you go to d3, then maybe black will be able to target the g3 pawn yeah, with rook b3 check and then hit it. So he opts for king e1. And then we have to kind of... Uh, 
I mean, come yeah. on, some, I mean, knight e3, rook c2, and then knight g2, check. No, you can still get out, yeah? Okay. Yeah, you, first of all, we can get out. And secondly, like at that moment, you go rook e6 and take away the e3 square and the yes, entire construction exactly. collapses. I mean, that, that's the first move too. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a difficult, the problem is that black is so far away from starting any kind of a play on the queen side. The pawns on a5 and c5, like you need to take both of them before you can get any passers of your own. And by that point, the h-pawn is a queen, basically. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an issue. That, that's a huge issue, yeah. I think he's gone... I was trying to figure out by the pen movement. Could he have gone knight h2? Yeah, well, I was expecting to move knight h2. The big question is that look, dc traps the knight there or not, for example. That's also a big question. Ah, uh, no, he went rook b1 check. No, if, if black okay. had to play rook b1 check, then I think it's very bad news for, for white. I mean, for, for black and, and for the Turkish fans, because now the king escapes and then it should be lost. I mean, one really had the feeling that exactly this awkward placement of, of white's king was the reason why black had any chance mm -hmm. of survival. Yeah. I mean, you can go... I mean, the, the big... Ah, it's not actually... It doesn't actually work. Yeah, I was going to say, you can try playing knight f6 and then rook g1. But white still has rook g6 and you don't actually win the pawn on g3. So he's gone king... Rook... What? Okay. Rook b2 check. King c3, rook g2 is what he wants, I guess. Yeah, this is what he wants, yeah. This, mm -hmm. is, the, this is kind of the trick. Yeah, that king c3, rook g2 and knight takes g4 is met by rook g3 check. Yeah, that's what black is hoping for. Yeah. However, my big question is that if white plays the move for... Ah, king c1, he wants to go rook b5 and then try to take something with check. Maybe, or rook g2 maybe anyway. Yeah, and... okay, king c3 played anyway. Because in fact, Wasif has calculated something. So after rook g2, he will have a nice answer. Maybe, ah, no, no, yeah. I was going to suggest you can switch back to an idea of giving mate to the king on b8. I don't think it works. Does it? Can we go knight d... No... Can we can we go knight d7? Wow, that would be that so would beautiful. Be, that would be study like, right? Yeah, knight d7 and then knight b6 against any of your moves. Rook g3, king d4. And then I just come to g8 and I. And even knight f6, knight d5 doesn't save you because I can just ignore it. Ah, oh, no, you. I don't know. Well, okay. I mean, yeah, because I don't have knight f6 or knight h6. Yeah, rook g2 now on the board. Yeah, I'm expecting this knight d7, knight b6 to happen. Yeah, that's the... I mean, I, you don't even even have that many obvious... But hang on, knight first. d7, I can also go king c7, Exactly, right? this is what was worrying me. King c7, knight b6, and then rook g3, and then... Ah, you have king d4. In this case, king d4, king yeah. d4, ah... Yeah, so do knight e5 I have to play. But then king d4 anyway. Knight e5, and king, king d4, d4 anyway. anyway. Yeah. And if you have to play rookie two, then I will start pushing my h pawn. Yeah, yeah. So he's played something. Yeah, let's let's see. I mean, I, I could see him on my on my videos. Okay, he played ninety seven. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I I think that uh, if people did not know uh, Vasiv, then after last year's uh, World Cup, definitely people had a chance to understand how dangerous yeah. and how strong player he is because he was doing very very well in the World Cup. Absolutely. And then he wrote a very interesting blog on... Uh, he ended up losing, I think, to Vidit, right? Yes, exactly. And he lost to Vidit and he wrote a very interesting long blog post on the, you know, the dangers of actually playing your own repertoire in online chess. Because apparently he played an idea against Vidit in that game that, uh, that he lost, which he thought was very new. And it turned out that quite likely Vidit kind of did his due diligence and saw some of the online games in which, in which Vasif played that idea and he prepared for it and uh, got a very good position. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a Bishop C5 Alhangi at Spanish. Yeah, yeah some, some, kind, of a, some yeah. kind of a very sharp idea where exactly. a, lot of, a lot of the value in the idea is that people aren't prepared for it. But his opponent was actually prepared for it. One sec, I'll, while, while we're not on screen, I'll, I'll change my light a bit. Yeah, now knight d7 check, king a7, knight b6. I guess it's already on the board. We, we still, yes, knight b6 already played. And, and rook d8 is coming. 
what the relief now in, in team Azerbaijan. It's also famous, yeah, uh, that they have very, very big team spirit, just like the Armenian team. It's uh, They are also very, very successful. And now saving this match, saving this match will mean a lot. Will really mean a lot yeah. because you are Would not you losing see? your momentum at the same yeah. time. You get a new player who gets a lot of confidence for for Dulai Bali winning this game and then saving the match for for his country and for his team. Will give uh, will give a lot of lot of energy. Yeah. So which square do we choose? I think maybe the it might be clever to choose like b2 a3 a4 because if i if i go king before as i was suggesting like this yeah then some knight if i knight d3 yeah no i think the bigger problem is knight f6 ah you know i can't go no no 93 no sorry knight f6 i can take you can take knight yeah no yes but, i mean yeah that, that's what we spoke that the knight can't, can't yeah but knight e3 the... rook g8 knight g5 and then i go knight c7 and you kind of have to find one more one more thing you probably still win with the h pawn, but why even do this? Yeah, he goes king b2. I very yeah, much. Yeah, king b2, of course, professional. I very yeah. much like this. Yeah, you just kind of sidestep. You don't let black reach the c7 square. You go, if you give a check, I go to a3, and then I go to a4. Yes. And the king to the king on a4 cannot be, uh, you know, reached by any checks at all. Yeah, usually when you play the game, then you have already foreseen this long ago. Mm hmm. Yeah, Rook G2 check plate, so King yeah, he'll go. I think he goes A3, A4, and I think that kind of ends the game. I mean, there is even some argument just to play King B1 and then A2, A3, if, if you are paranoid. But okay, why? Yeah? Just go A2, A3 immediately. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to. Ah, he's gone B3. Okay, B3. It's, it's clever because B3 cannot be checked by the Knight at all in two moves. So he's yes. avoiding the Dark Squares completely. Because, yeah, the, in order for that knight to give you a check, your king needs to be on a dark square. So he's avoiding the dark squares completely, so he will go to a4 here. And, I mean, the, the, the heartbreak for uh, Ali Marandi here is that if he could go to f6 or h6, he would have rook g8. But those, those squares are not available. So he just gets mated. Exactly, because the rook covers both, yeah. both squares. Rook G3 check. And now the big question, I mean, because Dula Ball is down to 40 seconds, does it make sense for him simply to repeat no. King B2, King B3 and then go no. King A4 and cash in the, the one minute? No, 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 no. He knows. No, this, yeah, King A4 played. And also, by the way, it's hugely important that Black has that pawn on F5, right? Otherwise, would, stalemate ideas. Would yeah, yeah, exactly. Been. I would, I would have gone knight f six, rook f six, rook a three check, and I would, I would start giving checks, and you know, maybe it's a draw. <laughs> but exactly, pawn, yeah. This, this I have also noticed long, long back that this would I mean, be no, this you, f five you, pawn. Yeah, you need to, actually. That's not. I mean, black still has the b eight square for the king, so you need to somehow. Ah, do, yes. No, when the rook goes to d eight, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You need to do it later. So. But yeah, I mean, the whole idea made no sense because, yeah, the pawn on f5 is there, yeah, this is... Mm -hmm. We are losing our all hopes because of this pawn, yeah. yeah. He's got knight e5. I don't quite understand what that does, like... Yeah, I don't understand. No, okay, because nothing does anything, I guess. Yeah, nothing does, does anything, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah just go rook g8 and yeah, he'll give some checks, but once again, you can't even... There is no hope because it's always made and there are no stalemate tricks because the pawn is alive on f5. So, And and the trick is even that knight c4 check fork is not bringing anything because knight b6, a b6 or c b6 is also made. Yeah? So even you can't really blunder into, for example, something like king b3, rook g3. I, I don't need to let knight c4 happen. I just want it to yeah, we highlight, just for example. Yeah, we just use the light squares, really. Yeah. yeah, but I just want to highlight that even if suddenly white steps into something, it's still still not no unavoidable mate. Yeah. Because this is... But yeah, but there's absolutely no, no need yeah. to allow any of this, and he will... Uh, he will, yeah, just go exactly as Peter is indicating. Yeah, just king t1, king e2. 
So this, this match will also end in a draw, meaning that the teams on 100% are... The teams on 100% are Spain, uh, Israel, England, India too, and possibly Austria, because we really don't know what happened in that Dragnev game. Yeah, we don't know, exactly. I mean, we are also getting the information from Sotiris that the, the fun fact is that these two gentlemen who are fighting it out for their countries right now, they are both students in St. Louis, actually. Yeah. Those this is how happen. it works nowadays. Yeah, all road leads to, to St. Louis. Yeah, and by the way, Canada saved their match against Iran because uh, uh, Dani Paduya did not find the uh, A3, A2, A1 idea, which supposedly was saving the game. Like, the machine says it's a draw, despite, uh, despite it looking quite dangerous. But the machine says it's enough there to, to hold. And the trick is, yeah, you just... I don't know what he missed, but yeah, this is completely lost, of course. Yeah. Wow, what a save. Yeah, this is incredible. Yeah. And I, I want to show you something cute. The point there, if you do it the right way, you play A3, you, you choose between bishop g4 and bishop d1, it doesn't matter. Let's say bishop g7, yeah, it doesn't matter. Ah, yes, and also the that game ended, yeah. So, do I Bali won? Yeah, black mm -hmm. designed Ali. Ali Malandi resigned. Yeah, so here, here the point is after A2 and A1, just to finish with this topic, uh, a one knight, bishop takes e5. You can actually spend one more tempo with your knight on a1 on playing bishop a3. Ah, oh, wow, bishop a3, yeah? Yeah, mm -hmm. just to have your bishop active. <laughs> and now I will play b2, and I will just take on c2 when you play bishop c2. And that bishop ending is now a draw, because our bishop has squares. Uh-huh. Well, but even this doesn't look so trivial, right? Yeah, no, it's not. But it, yes. I, I, I can see on my screen that this is su supposed to be a draw. Yes, yes. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a strange mistake for a chess player of uh, Idani Poya's uh, strength. He's a very, very good player. I mean, as you can see on your screen, 2650. Uh, so, yeah, the, the I guess he just didn't see a one knight specifically. I think yeah, this is maybe. what. Maybe. I mean, of course, in such moments, it would be so wonderful to, to get the chance to ask the players. First of all, the player who has just lost is, is normally not in the mood to say anything. Yeah. Sometimes it's exactly opposite. For example, I know for myself that when I lost, I often had the feeling that I would like to explain why I lost. What did I miss? So that mm. people will not understand. Uh, I mean, they will understand why I lost, not to think that I'm a complete idiot. Yeah, just. Uh, <laughs> And, and to get rid, yeah. you know, and also to get rid of all these negative emotions and you yes. give the interview and afterwards you, you calm yourself down, yeah? And A not little bit, you know, I, I understand what you mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah, not, uh -huh. not, not to carry all this uh, negative energy with you. Yeah, so those are the teams on 100%. We still don't know really what happened in the Armenia-Austria match, but with uh, Canada making a draw against Iran, everybody else has dropped some points. So this is once again... Uh, 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 Spain 1, uh, Israel 2, England 3, India 2, 4, potentially five, 5 teams tied on 100% score after round 4, maybe 4. We don't really, uh, all of our sources continue insisting that uh, Dragnev somehow lost that position, but it's just very difficult to understand how uh, and yeah uh, no but I mean you already know that sometimes maybe some piece was not not there yeah it it, it could easily be yeah yeah so yeah some clarification at some point will happen on that topic but uh, for the time being it's either four or five teams still on hundred percent score among them Spain England uh, and of course the uh, the Indian youngsters uh, the Uzbek, uh, the Uzbek youngsters came very, very close to also being on 100% after round four, but heartbreakingly, uh, their board four failed to win a completely winning endgame against uh, Sam Shankland. And that is what awaits us tomorrow with uh, plenty of action. There is also, of course, a, a, a lot of action in uh, in the women's section. With uh, yeah, Anna Shenina did win her game. Just for those who were wondering. Ukraine ends up winning their match against Bulgaria by virtue of uh, Anna Shenina 
uh, clutching out that rook ending against uh, Belislava Kravtseva, uh, meaning that uh, there is also a bunch of uh, a bunch of teams on 100% in the women's. Um, India will be on 100%. Ukraine on 100%. Georgia on 100%. Uh, Poland on 100%. France on 100%. It's much more in, uh, in in the women's section actually, with a lot more matches being uh, being decisive today and yesterday. Yeah, which is kind of also understandable. Yeah, because in in the men's competition the, already now the, the the fight is so close. Yes, yeah, so tight. We we are seeing uh, that everywhere. I mean, the the teams which are so called underdogs are already also very very strong. And uh, yeah, no no easy matches there. Yeah, but uh, it's getting it's getting tighter and tighter and closer and closer as we as we are watching. So tomorrow should be a fantastic day. Uh, tune in same time tomorrow, uh, eleven thirty Central European, uh, which is, I assume, three o'clock Indian time. And I'm not going to try guessing what it is in America, but it's quite early. Uh, yeah, so see you then uh, with our continued coverage of the forty uh, fourth uh, FIDE Olympiad in Chennai. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, see you. Bye bye. Bye. With hundreds of players gathering from all over. Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world, with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses. Did you find the stalemate trick that would have saved Grandmaster Meyer in his game with the boss Magnus Carlsen? Well, kick things off by making a queen. Would you like a queen for free? Bet you would. How about two? A fantastic idea. Never, ever, ever give up. Because that's stalemate, and that's the end of the game. is a very good opening for those of you who are uh, striving to get a double edge. In this video we're going to look at the latest developments in the 6-bishop g5 Nidorov. I'm gonna start with uh, sort of my first official Stonewall game. The idea is not to fight against uh, any opponent move, uh, prevent everything, defend and so on. No, it's just to move.